address. I want to mail you a spoon. American I'm ball. tired of people saying that because I am who I am, I can't eat shit out of my fucking ass. Let me tell you something, bro. The champ is eating. Kiss my fucking ass and lick my balls. Eat it. Fucking eat it. Oh, he's doing the meme. Oh, this is crazy. Eat it. Eat it. I want to have sex with your wife. I am fucking Farms. I want to mail you a spoon on a daily fucking basis. That child is racist, fills a sexist, fills this, fills that. I am who I am. I am Real fucking base. Who? Eat it. Kiss my fucking ass and lick my ball. Eat it. Fucking eat it. Oh, he's doing the meme. Oh, this is crazy. intro this time that's what i'm talking about the longest intro yeah we got pyro look at this yeah and what why is all my shit fucked up oh my god this is a terrible intro this is the worst what is happening no no Ah, there we go, it's back. I think. No, it's still messed up. What the hell? What the hell? Well, anyways, let me fix that real quick. We're gonna start in a, in a second now. Uh, hello, everybody. This is the Swaycast episode, whatever it is. And uh, we're gonna watch the podcast today. But first, uh, ALT earlier today. Hey, the thing kind of works. Okay, anyways. Uh, ALT earlier today posted this 
video on Twitter. This is the nobody has begged more online than DSP video from Mighty D. Shout out to Mighty D channel. A lot of quality videos, super high quality. What are the hat and vest goals for the day? Wait, where did this come from? I don't even see it for in the in the feed. We're getting ghost contributions. I legitimately don't see it in the feed. What the fuck? Shit sucks, man. You gotta fix that too. Uh, but uh, no goals. Today is a chill, relaxing day. And I wanted to showcase this specific part of the video, which is probably the most pathetic, humiliating thing I've ever heard him say. And it, it shocked me when I heard it. Because it's like... We, we don't get segments like this anymore. This is like a classic segment. It's a it's a vintage snort moment. Uh, so let me... Uh, I'll play this for you while I fix the stuff. And you'll know what I mean. Outside of YouTube, it means that the whole YouTube thing is going to fall apart. The bottom line is right now what I'm kind of hinging on, which is really bad. My parents every year usually give me a, a, a birthday present. I'm actually counting on my birthday present to hopefully be enough, because I don't know what they're giving me, to pay my bills in April. I have yes. bad news. Yes, this this is the... It, and it only takes like 20 seconds to hear the most embarrassing thing you've ever heard. Like, why would you even admit this? Why would you say this? This is... It's so bad, man. We're hoping on... It, it, look at this dude. It's like a grown-ass dude with a beanie on. Sitting there like in a gaming t-shirt be like, I, I want my my parents to buy me... uh To give me money for the, for my birthday so I can pay my bills. Like, shit. You couldn't beat this admission out of me. God damn it. You're usually give me a, a, a birthday present. And I, I'll just let the video play because there's a lot of fantastic bags in this one. I'm actually counting on my birthday present to hopefully be enough because I don't know what- Because this is like a compilation of the most intense, elevated begging segments ever. To pay my bills in April. I have bad news. Uh, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but according to YouTube, nothing is turning around, and basically, I'm like this. Yes, <laughs> hand graphs. Look at this. Please, if you're watching I miss these so much. Seriously, and if you can, we still get them every once in a while. And we got the finger point to the Patreon logo. Look at this, man. This is a moment of history right here. This is classic content. Uh, this is what dreams are made of. Excuse me. Teespring, or when you're watching my live stream, sending me a tip via twitch as well Those are the uh, here's the link to the video make sure to check it out in case we don't end up watching the whole thing i'm sure there's gonna be the, the other juicy bags as well you can really help me out right now if you want to see me be able to keep doing this i'm gonna make a, a kind of a a, a, a plea to you now please consider using patreon i'm just i i don't know how i'm gonna keep dealing with this shit moving forward the dollar for you that you probably give as oh some context to today so yesterday he was playing Baldur's gate 3 and uh well, you know what? He's going to tell you all about it later, but he's really crying about it in chat right now. He's writing actual, like, paragraphs in chat if, about the things he's about to say in, like, 10 minutes. If he can without shame say this to complete strangers on the internet, imagine the conversation with his parents about it. You know he made them aware <laughs> of this before to guilt trip them into giving more money. Yeah, man, this is like, I, I, cannot, I cannot believe this. For real, like, when I heard this, I was shocked. Uh, let's let's keep going. Chip somewhere, or you buy a pack of gum, or you, you burn it. You buy a pack of gum. That dollar doesn't mean a lot, as just a dollar, but it adds up for me. Looks like I may end up in a ton of financial troubles to the point where I have to sell my house. So you know, it's been a bunch of disappointments, and I understand that when you have that, I get a slow month, but. What I would like to pitch, obviously, for you is that if you could, if you ever have considered doing it, if you want to consider... But this is this is exactly the same type of begging we get nowadays, except you just replace Patreon with whatever he wants to focus on at the moment. So recently it was memberships, gifted memberships, but you know, the whole Argentina thing, that kind of got destroyed, it got demolished. Uh, so I guess now is just whatever, just the tips, I guess see me keep doing this live streaming gameplay now i'm upgrading the 1080p right look at this you guys now i'm upgrading the titles of my videos and the thumbnails look at all the stuff i'm doing proving always trying this was like over six years ago I do things a little differently to make it better for you guys um consider becoming a paid subscriber on twitch here outside of all that i really don't have much else to say and i do want to get started here with horizon so nine pounds and 99 pence from paradox got some good news in work 
think I've got a promotion, so spreading some positivity folded hands. Yeah, we got baller alert. Baller alert. Got no all out baller alert today. Everybody on baller alert. There we go. Look Everybody at that flex. Talk shit about me. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that flex. Big ups, Paradox. Hopefully, everything goes well and you get more promotions. More promotions. Another one. Another one. Oh, we got another one! Oh, man. This, this shit's gonna get me deaf someday. Really this guy is so loud. Through a couple plugs, and by the way, I really need your help, everyone. It is the final day of February, if you're not aware. All right. Oh, so dude, do... we 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 get the same shit nowadays too. It's the final day of the month, you guys. Any super chats, memberships, YouTube side contributions, the same thing. Yeah. To help me out right now is appreciated because, according to you know everything I'm looking at, my ad revenue or my uh, money earned on YouTube this month is abysmal. By far the lowest, by, th by th I'm not even lying, by thousands of dollars. After of course, and it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing last month. I'm down $1,500. I'm down thousands of dollars because of insert problem here. Oh, man. It's it's just a cycle. It, it keeps repeating itself. Gradually paying off the cost of the move and the cost to furnish the house uh, for the next two years, probably. So it's going to be tight, and I need your help to keep things going, okay? All right, I need help right now. I need right, first of all people two dollars from Redbird UJ76. Back to spoon feed me fake BS into my child mind. Yes, uh, we are almost there. He's gonna start in about 10 minutes and he's gonna tell us all about Baldur's Gate 3. Like, literally, every inch of that game he's about to explain because he's really salty. He's like really salty so that I can keep paying my fucking bills and keep my house and not have it repossessed and shit. I need help, FYI. Only 12. And I, I really hope the, the LARPers in chat are working overtime today because they can trigger him so easily and we can get some fantastic gold dust just by disagreeing with what he says about um, about Baldur's Gate 3. Hey, welcome everybody from the Brand Dude stream. Let's let's drink some beers, y'all. Look, I started saying the American words. Here's uh, here's some beers. Let's go. $4.99 from the Deep Fryer. Has DSP played Astral Chain? I'd love to see Piggy get his butt handed to him in a platinum game. Um, I don't think he did. There was two games. Astral Chain and what was the other one? It was another one that he was avoiding playing like a couple years ago. That's I remember them because they rhymed with each other. Astral Chain and Quantum Vein? No, Code Vein. Code Vein. That was it. So uh, he didn't play either of them. We are still at least $200 away from the standard goal. Which means we are way far away from the stretch goal on Patreon. All right. The bottom line, folks, is I really yeah. Need the help. stretch goal isn't stretching. You know, um, with all the situation going on right now with these these taxes, uh, the only other thing you could do to help me is Patreon, pledge money, to get perks, get stuff back, but also to help me because if the bottom line is, if a small amount of my viewership were patrons, if ten percent of the people who watch me every single month, I, I <laughs> look at this, listen to this, it almost sounds like a pyramid scheme. Let me tell you how this is going to be good for you. You get to give me money, but the more of you give me money, the less money you have to give me. Uh, sound good? Pledge today. Two million views still on DSP Gaming a month, and that's not counting views here on the King of Hate Vlogs or over on KO Gaming or anything like that. That's just the channel alone. It gets over two million views usually a month, all right? If 10% of two million, 10% gave a dollar a month, I would never have to worry about YouTube again. End of January, I'm going to have a giant bill due. I don't even know what it's going to be. I'll have a giant bill due. I don't have the money. I don't know how giant, but it's, it's going to be giant. Right now, since I am skipping Infinite War. Incredible. Okay. It's going to be at least like $30. Okay. The only at least. Situation where I would That's a good estimate. Warfare. Could be like 3000 Either... Someone completely he even says the word money in the greasiest sunny cold. <laughs> Everything, dude. Money. When he says it like that, it's like money. It's Donate it's so like I, I don't even know how to tell you. Phil, here you go, and I have so it's much greasy. Time that I, I'm not in the middle of other stuff and things not lingering. Then I would play it if it was fully donated. Patreon's gonna be more important than ever that I get this com constant support from Patreon. So I'll say this. If you say this to Patreon, thank you very much. There's some over 200 people who already have. If you haven't, but you're here every day and you watch my live streams, if you watch my on-demand videos on YouTube, all right? If you're into my stuff, 
and you want to see it continue. You want to see me be able to do this long term and every day be able to put out free, informative. Informative. Look at it. Wow. Epic. Content for you. Why is this guy not getting millions of dollars? Look at this. It's free, informative, entertaining. Please pledge to my Patreon as little as a dollar helps. A dollar. One dollar. <laughs> One dollar. Is negligible <laughs> for you. I cannot believe this. I actually cannot believe this. He was begging for a dollar. Like actually the, the meme of the e-beggar. Legitimately just begging for a dollar. Because nowadays at least it's like, okay guys, it's been slow. We're only at like $13. That's $13 at least. But now he's just like, oh, I need his $1, sir. Just one. But it adds up and helps me. That's how the most successful people who use Patreon use it. Is they have a ton of people. He makes streamers look so bad. Amount, and it adds up for them. I'm in no condition or situation here to be buying a new television. Unless there was some crazy exhort. Like if I won the lotto, yeah, I'd probably buy a new TV. You know, Or if someone said, oh, Phil, you know. With all this going on, we really want you to have a new TV. So here, I'm just going to donate one to you or something. Now, I have something else I need to say. Sorry this pre-stream is so long, but I knew it would be because I have so much to talk about. As you know, next week I'm taking time off. I'm trying to recuperate. I'm trying to heal. I'm trying to rest. I'm trying to come back. What? Come back. Did, did he come back from the war or something? He's going to try and recuperate and rest? Did he have a surgery or something? What happened with him? When was this recorded? Refreshed for the rest of the year. All right. And he needs to heal as well. It's like, what? <laughs> I need it. My throat. Did he run out of health potions? It's all fucked up and everything, okay? <laughs> However, <laughs> this is a fucking iconic video. What the hell? Uh, shout out Ursa Major for the membership, dude. Follow alert. Five pounds from Pechi. If 10% of my 2 mil views per month gave $1 a month, I'd have 2.4 mil a year and might be satisfied and not have to worry about YouTube. You know what? That that's some good math. I can I can agree with this math. It sounds very positive. That means that's the math of positivity. Five days <laughs> away, right? Five days away from streaming. And as you guys and gals know, with YouTube, five days. Wow, that's that's actually a lot. I don't remember him taking so many days. I I think even when he was sick, he took like three or four days off. When he was sick last, when was it? Like October. Late October, yes, because he canceled a Halloween stream. And this is like five days. What happened? Fell out of it this earlier this year. Ad revenue plummeted. Really, it's live streaming. And man, he is the sole reason I hate the PS4 theme song. The, you know, the dashboard music. I, uh, I, what was he thinking? Just letting it play in the background while he was just sitting here talking in front of the slideshow. It's almost like, what the subbing the tipping all that has become my life's blood and the song yeah. itself is cool as i've told you guys twitch is now about 50 percent of my income it is twitch has become massively more uh important to me live streaming and the interaction that we get because of you know the the, the difference in balance now the difference of my streaming and everything that being said <laughs> this is a great comment in this chat so Fox Mulder, who I think is Kagome or somebody, it's somebody that renamed himself, says, DSP Gaming, dude, you need to chill. I'm, I'm chill. Extremely happy is just a game. So it's like, bro, it, it's just a game. Uh, but speaking of which, he's about to go live right now. This pre-stream is called Larry and Robbed Me? We have to recover and press on. So of course, today he's playing Baldur's Gate 3 and Yakuza on the late stream. I, I don't think he had a late stream yesterday because he was doing taxes or something or secret business behind the scenes activities. Uh, but yeah, he was doing taxes. And we're probably going to have a cold open too because he's very salty and he's going to want to to ask people to Good clip morning, him. Everyone. Yep, there you on go. today's show, we continue on with RPG Overload. And if you want to find out how mad I am, watch this podcast. On the podcast. Number one, Alone in the Dark, which is going to be coming out in a couple of days, and the early reviews are out. We'll talk about it. But also, the big discussion today is what happened yesterday when I was playing Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm just going to say this way up front Jay on the show. 989. If you play in the arms of an angel during the begging segments, it's a chef's kiss. Yeah, that, that song was playing in the, in the video I just watched There's right at the beginning. There's going to be some plot spoilers of Baldur's Gate 3. 
they're it's not going to be total story ruining or anything like that. In fact, it very much just relates to a side quest and a character story arc. But I need to explain what's going on for you to understand my perspective on this. So there's going to be a lot of discussion about the game today and a lot of ranting because I got to get some stuff off my chest. Yeah. All this and more on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. I'm going to be so salty, guys. Come and watch me. Why are people just watching me to rage? True. I showed my parents the bankruptcy and champions videos last month. My mom is a financial advisor and came back to me and someone who never sees wrong in almost anyone. She said if I ever end up like that him disowned. <laughs> did you did, wait, did you make him sit through both the videos that are like two hours long? Well, why would you do this to your parents? Oh man, you better apologize. Good morning. It is time for the show, and <laughs> luckily for me, hopefully, it's the last of a four-day heat wave here in Washington. Why would you do this? Today is Tuesday. Oh, it's still a heat wave, by the way. 2024. In case you're wondering why he looks tropical actually in March. Of spring here in <laughs> and we've got summertime weather outside. Right now, it's in about the mid-60s degrees Fahrenheit. During the he looks like he just came back from Vegas and lost everything. Isn't as warm as and they're about to come and take the house in like 20 minutes. It's so early in the season, no one's prepared for it. Like, I don't have my air conditioner in. This office tends to heat up to about 15 to 20 degrees hotter than what it is out there. Yeah, we're about to fact check him right now. So I've been sweating it out. That's why, once again, I'm wearing summertime attire. And it's 12 Celsius and 53 Fahrenheit in Renton, Washington right now, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily now back tomorrow, to you with the latest yeah, news, Phil. Go back down into the 50s and cloudy and rain, which means I'll be back to relaxing with a normal attire again. So I cannot anyway, believe I'm having uh, having weatherman segments just because I'm too petty to believe this guy. What the, first day of spring. the weather um, is over there. Today's show is going to have one major topic, Baldur's Gate 3. We're going to talk about what happened yesterday in the game because I don't think I've ever seen my chat so full of discourse about this. Like, some days my chat is dead before I start the stream. Somewhere, Today, sometimes it's dead after you start, people, too. Going back and forth about this topic, about what happened in my playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3 yesterday. Over 120 hours into the playthrough, something happened that is so jarring to a lot of people that there's basically a split opinion on it. I have a very strong opinion on it, and I'm going to tell you my opinion on it today. But again, if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever about Baldur's Gate 3... You're probably going to want to skip the entire first half of the show. Once we talk about that, then I'm going to talk. Yeah, so come back in an hour for the Q&A. Tomorrow. And it's supposed to be yet another attempt to reboot this uh, faded franchise. This is, I think, the third reboot attempt <laughs> that they're actually trying. Um, and the reviews are all over the place. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that because I'd be interested maybe in the game down the road. Hey, big ups movie but sign for the five memberships, dude. Big ups. Decide, okay. All right. So... <clears throat> Let's do this. So here's what we're going to do. Let's briefly do the schedule first. Let's get it out of the way. Then we can focus on the topic of this Baldur's Gate 3 occurrence. And then we can move on. That way it's already out of the way and we don't have to worry about running late and oh crap, I forgot to do it. Okay? So, RPG Overload. Get the nice picture up here for uh, you. Oh yeah, we got to pull up the photo. You can't go without the photo. So, continue my push if he talks about it without the picture on the screen, you wouldn't know it's a segment Baldur's about that. Because you're not listening to what he's talking about. At the same time. All right? It's absolutely required that I finish these games so that I can focus on the other new games coming out starting this Friday. So that's why we're playing so much of them, all right? Today, it's more, more Baldur's Gate 3 on the first stream. We're going to move on from what happened yesterday. However I can recover, we're going to maybe have to go on a shopping trip. Um, and then we're going to do more questing, and it's on the fence. What should I do? Should I do the Shadowheart quest line? Should I do Will's quest line? Or should I go straight for Orin and try to take out the Ball Worshippers so I can free Lazel? And then maybe we can work on the Lazel quest line. We'll figure it out, okay? Then, tonight on the late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it's more like a dragon, infinite wealth. We're now in chapter... Can I skip this? I don't think I can. Like oh, I have a little bit. Okay, let's uh, let's do a little skip moment. <laughs> nah, I think that's all I got. Because he started glitching more than I usual. I certainly hope uh, that you guys are ready for that. It should be good. It should be a good time. Who is he about to ban? What the hell is this? Hold on. Five euros from Rutama96. He looks like the drunk divorced dad that tried to have sex with the babysitter yeah, so and got caught by the wife God. and his children while getting rejected. 
<laughs> oh, so he got rejected by the babysitter too. Yeah, he definitely looks like that. Because uh, if the babysitter said yes, he would be looking a lot better. What are we doing tomorrow? More RPGs. The like cat sitter, the not even the babysitter. They got a lady to the cat sit Jasper. She's like you know, 65 years old. Humanly possible. We have to keep pushing. Okay. So. And it still we'll didn't work. Today and tomorrow. I'm off from <laughs> streaming on Thursday, but on Thursday I'm gonna set up my playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 2, which will start on Friday. My wife and I are actually going to uh, make a, a character a pawn in uh, the character uh, creation tool that's available on the Xbox as well as my own character. So I'm gonna have my own character created and she's gonna make a pawn for me that I'm gonna use in my playthrough. And then starting Friday, all day long, it is the premiere of Dragon's Dogma 2, okay? I'm excited for that. You guys have asked me, uh, you know, to do it. And I said, all right, let's do it. Let's play it. That's the new game I'm playing starting Friday. And it's all day long. $5 Both from stream. movie sign. I can't get over okay. the fact that he but looks then, like some dude in witness protection. <laughs> yeah, bro, because he because he was snitching and they wanted to whack him, so he just went to the cops. Why aren't you gonna keep playing it? And now he's in witness protection. And he they they put him in like Hawaii or something. Games. If I don't beat Baldur's Gate three and like Dragon, witness protection. we seriously can't focus on other games. So I have to go back and focus like a on fake right Italian. Game. There's like five of these dudes right. in the Sopranos, so and they're always the snitches. Focus. Until we beat them. Always. Uh, there will He's be like typecast. Sunday all day long, you know, the usual clip show, DSP versus the internet on DSP Reacts, followed by, uh, at night, uh, the DSP throwback. Uh, conclusion of Heavy Rain. I'm excited to see how Heavy Rain ends. And of course, we're going to do a new poll where you're going to vote for what's the next retro react that I start doing the next Sunday. Uh, so it should be a good time. It should be exciting and fun time. And uh, I think that you guys are really going to uh, enjoy uh, the end of Heavy Rain. It should be good. And then we're going to continue on Baldur's Gate 3 and Like a Dragon until they're done. Once they're done, then Dragon's Dogma 2 will fully hit the Love schedule <clears throat> as the featured... Yeah, big ups for the game. sub, Dberg99, dude. decide what else do we want to do. Do we want to bring Final Fantasy VII Rebirth back? Do I want to oh. skip? Do we want to start? Yeah, you don't have to ask me. Do, do something else? No, that that's all we got. On, right? Then we can make those choices. Uh, <clears throat> but we need to do that. We need to make those choices so that you know, we have a set schedule again. Right now, we kind of have a schedule that's way up in the air because we've had so much limbo with these ongoing RPGs. We need to finish them, okay? Keep in mind, coming up he is on my birthday... Regarded broke Fabian Petrulio, the guy Tony hey, no spoilers! Spoilers! He finds in witness spoilers! What exact game I haven't got to that part yet. I'm interested in playing. Ah, uh, now I know what happens. A whole calendar. When I see that guy, I'll know. Oh man, he gets fucking whack. Oh, holes in the schedule where we can fit Oh, is that season two? Maybe that I, I've just missed it. We got to bring back Sea of Stars at some point. We've got to go and do other things. You know, we have to work on this stuff. <laughs> Was it season that's one? Point. So, okay, then it, you know, I've just watched it a long time we know, ago. We know the actual schedule coming up. And by the way, I have no idea. You know what games are coming out in April, May, June. I'm actually out of the loop. Five dollars from Zoxide so Fun. Can't wait for the rent lately. after day one so about where's so everyone? Why is no one watching okay. it on demand? And where's okay. the support? That's the schedule. Exactly like he did so with FF7 Inches. Well, I mean, there's a super high likelihood it's gonna happen, so I can't disagree with you. This is Vito. I've got something that'll shut Phil up. Hey, hey, Vito. We need to we need to link him up with Phil. So, spoiler alert. Okay, we're about to get into this. I'm gonna pause the, the pop-ups for this so you can get the full context. Three, and you have not reached the culmination of Asterian's plotline. You're going to want to skip this portion of the podcast because I am going to talk about that plot and its conclusion and what happened yesterday when I concluded it and my gripes with this. And I really don't have much to say about this. Not because uh, of the consequences of From what I heard about what happened to him, I don't really mind. Like, it, it sounds like a wrong. tough outcome and okay. something that would make your game harder. Summary. And because of my I, I can't really blame them. Party, it's interesting, and, and I don't really care about it. Except the ones they had directly equipped on their person, which were all unique items you can never get back. These are items that I spent over 120 hours during my playthrough collecting to make the perfect build, and now they're lost completely, erased from existence. Okay. So I want to tell you the story of what happened. I want to tell you my opinion on it and how I think that Larian could absolutely improve this engine if they actually really wanted to make it truly like a role-playing game rather than a, oh, we just make arbitrary decisions and you live with them game, which is really what this game is, sadly. 
Um, and then we're going to go from there. But I'm sure everyone's going to have a difference of opinion because people in the chat have already. They were going back and forth this morning about it. Um, so let's do it. Let's talk, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so here's the deal. Asterion is one of your party members who you find right at the beginning of the game. He is a vampire spawn, meaning that in his past, a vampire bit him and made him basically a vampire, but he doesn't have the full powers of, like, the, the vampire lord. He's just one of the underlings, okay? But because in the plot, he has this illithid uh, parasite in him, he somehow is freed from the control of his master, and he's able to walk daylight. So he's a daywalker vampire, okay? So most of the plot, he is your go-to guy when it comes to lockpicking, when it comes to being stealthy. You know, he's the rogue. He's the uh, the guy in the shadows all the time, right? So, you know, you can build him various ways. You can have him backstabbing people, uh, you know, being invisible, or you can have him from range doing crazy ranged uh, attacks and stuff. Yeah, you know, the stuff I that rogues do in RPGs. Big ups Rebus for the okay? membership. <clears throat> and Tony T, I'm going to play your pop-up later. Near the end game here, his build is so good that he basically gets like tons of turns. Like he gets three to four turns in one turn and he gets giant critical hit damage. He gets elemental Oh yeah, so damage. he can stab he people in the back like the side scrollers. Top of wow, why would you want to build him like that? Basic, like basic rogue class. And that's because of the way I built him, but that's also because of his gear, okay? And he's been a critical part of the, my game. He really has 120 hours in. He 100% has always been a part of my party. Unlike everyone else who I've swapped in and out, he has literally been a staple of my party since day one because of- Because you meet him right at the beginning. Picker, right? He's the stealth guy. Um, now, here's the thing about Asterion and his character. He's not a good guy. Over the course of the plot, you find out that he's kind of an underhanded dude. <laughs> look at, look at what this guy is saying in his chat. Uh, Asterion is his own person, not your pawn. The items he took are his, and he even wishes you death. God damn, Asterion is a real hater, man. Real detractor. He basically is the one with the worst morals. He is the one who originally wants to use the illithid uh, parasites for using all of their power. Like, he's totally for it. He says, if you're not going to use them, give me all the parasites... So that way I can become like all powerful. Now, basically when you play through the game and you get to know him better, you kinda kinda sympathize for the guy because finding out all the crap he's been through in his life, being a vampire spawn, that he's gone through horrible, horrible things. He was very mistreated by his master. Uh, Cazador, that's the name of the... Oh, just like DSP, dude. He's him. been mistreated, and he's been gone through horrible I mean, things. Of the game, you got people who are hunting him because he's a vampire spawn. It's just, just like Phil. His former uh, spawn mates, I guess you could call them like brothers and sisters, in being turned into spawn, and see, you know, you'll learn about their horrible backstory and how they were mistreated and all of that. <clears throat> so you do sympathize him with him somewhat, but I mean, out of all the dialogue choices and everything in the game, he's the evil dude. Like, you could tell... If you did an evil run playthrough and did all the, like, harsh choices, he would be in love with you. Like, he would absolutely love all your choices because that's what he wants. He doesn't care about people being treated well. He just kind of laughs and snickers at everything and likes... He's when toxic. He, he literally, every time in the game when you make a good decision, it says, Asterion disapproves. But why? It's kind of weird because, obviously, your first run in an RPG, a lot of people want to do kind of the goody-two-shoes run, and then you'll go back and you'll do the evil run. Well, he's introduced right at the beginning of the game along with all the other party members, and when you make the good choices, all the party members like the choices, just not him. So over the course of the game, if you make moral choices, Asterion dislikes you more and more. And there's a couple critical things you have to do during the game choices, during the plot, that make him change his character a little bit and his attitude towards you. Uh, notably, um, there's this one time where he wants to learn about these runes that were carved into his back by his master. I think about why do we have to why his master literally w with a what's the point of this sub story? His back, right? And he doesn't know what it is. And what a demon shows up? And Somebody should do like a a flow chart of this whole discussion. We'll come to find out the favors and it's gonna be just looking like spaghetti. Basically, a creature that's a slave of his. It's it's another plot line. I don't want to really get into it and spoil it. But basically, again, the moral choices lead you to do things differently. Because you do moral choices, Assyrian's angry with you. Oh, I didn't get to learn what the runes on my back are. Now, the funny part about that is, you just find out what they are later anyway, easily. 
it's not like, oh, it's a hard thing now and you lost out on an opportunity. You're just going to find out in the plot what they are anyway. So it doesn't even matter that he found out earlier or later. He finds out anyway. So there's no reason why he should be so upset with you. But he is anyway. Okay? So over a few more choices in the game, you know, he may like or dislike you more. But basically, by the time that I got to the end of the game, he's in my party. He's adding all these dialogue options. And by the way, we're doing his his uh, companion quest line, meaning we've gone out of our way, all right, to basically appease this guy. Even though he's upset with some of the choices we made during the game, we're going to the mansion of the vampire that controls him. We're getting his revenge. We're killing everyone in there that doesn't like him. And now we're going to get to this big boss fight against the vampire. Literally, the only reason you're there is for him. You don't, you're not looking for anything there. There's no items you need. There's no power you're going to get by killing this vampire. You're literally doing this just for him. Okay? So he should be appeased. If this were realistic and good writing, he should be like, wow, so the whole party is actually doing this out of the kindness of their own heart to help me? So people in his chat are pointing out that he doesn't know it and he's about to find out later. He's demanding the entire time. We absolutely need to not only defeat the vampire lord who controls me, but I want to flip this on its head and I want to have this ritual make me the ultimate powerful vampire. And it's funny because... <clears throat> When you get there, you're like, wait, what? Like, how did this become part of the deal? We never even really discussed this in the past. I don't even know why did this become a big deal. It was supposed to be just about freeing him from the grips of his vampire lord. But the game turns it into a quest now to make him the ultimate vampire, which is kind of weird. Again, especially if you're going into this with a moral mindset, you don't want a vampire lord. There already is one. So there's this. Again with this uh, thank you for pointing that out. Um, he is corrupt. Who did that? Pop. Soga. Thank He's you for pointing that, that out. There's a check mark dude uh, in his chat who says, I've been watching the entire playthrough since the start, and you've pretty much failed to forge a real bond with any of the other characters, but especially Asterion. sense if you're going for the moral role-playing story, which I am. Uh, so it's just like his life, for real, for real. He fails to forge a bond with anybody, unless we get him married. It's a big boss fight against Casador, And it's a unique boss fight, like most of these endgame boss fights. It's not bad at all. I actually was enjoying it. And we get to the very end and we beat Kazador. And now Asterion has the critical decision. He wants to become the vampire lord. So what does that entail? Well, this ritual has to complete. It means that everyone in this ritual circle is about to die. It means that all of these vampires spawn that supposedly they're saying there's thousands of them that are trapped in the castle are all going to be sacrificed so that he can become the ultimate vampire. Who's the check mark, now, dude? I have no idea. The legions of vampires. It's, uh, it's called Tigaholic. And again, as I guess I can just plot, look him up. Because this guy is just going to keep talking. With power. He's the one who wants to misuse the illithid power early on. So the track record. Says, oh, it's no, a, it's, it's a, uh, what is this even? Decision of you want to go with this or you not. You can get me pregnant in three years. Says, what? No. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, 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 hey. Preggers takes, preggers takes, preggers What is the fuck is this? Preggers takes, No preggers! I don't want to get preggers. No preggers, please. I would like to be 100% certified not pregnant. Uh, at least for the next... <laughs> so, uh, and back to Phil. Do that because you're gonna sacrifice all these people just for him to get more power. This doesn't make sense. It's kind of like you're you're getting rid of one dictator to replace it with another dictator, but because you're friends with that dictator, it's okay. No, the, the well, they did say they watched the whole playthrough. Is, there shouldn't be one, right? So. When all this is going down, and even with my other party members warning me against it, don't do it, I said, that's it, I'm gonna make my my choice. No, I'm not gonna allow him to do the ritual, okay? So by the way, it's revealed that the writing on his back from Cazador is the ritual marks. It's just he was gonna be one of the sacrifices for the ritual. And during the ritual, you rescue him. So again, all the things you're doing for this character, right? You went to Baldur's Gate, you went to the mansion, you kicked the vampire's ass, and you saved him from being ritually sacrificed. That's not good enough. He still doesn't like you because you don't want to do exactly what he wants. You want to talk about a fucking spoiled brat? That's Asterion. He's fucking such a spoiled brat character. If he doesn't get exactly his way, he hates you. How the fuck does that make any sense? Wait, how, who does this remind me of? Wait. At this point. Oh, dude, wait until you find out about Darkseid Phil. It's gonna blow your mind. Saved his ass early on from vampire hunters. 
You saved him when his brothers and sisters came to camp and tried to kill everyone in the night. You went there, you stormed the castle, you beat the vampire lord, you free him from his control. Oh, I'll, well, I'm still pissy with you. Well, fuck you then. Like, really, what a badly written, well, not badly written, but I understand. They're trying to say, again, this guy is a corrupt So he's not a badly written character. He's just a bad guy. And that sucks, I guess. Like him, he's always going to be that kind of guy, and you got to deal with that, right? So, I hey, like, like Phil. And I said, no, we are absolutely not going to let you become the vampire lord. I'm having more fun than I thought with this segment. Brutally murders Casador. All right. And then he says, just listen to this. Well, since you made your choice, you wouldn't do what I wanted. I'm going to storm away like a spoiled brat. I didn't get my way. So I'm going to throw a tantrum. We Don't still haven't got to the problem, by the way. Party permanently and you never find me again. Okay. Number two, and listen to this. I've decided that because I can't get my way. All those prisoners out there, all those imprisoned turns, just like me, they're all vampire spawn. Oh, uh, they'll never be free. And he takes the staff, that's the, the doors to the cells for the, the prison, and he snaps it on his knee. So now all those people are stuck permanently and can never be freed because he's a spoiled fucking brat. He didn't get his way, so now it's tantrum time. And it's like, wait, what? You didn't gain anything by doing that. You're just an <laughs> asshole, right? So then he storms away. And I'm like, listen, all right, let me get this. If he's out of my party for good, okay? It's sad because he's been my go-to row. He's been my lock picker. He's been my stealth guy. He's been a part of the plot for 120 hours. Yeah, it hurts to lose someone who's a key party member. Like I said, I literally never took Asterion out of my party. He was there from the get-go, and he's the only character that I always had in my party, right? So it sucks to lose him. But I said, I'm going to live with the consequences of my decisions. I chose the moral path. That's the path that he didn't like. If he doesn't like me and he doesn't want to be with me anymore, that's fine. Leave, okay? <clears throat> so I receive a sack of items in my inventory. It's over 100 items. I said, oh, this is his inventory. This is what he had sitting in his inventory. And they give it to you so that way you don't lose all the inventory items when he lo leaves the party. Fine. So we go back to camp. So what are we going to do? Well, for now, Asterion's gone. Let's just get someone else quick in the party. Let's do another mission. So I did. I put another character in the party. We went and got another mission. We actually recruited another character, which is wild. I recruited a new character 120 hours into the game. I'm thinking that's probably the last one. Um, so someone says, you know, in this game, the cool thing about it is once you hit level 12, which is the max level, which I hit a while ago, you can respect characters to however you want. And so you could essentially make a second Asterian out of this new character, Minsk, who we uh, recruited. And I was like, oh, okay, that's neat. Let's do it then. <clears throat> so we did. We literally went in and built Minsk into the same Gloom Stalker build that Asterion had. And I was like, well, this is excellent. Let's just have him be the new Minsk. The Gloom Stalker. We'll character to boot. The Lurker. We'll lore and everything. This will be neat. So we do all that. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. Half the stuff that Asterion was doing was because of his gear. He had a piece of gear that gave him a first attack every time, every fight. That was a critical hit giant damage first attack, which is awesome. He had a piece of gear that was the best hand crossbow in the game doing both force damage and regular damage, and it, it has special properties. He had a, a, a new sword I had just gotten out of the plot. It's a one-handed sword that acts like you're dual wielding. So you can attack with this sword, but get a second free attack, and it does full damage as if you're holding only one sword. It's super duper good. So he's got all of these things. He had he had the ability to cast a uh, magic missile spell for free. And that's huge because there's situations where you need a guaranteed hit and he can get it. So I got all this good equipment on him. It's really good equipment. And again, this is rare equipment that once you have it, you have it, but you can never ever reproduce it or get it back if you lose it. It's a one-time deal. It's completely unique equipment, okay? So I'm building Minsk up and I opened the pack that Asterion had given me uh, of all his items and I'm trying to transfer the armor over and I'm like wait, wait a minute now I know for a fact he had a piece of equipment that gives him the critical hit I can't find it wait a minute where are the hand crossbows that I've had him use the whole game I'm looking none of it's there huh so the the, the game programmer is at Larian it took us it took us like 15 minutes to get to the actual issue the foresight to say well if we have a character leave they gotta give you the items from their inventory because they might have a quest item in there Right? And if there's a quest item in their inventory and they leave, you can't complete the quest. You could soft lock the game. And they didn't want that to happen. But they didn't think enough forward to say, oh yeah, by the way, if a person leaves your party, they have equipment on them 
and they should also give you their equipment. Well, what do you want him to go home with his dick out? Do you want him to undress in front of you and just leave it all on the floor and leave? Just think about it. What the fuck? Right? How would I have known? Yeah, I'm leaving, but before I go, here's your your plus uh, 60 critical damage underwear. That a character leaving my party means that he leaves with unique critical items that I built over the course of the game specifically for his build. And now because those items are gone, I can never use that build ever again. And it's true. We well, do something the else. There's I so made. many things you can do. I can never have that. Have a different build. Attacks or, or gameplay ever again. It's lost. All right. Now, here's the thing. Because some people have been defending this. All right. And here's the thing again. Oh, he's going to get in an argument with his chat. I can't wait. In any game have consequences. There's too many games today where it's the illusion of choice. You make a choice and didn't really affect anything. This was going to happen no matter what. And it's bullshit. And I don't like games like that. I like games where your choices directly impact the, the results and, and the, the plot and all of that. I really enjoy that. I'm okay with actually having a character who's written to get basically kind of be like a spoiled brat like Asterion is and that's okay I'm not arguing with the character the character's fine but if I make a moral choice and he's gonna leave all right I'm okay with that what I'm not okay with is the game now having a new game mechanic never explained ever throughout the entirety of the game and a game mechanic that they had enough foresight to say we don't want to soft lock you so we're gonna give you all of his inventory, but then he's gonna run away with all the items that he has equipped. It doesn't make sense, okay? It just doesn't. You might say, well, what's he gonna do? Strip naked when he leaves your party? Yeah, because here's what should happen. If he says, well, I'm leaving, immediately you should say, hold up. We just went through a 120 hour journey together. And if you're leaving, that's on you. And I give you the option to leave if you wanna leave the party. But if you're leaving, you give me all your shit right now. And then there should actually be dialogue between you and the character hashing it out. Maybe but it's not persuasion. its not your shit. It's your party shit. You're all like a, a gang of people. You don't, you're not their, like, they're not your slaves, bro. That's how it's supposed to be. It's an RPG. They're supposed to be their own character, their own person. Check. Maybe there's an intimidation check. And then the option should be either you just let him go. What kind of logic is this? Or you have to convince him to give you your items back. Or... You fight him, and if you win, you keep the items, right? That's what should have happened. Not, oh, he decides to leave. He disappears from the fucking game. Literally, he just goes, bloop, he's gone. They wipe him from game's existence, and now you have no option whatsoever to get your shit back. That's bad game design. And you might say, well, your consequences, your actions should have consequences. Yes, if you're gonna lose the character, that's the consequence. And give me the extra step of role-playing to have that dialogue so we can now determine what happens because you're choosing to break our, our camaraderie, our fellowship. You're the one doing it, not me. I'm not sending you off. You decided to leave. Is that what he did to Panda Lee? Panda Lee, I bought you those slippers. Take them off. I bought you that t-shirt. Take it off. You, you can't have it. So now we have to hash this out, <laughs> right? Seriously. That's you want to leave? You don't just no. to steal everything, right? If you are in a relationship and you break up, does one person in the night steal everything in the fucking house and run out the door? But that's not what happened. No. That's not what happened. Who keeps what, right? It's bullshit. It shouldn't be like this at all. It's absolutely terrible writing. And Zero says it was his stuff. Wrong. It was the party stuff. It was the party's stuff because everything earned that he had equipped on him is the party's property because they earned it together through their fellowship and camaraderie, not him doing it alone. If there was shit on him that he had earned completely by himself, you have the right to leave with it. None of that shit was his. It was everyone's to divvy out as appropriate during their working together. Once you're leaving, now you got to determine what you get to leave with. It's that simple. There should have been that extra level of RPG, you know, gameplay and they didn't instead they copped it out he he literally disappears from the game huh how is that role playing oh i blipped you out of existence Bloop. what the fuck are you talking well he might come back right? later it's i don't know gameplay. i haven't played it's it bad writing it's bad programming it's bad game but wait you just I'm said sorry, it's not bad writing convince me different they could have done that a million ways better to make it feel more like a real rpg yeah he should have left butt naked 
I made the moral choice. Now we got to hash it out if you're going to leave. You don't just disappear from fucking existence. Oh, he's permanently he gone. That's interesting. Because he's there from like the first hour. Must have been a big conflict. So. <clears throat> anyway. um, All that being said, I'm pretty upset. I do feel like this is a huge design flaw by Larian. I think Larian could have done way, way better with this. And now, continuing on with the playthrough, now I have to decide what I'm gonna do next because I basically can't have that build in my party ever again. I respect Minsk. He was so pissed off, no he might have started God, thinking that he's talking about a real person. Asterian made and and then you you the best take equipment. a step back and you're and like wait we're, like, we're talking about a video game playthrough yeah sure sure the thing Phil that I'm living with my whatever decision. you say man he should leave that's fine if he leaves and he's out of the plot or whatever you know and I think he's a baby too and here's the other thing too because people are like well you should live with the consequences of your decision well actually it's not fair because you're not allowed to because my decision was I don't want him to become the vampire lord so I don't sacrifice thousands of vampire spawn then he breaks the staff on his knee anyway. So now the vampire spawn are already screwed. You basically negated my decision. Basically, the decision was either go with Asterion and do what he wants, or else get a bad ending. Well, that's not a decision at all. That's a trick. It really is. That's a trick. That's bad writing. But, but the thing is, he doesn't know how many endings they have and what decisions he actually has. He doesn't know that. He just knows what he's experienced, and then is just making up all that other extra context. There's no way to know you're going to get the bad end by making the moral choice. Especially, you know, you've been going the whole playthrough like this. That's bullshit. And so, I think what it is, a lot of people would have said, hey, we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna reload. I'm not gonna reload. You know, it sucks that that's where they went. With but this is, you know, this is ultimately about him getting to shit on the people that defend the game and say that, you know, the writing is good and the endings are good and the interactions, the choices, all that stuff. He gets to dunk on them now. He was looking for a reason for over like 150 hours. Because that was his whole narrative, that people are saying that, wow, this is game of the year, this is a 10 out of 10. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. And finally it happened. So now we need to bask in the glory and have a, a triumphant victory lap. With that writing. Now, the funny part about it is some people have been telling me, well, you understand that if you had high affinity <clears throat> with Asterion, it wouldn't have gone down like that. If you had high affinity... How am I supposed to know that? Right? Well, guess what? I can't have high affinity because I'm doing a moral choices role play. The whole playthrough, I've been trying to make the best moral choices, right? There's been a few here or there that are very tenuous, I would say. <clears throat> but for the most part, I'm going with the moral choices, so I'm going to live with that. So apparently, you just can never have a good outcome with Asterion if you're a moral person in this game. That's essentially what they're saying. You would have had to make bad choices that he likes... You would have had to, for example, earlier in the playthrough, you would have had to murder someone for a demon for him to be pleased with you to learn what the runes were cut into his back, even though during the Casador plotline, you find out anyway. So it didn't even matter that he didn't find out early. All that's a moot point, but he hates you for it anyway. It's bullshit. It's bad writing. And I don't like that at all, and they could have done a much, much better job with it, and I'm not going to change my opinion on that. I don't like this part. This is crazy because he already changed his opinion on that. In the beginning, he said, not that I'm saying that this is bad writing, but this is bad game design. And now it's like, this is bad writing. I'm not changing my opinion on that. The, the whole Casador plotline is- You already did. And the game mechanic of someone leaving your party and stealing items because they literally blip out of fucking existence when they leave your party is a terrible, terrible way to code the game. They could have done a scene where you hash it out and you have these choices. In fact, wouldn't that have been better? Okay, you're deciding that we have a difference of opinion. You need to leave the party. All right, so now you're gonna have a, di a, a dialogue, either a persuasion check, an intimidation check, a, a deception check, something like that. To a get vibe check? Back. Or you mutually agree because you still like the character enough that they could just leave with the inventory, or you fight them. And maybe that could be awesome because maybe now they get to use all the shit they learned. Imagine if immediately you have to fight Asterion. He goes, okay, turn one, invisible. Oh fuck, where is he? And he wants, and he backstabs one of your characters, and he's so powerful because he's your party member, he insta kills one of your characters. Right? Like, oh shit. Like, that would be dope. I think that would be amazing if you have to actually fight it out with them at the end for them to get their. Yeah, plan. he's been talking and about this the entire game. time. Like, no joke. They just didn't have the, the design choices. They didn't think of it. I think that would have been amazing. Then you want, you want to talk. And he's going to talk this greatly during QA as well. Experience. That would have been something I've never experienced in a game before. And I would have been like, wow, that would have been ultra awesome to have in the game.
but instead they literally took the easy way out and they blip the character out of the game Bloop, done code line of code removed Bloop, done what the fuck is that anyway um so i'm i'm upset obviously i just spent over 20 minutes on this podcast talking about the situation and how upset i am right there you go. Shadow Dancer says, roll a one, no bonuses. I like the fight idea, but both his stats make it a boss fight. Yes, I would love that. Make them a boss. Now you have a cool, epic boss fight to get rid of this uh, character. Big ups Jesus story. Christ, who says, possession is theft, Phil's a communist. You know, it makes sense. It totally well, you're sense. you're retaining possessions of the United States of Phil. What are you thinking? Blew me away. What are you thinking? Where are you going with those golden pants? They're mine. I bought them for you. Give me back my golden pants right now. Disappear. They got a plus 60 critical. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? My own game? Weary Mark, I bought this game. I have the right to criticize it. I've played it over 120 hours. I can tell you where there's room for improvement instead of just sucking the balls of Larian Studios devs, okay? I don't suck balls. I tell you how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Clip this right now. Clip it. I don't suck balls. Awful part of the game. Over 120 hours, I can tell you where there's room for improvement instead of just sucking the balls of Larian Studios devs, okay? I don't suck balls. I tell you how it is. This is a awful part of the game that should be improved. I don't suck balls. When they make them, they should make it better, not fuck you over. And the other part about it is people are saying things like, well, if you had known that you were going to lose the inventory, right, then basically what would have happened is you would have always done the decision to appease the person so they stay with you. You're right, and I think now, what you're seeing now, okay, is essentially the problem with this game. Now that you know that if a character leaves you, you lose their inventory, what's gonna happen is for a lot of people, they're just gonna make the whole game about appeasing the party members because they want to keep them in the party so you have that option of bringing But them isn't in isn't that how you also work with real relationships as well? It's like you want to make sure the people that you're hanging out with are cool and they don't have problems with you so you can hang out with them cuz you like them. Whatever reason for the plot, for a fight, for lock whatever. You always want everyone happy with you, right? So instead of it being an RPG where you can simulate who you really want to be and make the choices you want, instead it call it becomes I am a, a, a pleaser, a yes man, a person who just appeases my party members so they'll never You're a ball sucker. lose all of this work that I put into the game. That's terrible. That is absolutely awful. That's bad writing. That's bad gameplay. That's bad everything. No one should have to play the game walking on fucking eggshells, wondering if they're going to piss one of their party members off and then they leave and then you're fucked because the game mechanic is they disappear from the universe, right? <clears throat> so that's terrible. And well, I mean, when, when your friends left you, they disappeared from the universe, too. You can't get a hang of them anymore, and you're not planning on, and now you're all alone. So that's very realistic. What, what's the problem? should be improved. Absolutely, positively, it should be improved. It's not, all right? I think that's something that, again, whether they patch it in or whether that's something that in a future installment they put into the game, that should be dramatically changed and overhauled. That's one of my major gripes with the game right now. I have a few gripes with it. As you know, I played 120 hours and I had some criticisms of it. This is probably my strongest one right now. That you could screw me out of unique gear I worked my ass off to get and to create this build. He worked his ass off six days a week. And now you screw me, right? I just, that is so unacceptable in my opinion. So anyway, um... That's my take, and you can disagree. And I'm sure there's tons of people out there who disagree. If you disagree, I want to hear your take, and I want to hear why you disagree in a valid way. Not just, oh, you're wrong and Larian's right, right? Uh, it's That's ball sucking, okay? No ball sucking, right? Uh, this stream is getting very, very erotic. Ass kissing. I thought you didn't like sexual you know, content. But it, but it, but it's all gay. It's all gay, so it's fine. Yeah. We're not talking about titty grabbing and stuff like that. I actually want to We're hear just talking about ball kissing and what was the other one? What did he just say? Okay, no ball sucking, right? Shaft grabbing? Ball sucking around here, ass kissing. Ass kissing? You know, knob stroking. Knob no. stroking, there we go. None of that. I actually knob stroking. Arguments for why- No stroking around here. They've handled it. Which is ironic from the guy who literally is one of the few people to be ever recorded stroking it on stream to say no stroking. 
Come on, you're just being a hypocrite at this point. Better than my proposed way to handle it, okay? Um. <clears throat> so, and by the way, here's another thing that people have said. Well, other RPGs do it. What RPG? Name one RPG. NBA 2K. Your party, and there's no option to ever get them back and get your gear back. NBA 2K. I got LeBron on my team. Not happy with the contract. I'm over the salary cap. I can't offer him anything else. He leaves. Can't get him back. He takes his overall that I've built. He takes the career that I've given him. And he leaves. Because I'm not aware of it. And by the way, I've played a ridiculous amount of RPGs in my time. I'm literally playing an RPG right now called Like a Dragon Infinite Well. There's two parties. When you switch from the plot from one party to the other, you still have access to the inventory of the other party that you can't play with. Okay, I've played many Final Fantasy games where a character will leave with inventory, but later on it comes back. Or they put the inventory into your party inventory. They don't just remove it magically. It doesn't disappear. The character doesn't blip out of existence. They've all takes it with him. solved this problem many, many times before in other RPGs. This RPG chooses to ignore all of those solutions and say, we're doing it our own way, a very annoying badly designed archaic way that punishes the player and makes it that now you're afraid of always pissing off a party member because they might steal all your shit. That's stupid. Sorry, it just is stupid, okay? Um, And it's funny because now some people are saying, well, what about Final Fantasy Tactics? Oh, Final Fantasy Tactics, a PlayStation 1 game. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you wanted him to name one. That's so why, why are you discrediting that? That's all you asked for, for an example over 25 years later you got your example nothing's advanced since then nothing's gotten better <laughs> right how about this if you want to play final fantasy tactics go play final fantasy tactics this is an rpg in the modern day that's supposed to have modernized mechanics that are appeasing and appealing to the player all right i'm playing this game because i want to simulate a certain style of moral compass in my main character and I should be able to live with death to choices. Yes, but you also simulate relationships with the characters and yours wasn't strong enough with the character to keep them pleased so they just left and they took their shit with them. Without getting dirty surprises like this, being completely screwed. How does it make any sense that Asterion had the foresight to say, well, we don't want to soft lock you. So we're gonna give you a bag full of all the items that Asterion had in his inventory, but not anything he actually has equipped on his person. That's bullshit. Either it's all or nothing. Not being selective about the shit. That's really stupid, you know? <clears throat> so, sorry, don't like it. Not going to like it. You're not going to change my mind, whether trying to yell at me and saying that I'm wrong or, you know, all oh, other RPGs do it this way. It's bad. It's just bad game design, in my opinion. You have but, but right wait, 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 what, what, what? So he just asserted it as fact, immediately followed by is just my opinion. So if you say all of this shit, you're wrong, but that's just my opinion. But you're not. That's not, it's a contradiction. You're not gonna convince me otherwise. Right now, I'm very upset. <clears throat> oh, now he's upset. That I got okay. Too far into the game and that I makes can't sense. Get my shit back, right? So. I'm not going to reload the game. I'm not going to redo my choice just for the sake of appeasing this spoiled brat character. I'm going to continue on with the playthrough. It just sucks. I'm not going to have anyone who basically has that build anymore. And there's really nothing that I can do about it, right? I'm just, I just have to kind of live with it um, and deal with it. And that's okay, but it will leave kind of a gap in my playthrough where I always, you know, the rogue character was great. I loved having them the entire game and now I can't lockpick. I could respect someone to lockpick, like Minsk, maybe we could do that, but Minsk will now not hold a candle to what Asterion was able to do in combat. He doesn't have any of the gear. Like I said, I think what we might do today is first thing we do is go on a shopping trip because some people have recommended, um, going to this particular vendor or two and buying a couple like a new bow or something like that. I have no I have no rings for Minsk at all. First thing today, go on that shopping trip. Party member, then my for combat, my party's going to be ridiculous cuz Lazel was also like crazy good in combat and she hasn't been in my my game now for many hours. So maybe rescuing her is the way to go and then I have the most crazy party ever for fighting. Um and then I guess we just forego the entire rogue idea. We just don't have one in our party anymore, right? I'd like to hear your opinions on this.
Okay? All right. I'm officially done with this segment on Baldur's Gate. Uh, yeah, until the Q&A. Until one minute man tips, and then we're back on it. Now, I have one quick thing I need to do, and I'm going to test. Well, not test, but I'm going to use a new feature where I can pause the recording. Whoa! I'm going to resume the pop-ups. Right now. Five dollars from Tony T underscore MP4. I made a voice message about this, but he expects the members that leave to leave butt naked. Idiot. Yeah. Five minutes rent incoming. Yeah. Well, it was near that. It's gonna keep going. It's gonna keep going for sure. <clears throat> that's important, and then I'm going to continue the podcast. Five so he has an email that's important. He apparently, about games being the same, but when a studio tries something new, he hates and complains about it. Talking out of both sides of his mouth. Well, he's uh, complaining that this is not accessible, apparently. He forgot to mention that the vampire is Rainbow Flag. Well, everybody, it's a it's a dark fantasy setting. Everybody can be. Especially when you can romance all of them. And 99 cents from the deep fryer. Neil Newbong detractor confirmed. Asterians VA. Yeah, I, I think he's chill. I don't think he's involved in this. It's the Asterian, the character. Imagine being this toxic. Over an NPC. Yeah, man, you can you can really see he was worked up over this because now the playthrough is ruined. Five dollars from Copsidefall. Phil is the type of guy to tell you this long, drawn out, elaborate story. Then he says to make a long story short. Okay, hold on. Well, I, we kind of knew it was gonna be a long story, anyways. Project Seven T-shirts. Project Seven T-shirts. Yeah, he left the party and then took the items with him. And now they're sitting somewhere in the closet. Or he threw them out or something? This reminds me of when Phil asked for Howard's arcade board after he said he didn't want it. Yeah, this is the, the arcade board, man. The arcade board. If, if it really went the way that Howard is describing it, and I don't believe he would lie about it, like a DSP. Damn, dude. He gave him the board to fix it, and then he wanted it back. This guy is special. And his specialty is being bad at everything. And now we're writing emails live on the podcast. Possession is theft. Phil is a communist. Of course he is. He just wants people to be happy. As long as he's happy. And the people that he doesn't like are miserable. Not true. If he would have had a close friendship with him, it completely changes his ending. But he got close to no okay. one just like <clears throat> real life. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, it's art imitates life, you know. Hot face. He sucks Mike's plums hot face. The, yeah, he sucks the plum. What was the other one? He strokes the shaft or whatever. Which is like, this stream is very special. Five pounds from Pechi. He should send it to All a right, suggestion box. All right, that was great, and I'll just like that. Long, detailed brief message that is impersonal about his <laughs> personal experience and see the reaction. Yeah, the, the Larian suggestion box. So, so we have what suggestion from Dark Side Phil, I guess some kind of a mouth jeweler idiot. <laughs> Imagine they read it like that. <clears throat> oh, now we're back on the track, are we? Five, Let's continue. Five. Just accept you failed the mission, thumbs up, light skin tone. Okay. He never I failed the mission. I was able to do something I had to do quick. I'm back, and now we continue with the show. Yeah, but the stream was paused. Right. Older exposing topic. Phil's feelings towards human relations. Yeah, that's fantastic. I didn't expect this. I'm looking forward to the eventual Steve video that's going to come out on this. $1.99 from YT Commenter. Swap out Astaran's name for Liana. It's hilarious. Yeah, Leanne, <laughs> she left the party and she, like, took everything. Like, what? One I bought you this t-shirt. Give it back. Commenter. Also, who didn't return a bow to DSP? Rambo, Liana. The bow? I don't know. Because I don't know. The very it sounds like it could be both of them, honestly. Variety in releases to try to get more stuff rather than just all RPGs into my schedule. And Liana kind of took uh, kind of took the opposite approach. She left and she left all the the soap stuff behind. So he had to deal with it. She left a bunch of throwaway items that have no value. He couldn't even sell them to a vendor. Atmosphere and a supernatural twist. This time around, it looks like a game where it's it's two characters. One's a detective, and I'm not even sure who the other one is. And they're going to a old. Now we're talking about Alone in the Dark, the game we've been talking about for a week now. Investigation into like a bunch of murders or disappearances in the house, and I guess at some point the game will go supernatural. The reason that I say that is because I watched the entire like big trailer explanation for the game on my rea uh, react show this last Sunday and literally they don't want to give any of the game away so all you see is the character David Harbour the actor plays one of the characters looks just like him and you see him entering the house or whatever and then he has this other this woman with him I'm not even sure what her relation is to his detective character and they run into some like really creepy people in the house one of these girls is running around she almost looks like she's a ghost maybe she is who knows and then nothing happens. Like in this explanation trailer, nothing happens. You don't see gameplay, like no combat. 
No supernatural element. An explanation yeah. trailer. Nothing actually happened. Even though it's just a normal trailer. So it's weird because the game comes out tomorrow and no one really knows what the game is yet. Okay? Um, <clears throat> well, this morning... Well, it kind of looks a little bit stinky. Allow me to read you the scores and reviews for this game. Yeah, if he's excited right, to read them, then they're bad. Oh, boy. Um... Here's your score breakdown. IGN, 6 out of 10. Game oh, it's spot, bad. 4 out of 10. Oh, it's your terrible. Gamer, 2 out of 5. Games Radar, 1.5 out of 5. Yeah, it's Which bad. Square, 6 out of 10. Noisy Pixel, 7 out of 10. Not Now, just listen to this breakdown, because this is a bunch of others. 90%, 85%, 84%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 75%, 75%, 72%, 70%, 65%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 53%. What? <clears throat> okay, so, so this some people crazy. liked it and some didn't um, like it? Because What? They're all supposed like to agree. Like it, but then there's some people who really, really do like it. Okay? So here's some actual direct quotes from a few different reviews um also i thought that game journalists were just paid chills and, and what they say doesn't matter underutilized and it feels awkward from a gameplay to story execution it does have great atmosphere and a great haunted house design there's some weirdness that i think old horror gamers should see at some point it's like resident evil meets twin peaks we played alone in the dark it's far from perfect but puzzle twists and atmosphere are worthy okay this is not a full review, but the new Alone in the Dark is a tremendous letdown. A fantastic atmosphere is completely let down by frustrating from IGN like a two or three from regular people. Yeah, uh, usually I found that to be true. I'm not aware that I've ever... Because, like, any game that is at least decent gets a seven. ...mental health issues very well. I'm just going to be honest. Remember when we played... Because, like, games aren't really like movies. When, when they're really bland or bad, they're just not very enjoyable to play for the most part. And literally at the end of the game, it's like, oh, suicide's fine. What? Yeah, it's fine. I'll just kill myself. Wait, what? No, that that shouldn't be in the yeah. You know, but that's how. Bill, is that the is, is that the yeah, voices in your head talking? Game, like, oh, it's fine. It's just. Or we're talking about video what? games. No, wait, what? No, whoa! I can't even believe they wrote it like that. You know? Or take a look at Silent Hill games, where people are so haunted by the terrors of their life, this psychological trauma that they've suffered that their psychological trauma becomes bosses. And the bosses at first are mutated freaks and you don't know what they are. And then when you find out later what they actually represent in real life, you fucking shit your pants in terror. Like still to this day, after having fought that bo particular boss in Silent Hill 2, and then after the boss was done, you guys told me what the boss was. I was like, wow, that's fucked. And like that, to this day, that still gets me. I'm like, I can't believe that's what that was. And goddamn, that's really fucked up. It's like, it really fucks your head up, okay? So, I don't know of any, like, horror game that's actually really taken <laughs> mental issues and psychological trauma and handled it very well. Um, you know, uh, here's more. Here's my review of Alone in the Dark. The pros, really good voiceovers, good gameplay, good graphics and fantastic writing, but the cons, the monsters are not challenging at all and there's dull puzzles. Nine out of 10. So, I think, if, if you see the point I'm about to make, this is one of those games that it's for a particular style of gamer. And overall, I think it's really hard to score. And I think one of the major criticisms that I've definitely seen of the game is that it's way too short. It's a full $60 release. It's not 70, but they're selling it for 60. So does that mean he's going to play it if somebody else buys it for him? Is that what he's trying to say? Because it's short. We can just play it in like a couple of days, you guys. The only way that really the game would be longer is if you fail a bunch of the puzzles or you get stuck on puzzles. <clears throat> that has never happened but to Dark Side Phil. Really, really short. All right. I guess, I, I don't know. I didn't see any actual people call out how short it is. When you were telling me the game is really short, uh, I would probably assume 10 hours or less, right? So, yeah, if you can beat the game in like three sittings... And it's 60 bucks i can definitely say i understand why people are complaining about the game but if it's got good atmosphere if it's got good acting right and, and a story that's that's suspenseful and scary and grips you then i don't i think that the the the, the whole idea of the gameplay is inferior it kind of reminds me of a game a long time ago do you guys remember that game i can't remember what the name of it was but there was a game where you were like a, a medium between two worlds and 
It was, it was oh, so it's picture. the game called The Medium? Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. Oh, Murdered Soul Suspect. Now I remember. Oh, no. Murdered Soul Suspect. So is that other game? The elements were not great. It was a game that had kind of crappy gameplay, but the plot was interesting and the atmosphere was creepy. So overall, I really liked Murdered Soul Suspect, but most people hated it. It was critically panned. Most gamers said it sucked, but I played it and I really, really liked it. And I praised it at the time saying, yeah, it's definitely a flawed game. You can tell this isn't any AAA game. It's got bugs. The gameplay has issues. But I really enjoyed the game. And a lot of people even said my playthrough was one of the best on the internet because I didn't approach it from a negative standpoint of crap. Uh-huh, there you go. I played it for what it was. Some people said, said which is one guy, and he got game like game five likes. A good playthrough. So when I hear about something like this, a game like Alone in the Dark, right? It sounds to me like it may be up my alley of the kind of game that I like. I like creepy games. I like murder mysteries. All right, just play it. Elements. I like detective stories. David Harbour is a good actor. I'd probably enjoy his performance in this game. Um, He's a good actor in movies, in TV the shows. sucks, then yes, obviously, that's going to hold the game back a bit, right? Um, Somebody well, getting that lean. Man, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth 60 bucks. You know what I mean? And this kind of game, if it really has these... It's worth 50 bucks like, if somebody else buys it, like it for you, Phil. You know that already. That's what you're trying to tell people right now. Um, I'm going to like the game, but I I, I don't know if I'm going to spend my money on it. right now regardless. Uh, because I have to... Let's just get to the point where you ask people to buy it for you. To be, right? Um, But maybe after we finish either Baldur's Gate 3 or Like a Dragon... This could be a consideration to add into the schedule along with Dragon's Dogma 2 for variety, right? Think about it. I'm, I'm, after hearing this stuff about it, I'm intrigued about it. I think maybe this could be the kind of game that actually is interesting, all right? But I don't know if it's interesting for 60 bucks. Like, I kind of feel like, here's the thing. If I buy it for 60 bucks and we do a playthrough and it does well, it doesn't matter what it costs, right? So for me, it's like, it's not a big deal, but at the same time, I'm gonna feel pretty bad if I spend 60 bucks and it really is like an eight hour game and it sucks. And we're like, man, you know, I really let myself get ripped off because I had some of those reviews to warn me and I just ignored them. So I don't know what to do here. Yeah, I'm convinced you guys, I'm sending him a $60 tip right now so he can buy the game. I guess we'll have to try to So it's it worth together. it for him. The truth is, this is not a decision we have to make immediately this week because I have to get through Baldur's Gate and I have to get through Like a Dragon first and we're starting Dragon's Dogma on Friday. So we've got our schedule set. Once we get through those, then we can look at, okay, what's next? And yes, Alone in the Dark absolutely is a candidate for me of a game that I'm interested in playing, okay? Uh, last topic for today, the new Game Pass release schedule was just released. Coming out today, if you have Xbox Game Pass, Lightyear Frontier and MLB The Show 24. So the new MLB game's out today. I didn't even know that. Uh, on the 20th, tomorrow, The Quarry. Well, all I'm going to say about The Quarry is this. It's the same dev team that made Until Dawn, all right? Sadly, it feels like Until Dawn Light, 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 meaning it doesn't have, in my opinion, the better writing of Until Dawn. It's a badly written script, and a lot of the characters are meant to obviously be over-the-top obnoxious. When you're playing a game where, especially a game like this, a survival horror game, where none of the characters are likable, you're just not going to care enough about them to really be invested in the story and that's kind of what happened to me with the, with the quarry it wasn't that the graphics weren't good it wasn't that you know the game didn't function well it's that i didn't like any of the characters and when you don't like the characters in a, in a horror game you're just not going to care what happens to them and that I, I just was so disconnected from the plot i just found myself getting you know wanting it to end you know when the characters literally uh, an hour or two into the game are dancing around i kid you not they're dancing around saying pop pop peanut butter utter pops and this is a running joke in the game. It's hard for me to take the game seriously. Anyway, uh, on 321, Evil West. 326, uh, Terra Invicta. Two Canadian dollars from Boat Night. Did a dead uncle leave him a box of shirts? <laughs> That's a new one. There we go. That's a new one. I like those a lot. The 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 drip the the drip jokes. Four, we knew that oh man! So Diablo Four officially. Dead came. Uncle used to live in Hawaii. That's why we don't know him. He's an old Italian, back from the old country. He moved to Hawaii in the in the late 1980s. The month, 
hitting game pass. He's been blazing it until he died uh, recently. Right about the time where the uh, LTG dissed him about him looking like trash. So that was a great coincidence. Mind control delete. People in the chat are like, huh? What are you doing? What, what was that? What? Pop, pop. Peanut butter, utter pops. That's part of the game. Go, go look. You'll find montages of it on YouTube. Of every time they do it in the game. It's stupid as shit and it's in the game. Anyway. Well, this is stupid as shit is, and it's in this podcast, anyway. so. Okay. Five so that's what I. Slime privilege. He doesn't remember what it's like to be in a group of friends and having in jokes and just generally having fun with friends. Uh, yeah, man, the banter. He's missing that banter. And uh, back in the day, when you watch like Smart Guys or one of the shows he did with Rambo, you can see like he was genuinely happy to have people around him and just like have some some chat with, just shoot the shit with. Guys. And it was good for him as a person too. Because, you know, you got somebody to talk to, except, you know, what he's doing now, which is just talking to himself. Um, and people that pretend to like him or just straight up don't like him. It's time for shout outs. Shall we? Let's get to the shout out segment. Yeah, let's get. Um, <clears throat> what is this? The fuck out of my chat, stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Damn, who was that? All right, I have... That guy's gonna get posted on Twitter chats. or something, wow, so eventually I'll find out. Uh, many super chats. All of them are calling him out on the Baldur's Gate thing, so we're about to circle back to that in a second. So prepare your brain cells. What you got yeah, left after this pre-stream? did a ton of super chats this morning, so the first one... Yeah, he was calling you out. If you mess around, you find out Phil. And they did another one. If you don't get a prenup, that's exactly what happens in a divorce. Right. Uh, another super chat. I Philip, I don't suck balls, Brunel. <laughs> You're right, I don't suck balls. Uh, Ice11084 did a super chat. Says you didn't buy the game; it was donated. That's neither here nor there. Doesn't matter who paid for it. I have invested the time into this game. I'm a customer and a player of the game, and therefore I have the right to criticize. It. <laughs> um, it's neither here Philip or there. Five dollar super chat again, and said so. To be clear. Instead of talking, <laughs> No, instead of taking a big fat L, you want the devs to change the game? Yes, I absolutely want Larian Studios to drop everything they're doing right now. And everything extreme. Doing. This is extreme, Phil. Larian Studios right now, and you're sitting at your desk. Stop doing what you're doing immediately. Stop Go watching the tractor videos. Put your coffee away. Now listen to me. You have to recode my game right now to give me back my items. I'm very upset with you. And but you were very upset. Of anything that you're doing right now that you must give me my items back. So get to it immediately. Thanks a lot, Lee Hooker Warrior, for that. <laughs> but like 20 minutes yeah. ago, he was yelling at people. And now we're getting like sarcastic segments, jumping to the extremes. Like, look at how happy this guy is. <laughs> of course. That's of course, exactly that's what I, I want. You hit it on the nose. Okay. <clears throat> Yikes. Anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> um, Big Tuna, re-upping their memberships for 20 months and says, Asterion said possession is nine-tenths of the law and left. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for the support. And Adam Theory, with nine months as a member, says, the Cory was a little disappointing for me. Yeah, I mean, I think for everyone, especially if you were a big fan of Until Dawn and you've been playing the Dark Pictures anthology games recently, right? And then you said, oh, you know, I want to play their newest game. Because here's the truth. You guys may not have known this. The Quarry, get this, was actually designed for the Google Cloud Streaming Gaming Service. What was it called? I've actually Stadia. what it was called because it failed and now it doesn't exist anymore. The Google Stadia. It was actually an exclusive game they made just for that service. It was supposed to be that exclusive. What was it called? Google huh? Stadia. Thank you, Darziak. It was Google Stadia. So it was supposed to be a Stadia exclusive so people would want the Google Stadia service. And what happened was the Stadia failed so quickly within a year that they didn't even get to finish the game yet. And Stadia was already ending. So what they had to do is they had to retool the game and turn it into a full-fledged release, which they weren't planning on doing. This was supposed to be a Stadia exclusive. That's why it's not so good. You understand? Like They were like, eh, we're not going to put all the effort in. Because it's not a cross-platform game. It's just going to be on Stadia. But maybe if it says successfully, then maybe we'll actually make better full-fledged games for Stadia. And Stadia flop before they even release. So they retooled it, released it, and everyone's like, what the hell is this? Why is it so inferior to both Until Dawn and the Dark Pictures Anthology? And there's your answer. 
Okay. I, I kind of zoned out of everything he just said after he said Google Stadia, and I've been focusing on his nose. And just pay attention to it as he moves around and the lighting changes up. It's like a, a big red bell pepper in the middle of his face. It's just so disproportionately bloated and red to the rest of the mess that we see that is melting on his face that it's, it's impressive. Then Tronic says, how do you keep up with all these facts I lost all, with all these things that happened? I don't know. I just, I, I try to remember this stuff, you know, that I'm involved in and, I, you know, it's my job to talk about it. So maybe that's what it is. But I know it's like little minutia that you you're, you actually tie these together into these webs of stories and stuff. Yeah, it's right? gin sanity. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I received. A and again, the spot under his right ear is is getting worse. It's going to take over its whole body soon. It's morning. It's a symbiote. I never actually uh, started uh, streaming. And this person says, why don't you load a save from prior to Asterion leaving, take his equipment back, and redo the dialogue the same way. That's why the game allows to save often, even during combat and dialogue. But you know, even uh, I know people joke about leprosy, and I think it's really funny because metaphorically, that's kind of what is happening to him on the internet. Nobody wants to touch him with a 10-foot pole because he's just toxic. He's going to transmit his toxicity to them. And then they're going to be known as the guy who associated with Dark Side Phil. You can learn through trial and error more easily because I don't want to save scum the game. Because he's the, the E-leper. And I understand what you're saying. that They set it up like that. Cyber leper. I don't want to do it that way. Uh, you know, a true role play is that you'll live with your decisions. Not, oh, you made a decision and you had a bad outcome and now you're going to undo the decision. Oh, also, uh, I wanted to show you guys this. LTG responded to DSP dissing him. And it's like a minute long video, but I want to I wanna go check it out real quick. I'll show you it's in a, a second. To live with the consequence. I'm totally, I want to reiterate this. I'm totally... 100% okay with the game having Asterion leave my party and he goes on and does whatever he wants. I'm totally okay with that. I'm not okay with the game finger snapping Asterion out of existence so there's no way for me to ever interact with him again or get an epilogue from him or get my equipment back. That's bad game design. They should have had as I But I thought that was just your opinion. Okay, so here it is. Um, shout out to whoever posted this on the subreddit slash DSP discussion five. You see the vibe? That nigga's still on my dick after all these years. I don't know why. I don't know what's. I don't know why that nigga's still on my cock. I, I have no idea why that man is on my dick. Me and him are not in the same fucking category at all. Like, I'm not a LOL cow. Like, yeah, you definitely are. We should leave that behind. That's 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 a given. You are an LOL cow, Mr. Tear God. And that's it. That's it. He couldn't even get a, a more of 20 seconds. More than 20 seconds of LTG's time. Suggested. And he was so mad. He was calling him a bitch and everything. He was calling him a plugger. Fantastic. Chance to either, you know, intimidate or sway. Yeah, we heard that. I'm just skipping it shit back i would really enjoy that there could have been many different sorry i'm never going to change my opinion on that never going to change his opinion okay. i received a three dollar tip uh also uh, i know i'm a i'm a nitpicky little boy but look at the scars or the marks on his right hand it's like is that from scratching or something he's been like tweaking out all like all over the place recently Like, this dude just touches himself and leaves a mark that lasts, like, 10 years. This is actually something that can happen. What is happening to him? Morning. It has its own TV trope page. It's called So Long and Thanks for All the Gear. Full-on tweak Dragon mode. Origins, Inquisition, Suikoden, Delta Rune, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. These are a few examples listed. It's especially prevalent in D&D CRPGs. In Dragon Age Origins, someone can actually leave permanently with DLC items that you paid for, and that's robbery. Oh, he wow. got absolutely bodied. They gave him a laundry list of games where this happens, and let's see how he's going to respond to this. He's going to say they're idiots or something. But I think you see the point I'm making here. Listen to the games you just quoted, right? Out, out of all those games, sweep it in, right? Uh, they're old Dragon games. Age Origins. Knights of the Old Republic. These are old games. Okay. And since then, we've made they're classics. And improvements of RPGs uh, for a reason. It's it's a frustrating design choice that makes no sense that it's in a modern RPG. If this was something from the 90s or the early 2000s, I'd be like, okay, it gets a pass. It's an old game. 
But now they, it's like they actively made the decision to make it like this. They did. They said, we're going to make it like this so that it frustrates you, right? It's stupid. Um, Keep crying, I guess. Thank you for the anonymous uh, $3 tip. I appreciate that very much. Let's get that on the leaderboard. Okay. All righty. Hold on a second here. We reading some more emails? What are we actually doing? Opening up PayPal. Let's check if the contribution is valid. And fifty cent tip. That's one minute, man. It's the first half of his tip, because he wants to send multiple messages now. From one minute, man. He says, it's kind of surprising you didn't get dialogue options to persuade Asterion. Yeah, hold on one second. I want to play your animation before I forget. If you had, he would still be in your party and everyone would have been so proud of him. As you said, you probably hadn't earned high enough approval from him. This game has an abundance of quests that give you a chance to earn approval from your party members. If you haven't done them all, maybe a friendship with benefits would have given you the options. <laughs> Undoubtedly, yes. Undoubtedly, that's what would have happened. You know? Unbelievable. Right? I mean, just think about it. Early on in the game, he wants to suck your blood. You tell him no. That's weird. Then he wants to sleep with you. You tell him no. <laughs> First, he wants, to... he wants to suck your blood. Then he wants to suck your balls. And you say no both times? And you wonder why he left? I mean, come on. He's a gay vampire. How? What? Like, what else is left? Kill. What else are we going to do? Character that literally it's the morally wrong decision. To it's make. just like Panda Lee all over again. And then later on in the game, because you didn't make that bad choice, that character helps you. So obviously that wasn't the right choice to make, right? Like every choice he wants to take is a bad one. Like I said, he really seems to be like the character that you know he's the bad morality character. And if you're doing an evil run of the game, he probably absolutely loves you, right? But for me, I'm doing a, a good morality run, right? And there's nothing I can really do about the fact that- Why did One Minute Man got put on the leaderboard with 1250 and nobody else does when they send him 50 cents? Awful decision. Should have gotten the 12. In fact- Because that's what Phil usually does, but One Minute Man is a special little boy. End of the game, we are going out of our way. When we're supposed to be saving the world right now from this elder brain, right? Instead, we go out of our way to go to the mansion where his vampire lord lives. We're fighting through armies of, of uh, Werewolves and creatures, bats. We're going down into a subterranean, you know, dungeon, and we're gonna. <laughs> you know what? This this, this whole thing reminded me of this, uh, of this vine from like a million years ago. It's time for Halloween. <laughs> Don't come to my house, or else I'll suck your dick, uh, uh, blood. I'll suck your blood. <laughs> Save him again, because during the ritual, Asterion is about to get sacrificed. We save him again. This is this situation. is the Dracula now, flow bad ending. From vampire hunters and his own vampire spawn during the course of the game. We save him another time during the ritual. Then we defeat the vampire lord. Dude, we already heard this. Come on. We defeated the vampire lord like 16 times already. What the hell? I completely disagree with that take, and you have the right to. But for me, that's my take on it. I find the character... Pretty annoying, and uh, yeah, Dracula and blow. Okay, again, living with that decision. But I oh man, that he took my goddamn gear, and I don't think that that should have been what happened. That they should they should fix that honestly. Like they should improve that in the game so that you have options to keep your gear. All right, that's my take. You can disagree. It's okay if you do, but that's my take on. It. I disagree, right. Phil. Okay, uh, Spawn Killer. Re-upping his membership for 34 months in a row. Holy crap, you're almost to your three-year anniversary. And he says, crazy how it's almost three years since you left Twitch. Yeah, we're almost at the three-year anniversary now of me. Can we have a special uh, event for that too? Uh, where we just shit on Twitch for the first half of the stream and then we play video games? Maybe we can eat something that Cat made. And poor. They didn't care to even speak with me about what was going on. They didn't think that it was important. Even though I'd been on Twitch for many, many years as a streamer. So... You know, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and rant about it three years later. I've, I've enjoyed my time here on YouTube, despite the fact that there's there's definitely some shortcomings of being on YouTube. It's very hard to get any kind of exposure. There's really no growth here when it comes to being a streamer. Like, I, I am who I am on YouTube, and that's it. Like, I'm never going to get big as a streamer on YouTube. It's not possible, because the way they've set up streaming, there's no way to really get exposure like there is on Twitch. Um, 
and the chat is inferior to Twitch's. I think we all agree there, right? But it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm, I've enjoyed my three years here, and I'm, I hope to be here for a long time. Carlton Jr. says, Asterion, in my opinion, is the least character development in his character arc throughout the game. Lazel, on the other hand, has a lot of development in terms of morality. Yeah, I agree. Lazel starts off completely indoctrinated and brainwashed into the Githyanki culture. Oh my god, I'm gonna be indoctrinated and brainwashed okay. after this stream. Um, I received another 1250 tip from One Minute Man. Hey, there we go. We hit the 25 daily One Minute Man goal. So allow me to, uh, play the second animation. But this is why he did it. That's why he put him up on the leaderboard for 1250, because he knows he's gonna send him up 1250 more, so he just he can just make it 25. Is he gonna make it 25? No, because it's two separate tips. We can't do that. We can't do that. What am I thinking? What am I, a mouth drooler? Perhaps I am. If you really want Asterion's weapons and armor, you can perhaps have chosen the other option that then ended him and looted him. This quest has like four to five endings, and you could have recruited Minx 20 hours ago. Now you've lost... But then again, he gets, he gets the $10 pop-up because we don't have custom pop-ups for, you know, specific sums. ...have chosen the other option that then ended him and looted him. This quest has like four to five endings, and you could have recruited Minx 20 hours ago. Now you've lost two companions. I've lost two companions. Are you talking about Minthara from the beginning of the game who really wasn't ever presented as a companion? Maybe that's what you're talking about? He says, are you going to lose Lazel too? Is it a coincidence that at the same time you're under pressure to finish two RPGs that you're playing, you're under pressure in Baldur's Gate 3 trying to finish off the Elder Brain? So what One Minute Man is saying, all right, is actually that Baldur's Gate 3 is an allegory of my real life because by losing Minsk and now Asterion, not Minsk, excuse me, by losing Minthara and now Asterion, all right, it's like... I've lost John Rambo and Howard. And because and because I have uh now been in a situation where I'm in pressure to finish RPGs, just like I'm being pressured in real life in the game to to stop the Elder Ring the Elden Ring. To stop the Elden Ring. Alright, I give up. Forget it. I was trying to make a joke and I botched it so badly, I'm never gonna finish the thought. <laughs> Marble mouthed it. Alright, forget it. <laughs> He stroke mouthed it. <laughs> oh man, this was like, oh, this was such a botch. This was such a bomb. If he was a stand-up comedian, he would have been laughed out the building in the wrong way. Not not laughed out, booed out. I marble mouthed it. Boo this man. Trying to say it's a joke. He's like, is, is it like, is Baldur's Gate really your real life? Like, you know what I mean? Like one of those surreal. Yeah, we, yeah, we get it. In the Matrix, and really, Baldur's Gate is an allegory for your real life or something like that. Right? But I, I know how this feels, man. <laughs> when it just doesn't land, when it doesn't come out right, it's an L. Especially when you knew what it could have been. Even though DSP does, because you know, not very fun. There you go. Mm. But he tries. Casually spoiling folks after the talk ended. What on earth are you talking about? What? what? What did I spoil? How could I spoil? I haven't played the game before. What? <laughs> Dude, just retire. Let's. Can we all get the please retire chant? Cause I can. Can I look it up on YouTube and just play it? I'm being told I never could have recruited Minthara anyway. That you have to, I guess, you, that's what you were actually saying early on in my run. Is that you can recruit certain characters in this game, but only if you do it. Please retire. Then later on, you can recruit them. Please retire. Game, this is Act 1, so this is not a spoiler if you've been watching the playthrough. People were like, oh, there's a fight against this character, Minthara. Get this guy out of here. Don't kill her. So Play I his theme out. song, Let Him Be Gone. And I knocked her out, and then people were like, oh no, you accidentally turned it off, you killed her. And I was like, what? So I guess later in the game there would have been options with her. Yeah, it's really shitty they were chanting this at the big show, who is like, he's a massive guy, he can barely move, he probably hurts every time he moves from all the bumps he's been taking, and then <laughs> and then they tell him to retire. And then he goes to AEW and gets slammed on the top of a car. Try to figure everything out, right? This is the last time I ever saw him is Powerhouse Hobbs body slamming him on a on the windshield of a car for real for real someone says it's not much of a consequence if you can put asterian stuff on another character and build them like him so it's like he never left that's why it's designed that way to be an actual consequence same with not getting any further resolution with him 
my my problem is uh, let me be honest here you want to know what my actual real problem is that you make this moral choice and the reason you made it is because you said i mean just what shadowheart says during the scene she yells out um yeah but you're gonna become the vampire lord at the ex the expense of all these people right and that's just not right that you're gonna sacrifice all these people to become more powerful right so then you made the moral choice to stop that from happening and then they just say, oh, Asterion says, oh, well, I'm never going to let them be freed anyway. And he snaps the staff over his knee like a spoiled brat. So now they're all going to... Yeah, die. we heard that. There was... Now you can't save the people. Do it now because the game Taro and Asterion, time ticking for the Elder Brand, all breaking shit. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Here is Solo, re his membership for 34 months. Says Thank Asterion you, Phil. like an upstanding guy. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Q and A. We have a few minutes left, so if anyone has anything they would like to talk about, please tag me in the chat. Q and A. Do I think I'll ever go back and play Hollow Knight from start to finish? I've always left that as an option. I've actually brought it up several times over the years in polls for possible playthroughs. No one seems to want it. To be honest, it's never really won. It's never really garnered that much attention. And this is the thing that I bring up all the time. All the time, people yell at me. And they say, why don't you play indie games? Don't you understand that indie games are great? That indie games today are much higher quality than even AAA games in a lot of cases. And you're really missing out. And I say, you know, you guys are right. So let's do it. Let's do a marathon where I play indie games or suggest some indie games. And I play them and literally no one shows up and no one ever asks for them. People yell for them. But then when I try to play them, they don't, they don't do well. I played Hollow Knight during a marathon. And I thought it was good. And I said, I would go back and consider playing it. And people were like, yeah. He's turning into no Brett Keen. I never thought I would see a Brett Keen mention in my chat. Man, I used to watch the drunken peasants dunk on him all the time. The gore believer individual. Sadly. Individual situation. That guy was so funny. And he didn't even have to do anything. We were just sitting there, like, not even doing anything. It was just funny. The moment that, like, someone like me plays it, it's like, eh, they don't care. You know, it sucks. I, I am interested in any game. I actually genuinely am. A lot of these games have looked interesting. The situation with an individual? Like pulling teeth trying to get people to watch them. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my audience. Is like, <laughs> yeah, the manatee. It's the same thing with Metro. I mean, Gail Court Schuler was my favorite because she was like, she was going full on, full on fa fan fiction on life itself. She was just inventing her own reality. You guys convinced me to play it and people actually did <clears throat> show up for that. But outside of that, you know, um, I just can't get I can't get anyone to engage with the with the indie stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we know what you're saying. We can see. That's why you don't play them anymore. Cosmo says, "Yeah, DSP was supposed to go on the drunken peasants, but it's a long story. It's actually a long story for real, for real." Remember Baldur's Gate three the best? Because then, like, somebody posted like at their desk, stop what they were doing. Their Dude, you already said this. Their apps and Drunken peasants were sending him like emails. Then they posted the emails that they got, and then you know it's it's a long story. <laughs> Very realistic. Okay. Reverse seven fifty says, "Is this experience ruining the chance of you ever doing another uh, one of this style or more? Once you know you have lots of free time." Um, my problem with the game is it's too damn long for my style. It just is, all right? There's nothing wrong with the game. The problem is my style of content creation, where I'm juggling several games at a time for variety. Cents from right? Green. Phil and the Beast are long lost cousins. Phil and the Beast are long lost cousins. Dude, the Beast. Who was the Beast? Now you're throwing me into some nostalgic territory, man. I need to find who the He's Beast hard. was, because I remember that guy was scandalous. One of the longest games Hold I've on. Played. I started it in December. I've played the beast. Stop as a main. Oh, player. dude, the beast! Over yes, I love him. Game. That's like three times longer than the average game that I would use. <laughs> the beast. I, it, that's really the problem here. It's I cannot so believe this. Oh man, you sent me down a, a spiral of insanity. Makes it very, very hard. Uh, this video is entitled to with girl. do the game justice. Do. To do my viewers justice. Just real quick, quick derailment, because he's talking about the, the same shit he always does. Awesome. You want a rant from the beast? The beast? Wait, wait, TJ, you'll, you'll learn a thing. Yeah, was... 76. The, the beast! beast. Yeah. yeah! Right, boys, I'm back 
The beast is fucking back. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Beast. Beast. Damn right. <laughs> Fuck yeah, the beast is in the house. Motherfucking hey. beast! This rant. Lay it down. Dude, Oops. he has a hippie peace symbol. Now, my friend, He's Scott the beast. Williams, Scotty. <laughs> oh! Anyways, let's go back because this is probably going to be long because I can't find the OG video. Let me see if I can find it. Right? I How many games have I skipped now? Two dollars from that. playing this one and finish. Yeah, this is just like my life, dude. He lost his friends just the same way he lost them in the video. How many games? Whoa! I'm going to play Dragon's Dog. The video game. And then it goes on hold. I'm not even playing Rise of the Ronin. Right? I'm I'm not playing Alone in the Dark right now. This is all stuff. If this game wasn't a game that took this long to get through, I would have been playing other games. You know? And that's a problem, again, if people uh, are sadly demanding other stuff and I can't get to it. You know? Someone please send me the Beast video. I really want to watch it. The Source video. Me. What was yeah. his name? It just leads to disappointment. Correct? It does. Because I can't... Phil, everything you do inevitably leads to disappointment. So just try and have fun and convey that you're having fun to your audience and maybe they're going to like you a little bit more. Appease the people who like the game because I can't play it enough to immerse myself in it and beat it in a reasonable amount of time. But I can't appease the people who don't like the game because now I have to put so much time into it, I'm not committing to other playthroughs and I'm skipping games. Do you understand? So... It's a, it's a problem. It's like a, it is, it's a big problem. And listen, I, I didn't play it at launch because I told you guys, I knew it was going to be too long and there was no way I was going to have a game like this work during the fall gaming season when I was literally juggling so many games. I knew there was no way that was ever going to work. I'm happy that I waited until December to start it. So at least December and January, we solely focused on this game and got really far in. So then when February and March hit and I was playing other games, it wasn't so bad, right? But man, <clears throat> I just, <laughs> I don't know how I could do another game like this. I don't. You see how much problems this has caused? No, again, not to say that I haven't enjoyed the playthrough, not to say that people haven't been supportive of it, but look at my, my whole business right now is disturbed by it. We're all rattled, we're in RPG overload and I'm skipping game after game because we're still stuck in this endless fucking playthrough, right? I mean, it's such an oddity that a game would be this long anyway. I mean, how often do you play a game that it's this long? You know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, I don't know. I got completely distracted by what you're saying, so I'm just going to keep skipping from now on. Actually, good for you. I'll tell you this. It, again, it's a double-edged sword. Here's why. For those of you who really have enjoyed the playthrough on stream, you've been very supportive of it. There hasn't even... I don't even think there's been a Baldur's Gate stream in months that we haven't hit the $100 tip skull. That says something, right? That means something. The game gets support on stream. But it's the absolute flip side when it comes to on-demand YouTube viewers. As I'm sure many of you who watch this podcast on demand know because you check the channel, the playthrough gets almost no views. I've got parts of the playthrough sitting at 200 views for weeks. No <laughs> 100 yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Wait, there what? Are people slowly watching it, but this is the kind of playthrough that's like a slow burn. Why would you admit this? Don't say this. You're supposed to be successful, Phil. You talk about being successful constantly. Don't 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 say the the videos are not successful, which is like half of your channel. Half of the output you put out is not successful? Time and eventually people Don't say this, it. even if it's true. It's take a long don't bring time. attention to it. So the playthrough, again, I told you guys things like engagement, views, profits on this channel have been down since I played Baldur's Gate 3 because I'm not getting the back end viewership and support on the playthrough here. I am getting it on the streams, you see? So it's kind of like, it's good I'm getting it on the streams because man, if I wasn't getting it on the streams, then this playthrough would have been a dud, right? And I think that would go for anything, right? Like any playthrough, any game, it doesn't even matter what genre it is, doesn't matter. Anything that's gonna be a hundred hours long, you're gonna lose that following because people don't have that amount of that attention span to watch a hundred hours of anything, right? It's hard to get people- Especially to if it's you. That's long, right? So yeah, there's not much I can really say about that, you know? Imagine a TV series, a hundred episodes of an hour each. How, how long will it fucking take you to get through that, right? Not everyone can watch One Piece. Which is that's what you're describing, a fucking One Piece, right? 
Well, you're not exactly on the level of quality okay. as those shows, Phil. You kind of have to know that. That's why you gotta pace yourself, so you can rotate people's attention, not have a two-hour podcast every day. I would go out of business. Definitely the behind the scenes, you know, the viewers who watch on demand. I call them the silent majority because there's thousands of people every day who watch my content. But wait, how are they the silent majority when you just said some of the videos barely break like 200 views and you get like 300 views on stream? Sound like they're the silent minority. That's why they're silent because there's not many of them. But they're not verbal. They don't come to the streams and they're non-verbal. They're autistic. Just there to sit back and watch casually. That's or maybe they just smoke too much weed. They go non-verbal. You hit the pen, you go non-verbal. You just lay down. You can't move. Oh, Phil's a full-time streamer. But but you left DSP in the background, so you kind of gotta listen to him. What can you do? You can't even get up. Come on, I've been there. YouTuber. So those behind-the-scenes views add up and become a big part of my income. And when I get several months where super chats are down. Those gifted memberships were all fake, so now my memberships are way, way, way down, and the views are down. This is hurting me, you know? That's why we have to get out of RPG overload, get through these games that I'm playing, and get to new games. We have to do this. Yes, I, I did actually uh, got through the, the first, like, 2,000 subs okay. on this channel by being uh, high all the time, so I can at least put up with show. his shit. And now I gotta say I'm completely desensitized. I can do it sober. I just don't like doing it sober. I, I want to drink beer instead because I just like it. Sit here and keep bitching about it. We're gonna move on. Because like watching hours of this guy is mind numbing. So you gotta be on something. Let's go on a shopping trip for Minsk. Whether we go to one or two vendors and we buy. Yeah, we heard this. Full day of. Oh wait, this is it. Finally back with a full day of RPG mania here today. RPG mania. We start with the gameplay. This is it. Wow. That was a miserable Q&A. We just talked about Baldur's Gate. Luffy, I didn't get any tips. I'm looking right now. I did not receive any tips from you. I don't know. No tips. tips link. How did you do it exactly? I didn't get anything. I feel like watching something else, man. I can't just drop it now. I'm in a good not mood. Sure what happened there. I don't know what happened either. So is he gone? I think he is. Yep. <laughs> but at least he... He did us this favor, where he let us listen to the gorgeous, awesome music that Larian Studios put in the the menu of their game. He did us that favor. He didn't let us listen to nothing. So people in his chat can now post the empty chair emote, which is a super positive meme of him just not being there when he's on stream. Same thing he shit on uh, XQC for doing. Oh, damn. Okay. Let's uh, let's let's give it to Chad. What should we watch right now? Because this is over. This has never been more over than it is right now. So what should we check out? Uh, today I have to give a big shout out to Ludwig World Order for his video. Uh, I, I can just show it to you. His video on the side scrollers and uh, basically their their decompression stream, which I think is a outstanding video i started watching it today is just so well it retains all the context it retains all their responses and it also correlates it to what dsp said at this time so eventually when i do the complete side scroller saga of streams where i just go and watch everything that's related to them and their interactions of dsp is going to be one of the key pieces that i go through because it's fantastic make sure you go check it out and add it to your playlist or something do something i don't know and then we go, a DSP's worst moment of 2023, part one, the interview. I'm tempted to start watching this. This could be like a research stream before the real actual saga stream. Because I intend on going like as, as deep as, as I can go. I might not go like ALT Insider deep because I know he's he's been decades of thousands of years in the business. But I'm going to go as deep as I can go for the uh, tiny ass effeminate man I am. So let's let's just do this. Let's let's watch this video. And oh, apparently I, I've left a comment on this video, and it's very well received, dude. Look, I'm a celebrity now. Uh, and I said the stream after the interview is like when someone gets hit by a car and gets a surge of adrenaline, so they don't truly realize how much damage they've sustained. The cope was monumental. I I agree with you, dude. That's an awesome, awesome comment. I'm glad that somebody said this finally. You. Is actually so let's go through this. This is part one 
And then there's part two, which is the super chat reading reaction. So let's let's go through it. I tell you why not how this happened. Um, I'm feeling the vibe. Night. All right, I was asleep, <laughs> having a dream, and in the dream, like people are actually accusing me of crimes and things in this dream that I'm having. Uh, reviewing your filing, it looks like you, you <laughs> have about five thousand dollars a month in business expenses. I do not see anywhere that adds up to five thousand dollars of expenses monthly. And I was going to be interviewed on camera and stuff. Basically, I had enough. Yeah, let me post the link in chat. Ended. I want to set the record straight on this stuff publicly. Whether or not people believe it is their own prerogative, but at least it would be on public record that I'm telling you what really is going on. Really is going on. Is going on, is going on. <laughs> there we go. And I love this thumbnail, man. I, I love this thumbnail so much. It's so beautiful. Cause it's like, they, they tried to make like, you know, a catching thumbnail. So what they did was, you know, they got their logo on top, the perfectly fine side scrollers podcast, March 16th, 2023, Dark Side Phil interview, the most hated man on the internet. And they got a photo of him licking his lips, which is like a, a detractor meme, right? But I don't know if they even knew that that was a, a an actual meme or they just used the photo because it's like, yeah, whatever. He just happened to be licking his lips at the moment. <laughs> Just the possibility of this being unintentional is super funny to me. And two, five hours, two minutes, 12 seconds. That's what I'm talking about. That's some content. The reason We're going to be eating for days. And I got to tell you, the week when the interview happened, like this was the, the, the only time where this, like doing this channel felt like work. Because this thing, I think, happened on a Thursday. So basically Thursday after work, I do the restream. It's like fucking, it's insane uh then we gotta prepare for like picking it apart on the podcast we gotta watch everything we gotta do the like the post show because the next day he's like reacting to it it's insane but it was all worth it because with such amazing levels of entertainment it, it made all of his just make sense it'd be perfectly worth it i feel this interview will be different from what they're expecting is because i am going to be an open book James Rolfe, Angry Video Game Nerd. He's clearly a character. People know that there's the Angry Video Game Nerd and then there's the character. A great starting point for here is when you're streaming, who is streaming? Is it Phil or Dark Side Phil? Whew. Well, it depends on... Okay. So, so Dark Side Phil is your hamming it up. Right now, you're just Phil? Uh, yes and no. Again, I mean, I, it's cool to be... Well, able to what, what is it? Every time that you tune in to my content, you know you're getting the real Phil. Oh, you know dude, I love the receipts. Opinions on things. You know that you're not getting some kind of bullshit. You're getting the real deal. My real opinion or my real take on something. The real guy, the okay. raw guy. Okay. I'm just saying, we just started. So the answer is, it depends. All right, let's continue. Sure. Uh, right, right now, I'm playing a game. It's called Wolong Fallen Dynasty. In my opinion, this is my opinion, it's not very good. I'm seeing more attendance on my Wolong streams, and I'm getting more, honestly, more support on my Wolong streams because they want to see that. <laughs> the little, the little emote from uh, from Craig. Look at the way that he covers his face. It's almost like, oh man, this this guy started talking. There's no stopping him. Like, how are we gonna get off this topic of fucking a very specific video game and him getting support? for playing it seeing more just notice what I'm craig does here and i'm getting more yeah also shout out to shinko that clip was from him before that b before the the previous segment honestly more support on my wall yeah look at this streams. like oh they man to see that rage come out of me see right there see right there right the fuck there for him he's like support it's a vague ambiguous term to adam and craig but for us we know it means fucking money what about the part where he tell people over and over and over and over and over That's that he won't play the game anymore yeah don't get any support but you will always get a different group of people i don't know yeah, mr mr vague random streamer i haven't seen before what what is that supposed to mean i don't know i'm making it what about that part incredibly transparent i don't like the game if it doesn't happen today if we get low attendance low support low engagement literally done with this game and we're moving on to something better this is like the most he's ever held a gun next to a game's head. 
the most. It's like literally straight up saying, if today you don't give me money, it's dead. I'm going to shoot it dead. I'm going to leave it floating in the water with the fishes until they eat its corpse. Is that clear? I used to be a competitive Street Fighter player. There were no new fighting games out. There were no new fighting games out. So the way to get attention on the competitive Street Fighter community was building up drama. His palms are up in a position usually indicating that he's asking to be believed <laughs> or trying to be convincing. I would go online and I would be the biggest internet troll. Oh, I'm gonna stop really, off the really. head shit <laughs> Oh, wow. You know who you're fucking talking to? <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? I'm gonna fucking chop your head off. He was going full on ISIS in those promos. Look at those promos. That's just a wrestler on the indie scene where all you got to do is just fight garbage matches and just cut promos on people telling them you're going to murder them. Make fun of them. It's not like Kurt Angle cutting a promo on fucking Booker T saying he wants to fuck his wife. I want to have sex with your wife. Unironically actually happened. I would just destroy them online. And everyone okay, so, fa like so fa let's, fa let's fast, fast forward. He's a hateful person. Take a look at that thing he said 10, 15 years ago. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. That racial joke he made, that ridiculous sexual... Oh, yeah, you want the link. The link, yeah, yeah, all right. Yo, yeah, 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 hold up, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at that. That racial joke he made, that ridiculous sexual... Racial joke? Raise... <laughs> what? Racial joke? Now, wait a minute. Wait, we, we got a clip of that. Racial jokes. Look at that eyebrow raise them. Yeah, yeah, they, they knew they got him right here. Craig knew he got something up his sleeve. He just processed. Wait a minute, racial jokes. <laughs> we can pull this up. We have the receipts, and the receipts come from his own channel. Little one-off jokes from 15 years ago. Oh my this god, we're gonna so play clips. Is, yeah, so you know you know where this is going, and I, I want to watch oh, this yeah. so so we all understand <laughs> what's going on here. All right, boys, prepare the slave tree. <laughs> Okay. It's <laughs> just like it's so funny looking so at this know, man. You know this going I want to watch oh, this. So it's so, so funny. What's going on here? It, just just this moment right here is like a moment of history. You you got three grown ass men sitting there and looking at one guy, one of them making a, a racist joke, and they they all gotta react somehow. Raised eyebrow face with raised eyebrow face with hmm. raised eyebrow face with raised eyebrow face with raised eyebrow face with raised eyebrow deadpan face. Yeah, what what do you mean by that racial joke? All right, boys, prepare the slave trade. We're selling a ride off for profit. That's okay. Up. I absolutely should have not done that joke. I will tell you that right now, one million percent. You know? Oh well, yeah. Well, at least it's a good thing that happened ten years ago, right? You know, but you didn't apologize for it, jackass. You know, I'm doing commentary on this game, and I'm doing my usual style of improv commentary. I feel like... Oh, dude, this video has all the, the receipts. I love it. Wait, what? What? Oh, that that's the J thing? Hold on. What is happening? I have no clue. What? Yo. Okay. He has... So he's back. All right, we pick up where we left off on the okay, theme song. Guys, we're about to start. Uh, before we start, I would like to clarify something that. Oh, thank God I didn't end the stream. On, I had no idea it was going on. As usual, I'm always out of the. And then I'm gonna go check out that guy's stream because I shit on both of them. So maybe I'll I'll get some more ammo. Right, and then I find out after the fact, and I'm like, what? Like what happened? Um. So I'm actually going to make a brief video about it right now just to explain, and then we're gonna go into Baldur's Gate 3, okay? So, I'm gonna do this real fast, because I had no intention of doing this, but being that apparently there's some nonsense, uh... Going, Bro, shut the music off! I just like to, to clarify the air, because some people have been asking me on stream about- Look at how clumsy he is! Uh, and I'm like, I don't know. I really don't know anything that's going on, alright? <clears throat> so, I'll do it quick. We'll do like a 5-10 minute video quick, and then we'll jump into Baldur's Gate, okay? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Okay, everyone, hello. Phil here, making an impromptu video. Wasn't planning on doing this today, but I guess some stuff is going on either behind the scenes or publicly. I have no clue. As you know, I don't get wrapped up in drama. I try to stay out of it as much as I can, okay? But there's a situation going on right now, and I just want to clarify it from my perspective. All right, take that as you will. Um, So over the weekend... Uh, I had someone come on my streams. Their name was One's Two Cents. 
and you know they were very supportive they contributed to one of my streams and so that's the scenes, that's uh, and they that's the quote unquote community manager for Jay also known as Review Tech USA's former editor he said I know all about this cuz I'm a gossip girl I like how you handled the situation with Rich and Jay, his editor, all right? Now, for those who don't know, I don't know anything about this. I don't follow the real situation. For what I'm to understand, I guess Rich, Review Tech USA, had an editor who he paid to do a lot of work for him, and I guess they're having some kind of a dispute. Where Yo, he, he left hired. the music on. Rich owes him money. I have no clue, okay? I really don't, I don't pay attention to any of this. I don't care about the drama of others, all right? But someone had asked me a week or two ago about it on stream, and I said, you wanna know my honest answer? I don't care. I don't care if Rich is having some kind of a. <laughs> we got, bro. What the, what the fuck do we got going on in the background? Oh. Audience, and now they don't like him because they think he did something bad. Here's my, here's my rationale and. Right. I wish everyone the best. I want everyone to be happy, and I feel like if everyone was doing well and was happy, no one would be nasty to each other. <laughs> Like if everything was going good, it's like Dark to Souls in here. Out. What is Why happening? Go after someone else, right? Because for me, when I'm happy and things are going well, I only think about enjoying that. I don't think about, oh, let's go attack someone else and have a bad time. And maybe if you're someone like Rich, the fact that he makes content that's derogatory to others, you know, gossip shit. Maybe that's why he does it. I don't know. Maybe he's just unhappy in his own life. Who knows, right? But I'm not involved in any of this shit. Because people were like, well, are you happy that things are falling apart for Rich? And I answered, no, I'm not happy that things are falling apart for Rich. I don't care about it particularly but at the same time just because there's someone who i feel has done me wrong in my life i don't wish them hurt i don't wish them discomfort or pain i would just i wish everyone could be happy and just get along in their own lanes or whatever and not bother each other right that's my perspective okay people are saying oh the game music is playing while i do this oh this come on you ruined playing. it i'm gonna leave the game music playing while i do this why not the, ah, there we go. There's gate music in the well, it was cooler when he didn't know. Now enough. you just ruined all the right. moment for so everybody. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I wish I wish Rich, Rich well. I hope that whatever happens, you know, I don't wish him poorly. Just because personally, this guy has had is having negative stuff going to going on for him. I don't. I'm not happy for that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't even want to be involved. I don't care. I, I just want everyone to be happy, right? So I guess some people like that response. They thought, oh, Phil will be reveling that because someone who's made fun of him for years would be in a miserable position and he's not doing that. And they respected that. And I think Ones to Sense was one of those people. And so he contacted me over the weekend and said, would you be interested in having like a chill stream with Jay? I guess Jay is the former editor of Rich because he's a really down to earth guy. He's a nice guy and he's expressed interest in you and maybe talking with you. He's expressed I interest know, okay, well, in you. What, what are you gonna be, courting? Are you gonna get married? I heard him speak, nothing. I know nothing about him. And so I got this email, I said, all right. So I went on Twitter and I realized I had Jay blocked. Now probably it's because during the years that he worked for Rich, him and Rich have done derogatory tweets and things about me. <laughs> They've so done derogatory blocked, tweets. I blocked it to stop nonsense on my timeline. So I unblocked him and I sent him a DM. And I was like, hey, so I've heard that, you know, you're interested in maybe having a chill stream or something, you know? The music is so loud, man. This is such a DSP moment. I cannot believe I'm watching this. <laughs> right? And so he responded back and he's like, well, that sounds good. You know, my perspective is I, I want to have positive fun with games. Maybe we could just have a stream where we just talk about whatever we're doing, what we do and stuff like that. And we went back and forth for a couple of days now, like once a day. When did you kiss? I'm going to sleep and I, I'm checking all my stuff like, oh yeah, let me see if he sent me a DM and I'll check. When was the first like, kiss, oh. Phil? Okay. Was it in a, in a romantic place? He, he responded. Let me respond back. We've been going back and forth for like a few days on it. Okay. Um, where we had left it was Jay said that he wanted to have a, a, a you know, a chill stream, but he wanted to talk behind the scenes first. Like, maybe let's have a one-to-one -one conversation before we agree. Yeah, maybe stream. send some tease let's photos first, you know? Maybe do some, you know, you know offline before you get to meet for the first phone. time. How do you want to have it? You know, we can talk on the phone or, you know, we can try Some sexting. Or whatever, I can do it maybe after my late stream or whatever. Like, that's literally it. And that's where we left it. And that, I actually responded to him last night with that, okay? So come to find out, people are telling me now, oh, are you aware that he's talking shit about you on his Twitter? <laughs> oh, I don't pay attention. I don't know what's going on. Oh, we're going to so get all like aware about it. And and he literally just said on his Twitter, oh, you see, 
Phil is Phil, and he's never going to have a serious conversation, and he was, he's not interested in a real interview, and therefore I'm not interested in doing it, even if it gets 100,000 views. And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? When did we say this? Right? Like, what? I We were having a behind-the-scenes conversation in DMs on Twitter about having a chill stream, possibly, and the next step was to have, like, an offline conversation, not public, about the specifics of how we could do it and what we would talk about, and it wouldn't even involve Rich. It wouldn't be a drama conversation. Okay? So this is the original tweet and also Piece of Pieces' response with some context saying, with Super I'm Chats. I'd like to read it right now. Please do. it up, by the way, on my Twitter timeline. Uh, yeah, nobody looks at that, or they're blocked. The DSP thing was something I wanted to do because he reached out to me and that never happens. I thought we'd get a little more insight into Phil if he opened up. However, he obviously only wants to do a fluff interview despite Rich, which I find funny for someone saying they don't want to get involved in drama. At this point, I don't think we will ever get any truth from him, but I tried. What? Yes, everyone was right. Phil is Phil. He'll never talk about anything serious. What are you talking about? Like, literally, what the hell are you talking about? I have no clue. That's not what what we were even talking about. So it sounds to me, I hate to say it, it sounds to me this guy is a snake. He was trying to... Oh, no, another guy betrayed him. Conversation. We're speedrunning betrayal. First Asterion, now Jay. Whatever, right? Come on, it's just two guys in exactly. one day. The same person I'm talking to, it's on the same Twitter account. The DMs are attached to the same account where he's posting. This sounds to me like this guy's either like bipolar, is two, he's two personalities, or I'm talking to two different people on the same Twitter account, or I don't get it. All right, but just so you guys know, uh, I have no, I had no interest in doing that. He said, if you, someone told me he's a chill down to earth guy, he'd like to have a chill stream with you just to talk about games or whatever. That's what I proposed. He said, yeah, that's what I would like to do. Let's have an offline conversation about it. Okay, how do you want to do it? And then I find out he's posting that up on his Twitter timeline. Get a life! No, really, Jay, get a life. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what you're trying to bait me into. I'm not doing nothing. Get the fuck out of here. You know what? I kind of agree. Because, like, Jay and Rich, they've been going back and forth, having domestic disputes all over Twitter and shit. You know what? I actually agree with Phil on this. Please get a life. Please. Like, legit. All right? That's the God's honest truth of what's going on, and I'm not involved with it anymore. Obviously, I'm not going to talk to the guy. Of course, DSP doesn't have a life, but he is right in this case. Again, fuck him. In fact, you know what? What are you going to do? Is he going to block him right now? He's going to block I him. Look at this. Better, He's going to block him. Here we go. And, so go ahead and <laughs> black. Go ahead and block him again. Yep. Block. Now I don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> and now I can move on with my fucking life, right? Okay, great. You... <laughs> For, uh, for listening to this bullshit video that I had to make to clear it up, and now I can move on with my life and not have to worry about nonsense anymore. All right. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right, that was a good one. And it had Baldur's Gate music, epic Baldur's Gate music in the background. Cool. All right. That's funny because I didn't know what it, I have no idea what that sounded like. Well, now we I'll all do. Video later. Again, I know nothing about that J guy. I, I, mean, I was told by this once to sense guy that he was a down-to-earth guy who- This was a triumphant drama like, segment because that's what the music was like. And I was like, okay, I'm old. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to just hang out with someone for, you know, maybe a half an hour, jump on a stream or whatever, and just say, hey, what's going on or whatever, right? Sure, why not? And then apparently he's saying nasty shit about me on his Twitter. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with people? I agree that was bizarre. It was fucking weird as shit. You tell me where that came from. I, uh, that's, and the thing is, it has nothing to do with me. Like, I, they're trying to, I guess they're trying to pull me into their vortex of drama or something. I want nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah, to me, it seems a little right, so bit different. Dollar tip. Hey, Phil, would you ever consider wearing tank tops or wife beaters? Bro, what the fuck? While you play gangster games? It would look cool combining that with your- Anyways, uh, I thought the whole concept of DSP deciding to talk to specifically this guy was because this guy recently got a bunch of sympathy for being publicly and very, uh, I mean, clearly mistreated by Rich. So DSP would get to cozy up with that guy, and that both of them would get to kind of metaphorically dunk on Review Tech USA because now Jay has a new boyfriend. He got a rebound boyfriend that is better than the old boyfriend, even though he's not, and he's also married. It's very confusing. 
you wouldn't get it. I don't even get it myself, and I'm almost as, as retarded as these dudes are. Cats and glasses. Because I actually uh, keep up with this nonsense. Not my style. <laughs> because, um, so, yes, what happened was, effectively, as Peace of Peace posts here, so let's do a quick recap. Um, this guy, who is at once two cents, and disclaimer, don't go and harass this guy. Uh, I, I just gotta say that, I feel like. Uh, he gave DSP a bunch of money and told them, Hi, Phil, I'm apparently getting hate for sending you some love on here tonight. I sent you a DM tonight again on Twitter. Jay would love to talk to you. Please let us know. So this guy is, quote-unquote, a community manager for the Jay guy. And the Jay guy, well, uh, it's not much of a community if you, you know what I mean. It's like a dude with 60,000 subs that gets about... 3,000 videos, so it's kind of like a DSP level community, except this guy, uh, obviously, is a couple levels above. He's not on DSP's level, because DSP, when he looks up, he can't even see the bottom. So this guy at least knows what he's doing. I can't take that away from him. So uh, the community manager for this man uh, is wailing out on, on Mr. Burnell, and the second message says, Sent you an email with information JKB would love to talk with you, even if nothing happens. Totally get why you don't open the Twitter messages, just based on some people in here now. But Then, uh, what happens is apparently, apparently, I don't know if it says it here in this specific tweet. Maybe I can find the right tweet. Uh, because this dude has been posting a, a lot about the the DSP drama and the, like, the rich drama because they're like scorned lovers. And it's really embarrassing because these are like actual grown men. Uh, so let me see if I can find the original tweet, because, like, it, there's so much shit in here. But I remember it had over, like, 200 likes. So this is it. DSP and I are, are gonna do a stream together soon. I've always wanted to talk to him about gaming. It'll be a chill, relaxed stream. Two men talking about life and gaming. It'll be positive. And to be fucking honest, I'm sick of the negative bullshit. That sounds like another guy I know. They, they're, they're probably going to like each other very much. They should do a stream together. So DSP, uh, according to JKB, which is Jay, Jay Hooft, uh, this gentleman, the DSP thing was something I wanted to do because he reached out to me, but he did reach out to you because your boy, your community manager, man, sent him a bunch of messages and a bunch of money. And you know that DSP comes to money like flies come to shit. So this is basically what happened. Technically. Uh, I guess that's it. And now we have DSP's response. The final verdict. So it's not happening. If you thought it was happening, it's not. Tank tops. But also uh, very interesting of, uh, of, of uh, Jay to say specifically, I thought we'd get a little more insight into Phil if he opened up. However, he obviously only wants to do a fluff interview to spite Rich, which I find funny for someone saying they don't want to get involved in the drama. But however, Jay, in your first tweet that I just pulled up, it says that all you want to do is do a, a gaming stream and just chill out and not get involved with the drama. It's very interesting that you wanted him to open up a little bit. It's almost like you had an ulterior motive. Which I can kind of understand. Everybody got an ulterior motive interviewing DSP because it's fucking DSP. You can't just talk to him about video games and pop culture because he knows nothing about it. He just plays video games because that's what makes people give him money. So both of them kind of look very dishonest. I'm uh, almost exactly sure that DSP wanted to get involved with this just to make Rich mad because this is Rich, is uh, you know, ex-editor and very close friend of his. So cozying up to him is going to make Rich mad. And what Rich wants to do is, uh, what DSP wants to do is get Rich mad. Well, now I'm going to go look up uh, Mr. Review Tech USA because he also had a response on this issue because this is a love triangle. It's not just a love um, by angle. Yes, that that's true. So I'm going to find the video because this guy has been posting almost as much as I post on Twitter. Uh, except his stuff is uh, is not good. Of course, my stuff is the best. So this is it. About me wanting to interview DSP. And just trigger warning, this has a lot of discussion about pe uh, men's penises and their cocks and their asses. 
So if you happen to be triggered by this, please look away now because this is about to get very sexual. There's something else I want to make abundantly clear. I'm about to record some Elden Ring footage, but before I do that, I want to say this. I could give zero fucks about interviewing Phil. Like, it's in the negatives, my desire to interview Phil. My desire to interview Phil died with the Side Scrollers podcast. I hate them, but they did the work for me. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Like it's a Gundam said, he's a husk of a human being. Everything that we need to know about the man is known. And even if I... Interesting enough, Rich. Rich really wanted DSP on his show before the interview. He really wanted him on. And you can tell because Rich used to send DSP super chats asking him to come on. And DSP didn't want to go on had access to him even if phil came to me with the biggest most throbbing erect cock and said please daddy rich interview me i don't want to interview him because as soon as i ask him a question that is going to piss him off which i will he'll be gone in seconds i would rather fist myself after i put my fist in bleach than interview phil i don't want to interview him at all it's, all it's going to be is a fluff piece of middle-aged men sucking each other's cocks. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe that's what you're into. If that's your... Th this, uh, bro, in this last two hours and 20 minutes that I've been live, we've had so many gay sex references that this stream is beginning to change its entire theme. I might just open up Pornhub and just, like, rub one out to some gay dudes getting really hot and bothered right now. Because, like, what, what is left for us to do? This is the gayest stream on YouTube. Thank God bless. And he ends it by saying God bless. Of course, obviously. Uh, epic. I, I'm sure God would bless this content if he could. And wife beaters is something... Uh, so what is Phil doing? That I would wait. Also, shout out to all the King Jad VCMP maniacs from Scotland coming over to this stream right now. Okay. Thank you for the $3 tip. <clears throat> All right, are we ready to begin now with Baldur's Gate? Now that that nonsense is out of the way, and that'll be a separate content creator, by the way. Yeah, man, the whole music thing was great until people reminded him that it's happening. Like for the first one minute of that was the best. Two dollars from Jay Vosalv, nine hundred and eighty-nine. Jay is John Rambo, two point O L M F A O. Well, not come on, not yet. Well, they they had a longer history with Rambo. Really feels like a cult leader speech. The music rolling on the floor. Yeah. Laughing, rolling on the, floor laughing. <laughs> the music was so good, man. God damn. <laughs> oh fuck. You just get along in their own lanes or whatever. In the beginning, when when the when the vocals first came in, it was so good. Is somebody in the background going? Whoa. Video about it right now. <laughs> Personally, you handled the situation with Rich and Jay, his editor. All right, work for him and I. I think he did everything bad. Injured yeah, here. Here's my, my <laughs> rationale and thought. No, I'm not bisexual. I'm just comfortable enough in my sexuality, uh, and confident enough in it where I can make gay jokes on my on my own expense and not care about it because I I know how I truly feel. It comes to this kind of stuff. All right. Unlike DSP, who can't even make straight jokes about himself. But it just stops critical hits. And now we're just playing video games. This shit is uh, deflated real fast. Uh, let's go back to watching the previous video, because uh, we got massively derailed, and I, I mean, I gotta say it was worth it. It was fantastic. This this right here segment was... God damn it, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, boys, prepare the sleep. Oh, and now we're back to this. You're selling a right off for profit. That's okay. Right, though. I absolutely should have not done that joke. I will tell you that right now, one million percent. You know, but... You didn't apologize for it, jackass. You know, I'm doing commentary on this game, and I'm doing my usual style of improv commentary. Oh, me I feel like you're my favorite that was. detractor. Where does your name come from? Thank you. Cat man, a show, or are you just a fan of Meerkat the animal? I, it's neither. It's literally I just needed a a random internet name, so I just picked an animal. That's the easiest way you can do it. You just pick any animal. That that's it. In the ink in the name, because I've got asked for this before. Before the channel was Meerkat Mob, it was Meerkat Ink. That was just so I can have some kind of a, I guess, like a unique identifier. So any site I try and register for, it, it was going to be available because it's just super random. It makes no sense. And it's not supposed to make sense. And that's it. So thank you, Anonymous, for the five. 
was a momentary lapse, and it's the same style of commentary that I... Because, I mean, the, th this whole channel exists because I wanted to... I, I got pissed off by DSP being super entitled about, like, memberships and stuff, and I made, wanted to make a video about it, and that's, that's all that is. I was just venting about it. And then we just started having fun on streams and shit. Even though before... Before I started making streams, I've streamed in front of like zero people on this very same channel. It just, I just wasn't ready to stream because I didn't have the audience. And then at first we used to have like 10 people, 20 people, and then it just started growing. And that's just how it works, I guess. It's not any different. It's di no, it's different because I've changed now from anything else that I've done. There's no real right. origin Those story. It just kind of happens. All kinds of things on the cup. Jokes, dark humor. Yeah, it was definitely some dark humor. Okay. Okay. It's just something I've always done. Is it... A joke that's acceptable by today's standards by 80% of people, probably not. I agree with you. This is something that I've always done. And those jokes, I don't really make anymore at all. You know, everyone has always enjoyed it. Okay. This is not the norm on my streams. People yes, it is. Out of context. I am actively trying to change. You're out of your fucking mind. Okay. <laughs> No one had issue with it. You said you didn't do anything wrong. You did everything correct. That's the problem with you, Phil. You never apologize. There we go. Well, that's that's something we already knew, but it's nice to have it nice and compact presented to you. So do you regret those jokes? Yes, and I'm trying to change. In reality, he's just sorry because somebody pulled up the clip. If they didn't pull up the clip... Yeah, so yeah guess it, what? It just feels like a, a big leap from going from a sheriff who is, like, trying to kill people to seeing a little black girl and thinking a slave trade. Oh, <laughs> no, now you said it. Now you said it. <laughs> now he said it. You done fucked up, Adam. Why did you say it? It was. That, on, on that's screen. correct. That's correct. That is correct. Well, you, you, you said it, but uh, you were right, I guess? And herein lies the problem. What? I didn't think that. Look out, there's a black woman coming up! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna steal mind, the black pack. I didn't even see that. I didn't think that. She takes them both out. Boom! Steals the black pack and runs away. I didn't think of it at, at one moment that I ever think, oh, she's a black girl, make a slavery joke. Absolutely. Well, hold on. Let me just pin the, the link to this video in chat because it's just such a great video and a, a lot of work goes into these and for me to just watch it on stream feels unfair sometimes. Um, I'm just freeloading off somebody else. Uh, He's pretending like he didn't notice? This dude, bro, this dude review a 20 minute TV show and the like main details he give you is what fucking color skin the people had. Okay, and you had- <laughs> that, that is so true, man. That is so true. <laughs> when he starts explaining the different characters, like, well, you know that, that black guy that was like married to the Asian woman? Yeah, that guy. One random clip from last summer. Take a look at that thing he said 10, 15 years ago last summer. 10 15 years ago <laughs> i'm sorry you past. sound you sound like like the abusive ex-boyfriend trying to get back with his girl i've changed no, we, now don't worry about it adam you're talking about something that happened 10 15 years ago wow. <laughs> so it seems like your biggest detractors uh are some of your earliest fans why why do you think that is again i've been doing this for 15 years here we go again i had absolutely no effort to make it professional at all i was being a jackass on camera okay and I didn't even have direct capture for five years. I was having a camera pointed at my TV. Everything looked like junk, okay? And uh, that's why my playthroughs are unique compared to everyone else's who just does their direct capture bullshit. But it was a joke. It was like, I don't care. I'm just some normal guy filming games. I'm terrible at them. You want to know the truth? I'm probably one of the best overall gamers in the country. That's what everyone liked back then. And then someone made a video. And the video was called, This is How You Don't Play Metal Gear Solid 2. And it changed the industry forever. <laughs> yeah, look at this. I love, I love the back and forth clips, man. This, it, it, it just art. This is art. And then he was making to me. fun of me during it. This is Ooh, cinema. Right I would rather watch this than Madam Web. I mean, come on. Just think about it. At least this is just 30 minutes long. Where I did my usual shtick. And my usual shtick is... Oh, I suck at the game. Do I? Am it my fault that I suck at the game? Of course not. It's the game's fault. It's Hideo Kojima's fault. Kojima's a fucking cocksucker. If I ever find him, I'm gonna kick him straight in his fucking balls. I'm serious, man. What an asshole. But someone made a parody video and got all gameplay moments that would have been considered good or fun or entertaining. And <laughs> you know, a uh, uh, quick derailment. I love Kojima's Twitter feed because uh, he, he, sometimes he would go to the cinema and watch a movie. 
And by the length of his review, you can tell if he liked it or not. If he just says, well, I just watched Madam Web today and that's it. You know, it's a, it's a pile of dog shit. That, that's how you know if a movie is good or bad. Only focusing on basically the if, if he editorializes and explains how he feels about the movie, then he likes it. And it and it's just like a very he's just a very wholesome guy. He makes whatever games he feels like. They're weird. They're strange. But his personality shines through. You know, he's just a, a chill Asian dude that likes making weird stuff like many Asian dudes. But, you know, this one doesn't have tentacles involved, at least some of the time. Grew up with popularity on the internet. Phil oh, there, there was also this clip I watched about um, the girl that plays, uh, was it Quiet? The Sniper in Metal Gear Solid 5, where she talks about how they wanted to, to like, scan her feet. You know, they wanted to, like, do a, a 3D scan of her feet. And she thought that was kind of weird, you know? <laughs> he's not like his contemporaries. He's not putting effort into his content. He's just a jackass. Look at him. I had absolutely... It's a great video. ...effort to make it professional at all. I was he's just a jackass, jackass on camera. He's, okay? he's a and joke. He's just the Asian Tarantino. He just does it differently. My fan base turned on me. So now let's make fun of him. So, so been... your, your fan base turned on you because of what a video that somebody else did? Uh, that doesn't make sense, Phil. Uh, I have a keep, question for yeah. you guys. Has the oh, yo, this is me. And this was a great stream, by the way. I had to leave this stream early, but it, it was fucking so much fun. Has there ever been a community that actually accepted him? Thinking about it, the FGC didn't because he was the villain. Nobody liked him. Yep. The gaming community as a whole, he's he's a joke of that, that whole community. Even his own community is just sneak dissing and making... This guy makes good. a really good point. And he desperately wants to fit into something. That's why he bought all those statues of games he barely cares about. The Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at this, bro. Why would you buy a statue like this? You don't give a shit about Assassin's Creed. Uh, the, uh, Gears of War 3. Yeah, Gears of War. Uh, again, we got, uh, next to him, we got Infamous. Like, th this dude, when have you seen this dude be a big fan of Gears of War, or Assassin's Creed, or Infamous? Cole statue. This is a bust of Shadow Cat from Spider-Man with a mini panda stuck between her titties. Shadow Cat, at least you can jerk off to this. At least we, you can rub one out, look into this. Come on, this is, this is fine. This goes, this passes the, the Turing test. Is there any community that ever accepted him and he felt comfortable in? I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, let's let's take it even to like employers, right? He's he's been chased out of even employers in every sort of community. He's been abrasive to the point where he's not necessarily aggressive, but he escalates things. Uh -huh. he, 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 yeah, that's also Black Cat, not Shadow Cat. That shit. He, but he's a big fan. That's why he got the big titty edition of the bust sort of like prompts arguments and things he's not a, a peaceable person he's not somebody who can like easily let conversation flow through posts he has to start a fight he has to start an argument he has to cause friction here's phil in other news it looks like there's an extremely high chance i'll be making this drive myself <laughs> 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 yes, myself, aka nobody from Team Hate is coming besides myself. <laughs> but which sucks, I know. But I try my best to convince peeps, and they're not biting. Like imagine, imagine. But you're, like, you're, you're, you're Team Hate are man, game players, and there's yeah. a fighting game tournament, and you're trying to convince, and the thing that they don't want to do. Dude, I'm gonna like, in another yeah. thread. Why is nobody like you Phil for a ride? Because it's DSP. Someone said, why isn't anyone asking Phil for a ride? Next response, because it's Phil. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> no one wants to go with Phil. And this is 2006. So, you know, after oh, this is evil AJ is the cause of people not liking him, though. Don't forget that. But yeah, this yeah. side you don't plays are the reason that no one likes Phil. Is this side you don't plays? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Evil people Ages. At this point. Yeah, people were loving it, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is a post from October 06. 06! Everyone loved DSP. Like, this car is stacked. He's like, guys, I can only take four people. Come on. You didn't own up to the fact that people were making fun of you. Then you're. Yeah, that, that is true. Dancy Scrolls is indeed the GOAT. Because I, I know for a fact, ALT does like overtime off stream, looking for the actual stuff to show on the show. So, yeah, gotta watch it like twice and then decide how he's going to show it.
So if you see a stream is like five hours long, in reality is like eight to ten hours long. You just didn't see the the preparation part. It's a joke. So it felt like you just kind of like let that run your ship that you were you were sailing. Correct. I have I have nothing. When, to when it comes that. to like being on the grind, trying to like satisfy your audience, ALT is up there on the Mount Rushmore of detractors. And I mean this, and I know better than most people. In any defensive manner. It's my fault. It is my fault that people have originally turned against me on the internet. 100% it is. My fan base turned on me. Okay. It's because I am going to be an open book. Be an open book. Be an open book. Be an open book. It is my fault that people. He's only saying that because he's on his stream, but it is what it is. Tomorrow is going to be YouTube's fault because so the algorithm helped the trolls. As people have said, including documentarians, it really was this is how you don't play. It's my fault. And then the next 10 years of ridicule based off of this is how you don't play. It is my fault. I used to be one of the prominent YouTubers and until it was this is how you don't play that people actually loved me. Right? Wrong! 100% it is. You better take a sip, you fucking sleazy asshole. Okay. <laughs> so you feel that your reaction to the this is how you don't play is what really parlayed your fans into becoming detractors. Yeah. What differentiates you now from who you worked a decade ago? Oh, good question. I didn't know my viewers back then. I didn't have any personal relationships with any of them now. It's like a friendly community. Shut the fuck up about the fucking bubbles before I take away the bubbles forever. People being little bitches in the chat. I'm trying to learn how to play a fucking game. Shut the fuck up and act older than five fucking years old about the goddamn bubble. You fucking idiot. Now when I play a game, it's a community effort. I'm playing Oblivion right now. I don't know anything about Oblivion. It's the first time playing it but people help me with the game. Why is the chat silent? Hello? Hello? And because of that social aspect, the game is a relaxing chill session. It's a relaxing chill session. I don't get it. I get this all the time. Someone will come by a stream of mine. None of the stuff that people say about you just happened in the stream. And I don't get but it. But that's fake sometimes, DSP. People yeah. do that to get your attention. It's been a thing for a long time. How you know? Yeah. You don't realize this, bro. It's basically the gaslighting that I endorse more and more each day is that you, you should definitely go to Phil and tell him that he's doing absolutely everything right and has never done anything wrong. And whatever wrong he's done has just been misinterpreted by his trolls because they just want to make him look bad. That's what you're supposed to tell him if you're a good LARPer. And then it gets him deeper in that delusion we all know and love. An, an idiot. I, I, I hate React content. Reacting, that's low brow. That's little, minimum effort. Let's see if this is good. I feel that React content is some of the worst on the internet. It's ruining content creation because it's an easy paycheck for someone who disrespects you. And you just asked me to make some of that content. Okay, let's go back. And now I try it and it works. <laughs> all over every single thing that i do on youtube i'm not doing clickbait i'm not doing all the trends Are you serious i start doing rap content people love it oh wait you're serious let me laugh even harder <laughs> that's the difference is that i've now become a more laid-back guy can't i literally can't do anything why do you think i lost because it didn't give me my fucking moves again again do you just want to relax with me Get fucked. You just want to relax with Phil. I have depression, you dumb fuck. And people told Got me it. that they were- What's a day like look for you? Okay. Like when you, from, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep? Uh, usually I don't wake up. Usually my cat wakes me up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen who does not know, the reason why his cat wakes him up is because this fucking piece of shit, when he's going to bed, does not allow the kitty litter box to stay in the bedroom. So he takes the fucking kitty litter box, leaves it outside, and locks the door with the cat inside. So the cat is unable to relieve himself until Phil wakes up. That's why his cat is waking him up. Yeah, sometimes he does. Sometimes he tends to wake up super early and I don't know why. Because he has to use the bathroom, dumbass. Sometimes it'll be like seven in the morning. I'm like, dude, I don't need to be up for another like two hours. I, I legitimately don't understand why they would want to lock him in the bedroom at night when they know he's like declawed. He can't fuck up the furniture. He can't destroy anything. Just leave his like his litter box in the hallway or something. Let the dude go and fucking do his business whenever he needs to. Like, goddamn. He'll just want to get up. The other day, he had to use the bathroom. 
and it's annoying because we tried having a like, because their house is big enough for this little guy to be running around doing whatever he feels like and not destroy anything a litter box in the bedroom with us but it smells like the bedroom would contained with that scent smells yeah they, they, they want to sleep in a bedroom that stinks of cat shit like what are you like what what are you thinking he even used it once during the day that compacts okay so we ended up having his litter boxes outside of the bedroom but if he doesn't use the potty before we go to sleep sometimes he wakes up early in the morning he has to go to the bathroom so there you go ladies and gentlemen you hear it this is straight from the man's mouth this is straight from his goddamn fucking channel okay so he has the cat locked up in there you know we were talking work day wise my work day starts roughly around 9 30 10 a.m and yeah, this is getting Just skipped. This what trash. You're saying right now that that doesn't seem like the most healthy lifestyle. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like a very healthy lifestyle. Do you feel that they are encouraging you to live that lifestyle that may not be the healthiest lifestyle? So you're saying through people showing up and supporting my streams, <laughs> they're making me work more. Is that the question? Well, so no. It, it, it's like cyclical. Okay, fair enough. Don't confuse action for achievement. Hey, that's us. Exactly what Phil Burnell needs to hear. That's what the people <laughs> on the side scroll has tried to tell them. They're mm -hmm. like, they try to explain it to them. They're like, don't you ever think that your audience is keeping you stuck in this loop? And it just flew right over his head. He's like, you mean by fans, by giving me money or like <laughs> doing what exactly? <laughs> and then they're just like threw their hands up and they're like, oh, I just, we just got to move on. This isn't going anywhere. He completely. Yeah, that's obviously ALT's real hair. That's why he wears a hat most of the time because this shit is 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 hard to take care of he can't always show up drippy like this with a dress shirt and a big afro on come on what are you expecting him to be a professional streamer miss the whole point look at me i'm i'm wearing a fucking like a, a soccer t-shirt because he took it just literally as always that's why it's, if you interview phil it's a tough and again i i, I want to make something very clear here i am not trying to put myself out as a victim um trolling activities you know false copyright strikes it kicked my channel out of the algorithm my trolls took the king of hate mantra and they got me kicked out of the twitch partner program because of it the king of hate mantra Twitch told me all here's what i where they told me <laughs> Fuck they off. launched an investigation into your history and we found that over the years you have used um what was the word it wasn't racial you know it, it was, hateful slurs harmful slurs <laughs> harmful we did an investigation and found that you have used something I, I forget the exact terminology it was either like hate speech or hateful slurs or something like he that. doesn't remember what they said <laughs> hateful slurs and then they kicked me out of their partner program for no justifiable reason at all they said i did something wrong oh you were, what were they? Well, I forget, I even forget at this point what they even said. Hateful, hateful slurs or hateful speech or something. Slurs. I don't even know what they said anymore. I'm so at a loss for it. I was removed from the Twitch partner program for no legitimate reason. Hateful slurs. Twitch dropped me from the partner program for no good reason. I could call him Mr. Hateful Slur. <laughs> Twitch kicked me out of the partner program for hateful no justifiable reason at all besides slurs. they're just assholes. Twitch had no issue with me. Another one. Another one. Another one another one what so what, what did they do to get you removed off twitch specifically <clears throat> they said he's the king of hate here's a bunch of bigoted racist sexist horrible jokes he's made over the years and they compiled this into like a montage and they basically had hundreds if not more people pummel these businesses with it right to mm -hmm. convince someone that you've changed you're making the same kind of like inappropriate jokes that you were back then correct so it's kind of so they're right are they no, right or are they wrong? I mean, they're they're right in saying that I still make mistakes. I've seen plenty of clips. I just wanted to point that out. They're wrong in saying this is who Phil is all the time. This is his content because that's what got this this happening. And did, keep did Twitch it up. tell you that? But, uh, uh, that, that? That's crazy. Like, here's the thing. You can't assume that this is him all the time because it doesn't make sense. But through the, the small things that he says, his real personality and his real character shines through because obviously not everybody is going to be a hundred percent who they are on stream all the time because sometimes your bad qualities shine through. So it's good to, to, you know, pay attention to what you're saying. But with DSP is like, 
Bro, you say so many things that point out who you really are and what you really think about stuff that it just shape up, it shapes up your personality. Say that to you? Oh, we found that you said this 100 years Especially ago. when it becomes a pattern, which it has been with him for over 20 years now. Oh, sorry, you're gone. We have absolutely no legal obligation to tell you what you did wrong. Which one is it? DSP <laughs> claims that Twitch sent him a private email letting him know that the reason he got unpartnered from Twitch is because of a bunch of false flag claims. And yeah. I would like Craig to request that email privately. Just be like, hey, can you send that to me just privately? Because that doesn't sound like it makes any sense. Well, why did I get kicked out of the, the partner program on Twitch? Literally, I have evidence because someone at Twitch who I, you know, I'm never going to reveal this, who it was. <sighs> I saw. Well, why did I? Dude, I was muted this whole time. I hate this. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed the background music. Anyways, I wanted to bring some attention to this whole layout and the whole setup. Uh, this was leading up to his 15 years of hate anniversary where he would pull up some random old t-shirts that he got. And uh, it legitimately always, every single time I look at it, it reminds me of a flea market. The kind of flea market that gypsies have in Eastern Europe where they just have a bunch of random t-shirts with terrible images on them, with like terrible graphic designs on them. And I just cannot unsee it. Every time I see it, I'm like, wait, how much is this one in the middle? It's like two bucks? Sounds like it. That's a good deal. I get kicked out of the, the partner program on Twitch. Literally, I have evidence because someone at Twitch who I, you know, I'm never going to reveal this, who it was. <sighs> My source is that I made it the fuck up. Someone at Twitch showed me the evidence. They put together a portfolio of offensive content. A portfolio of what hate. What did they say you said? I believe it was the N-word. Did you say you the N-word? Oh, no. I was playing a Returnal. And when I was playing it, I was in the middle of saying something and then like an enemy attacked me. When stationary, negative 75% damage, that's really bad. Okay, well, here's the thing. This this clip is very simple. For, for you to say stuff like this and be held accountable, two things are required. Uh, context and intent. And in both cases, they just don't exist. You know, there's no context behind him saying the N-word. There's, no there's no intent for him to say the N-word or call somebody the N-word. It just kind of slipped out. It was a, a slip of the tongue. If you want, you can make a big deal out of why he actually said it. I, I would disagree that you're right because he just didn't mean to say it. It just it just happened to, to be pronounced by him. And sometimes that's enough to make you look bad like it was the case. And he got reprimanded for it because he got banned for like a day or something for it. Like him. And in the other case, which is my, my more favorite case, I like that one. When he called himself the N-word, which is fantastic. When he was uh, Arnold Schwarzenbernel, and he just dropped the N-bomb right, right in the middle of it. Actually, I can just uh, I can just check it out right now. I always like seeing that one. So a DSP Arnold. Can I look up Arnold and find it? Yep. Yep. There we go. Here it is. Another epic moment. Also, we get to see Jingle all the way animation again. Yeah. I've seen this like a million times at this point. Arnold Filzen nigger. Right. There you go. There you go. We just like straight up N word hard R. We check all the boxes ex except context and intent. How do you say? How do you say? Again, yes. <laughs> Arnold Filzen. Filzen Right? There we go. That's it. How do you say? And sometimes that's all you got to do. Enemy attack me. Did and you say the N word? Oh, no. Bruh. Oh. He said the N-word, something I didn't even do. What's their number one critique of me? You beg too much. I wouldn't beg if you didn't keep messing with my income. I am not trying to put myself out as a victim. You keep ruining it for me. Begging for money is never a good look for anyone. Completely anyone. agree. Completely agree. I can't, I can't dispute it. I refuse to just sit here and beg, 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 beg for money. So... Beg, 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 beg. There you go. Here's an idea. I don't want to be Mr. Beg. I know it's absolutely obnoxious. You can't stand it. I love what I do now. There's been so many times where we've asked a question and your mm -hmm. response was instantly blaming other people. The 
real simple yes or no. Mm -hmm. Oh you man, if if I feel crazy enough, I might watch the next video, which is the the worst moment of uh, 2023 part two, which is an hour and 30 minutes long. I can't wait. I actually can't wait for this. So this stream might be a little bit too long. You currently still? But we're actually we, we're not even at three hours. God damn! I used to make like nine hour streams. What the fuck is wrong with me? I think this is long. Yes. I haven't played in years. I told you guys I don't play mobile games anymore. Yes, you do. Yes. I quit on all of them. I'm, I'm running out of beer, though. Anymore, but all right. I don't play mobile games anymore. Yes, you do. Yes. I gave all those games up years ago. Like I said, definitively, I gave up mobile games. Definitively. I don't, with me. I, don't, I don't even care about the details that they talk about because it's all such fucking nonsense. I just don't care. Yes, you do. Yes. I seriously don't. I'm not going to pay any attention to it. And that's all I'm saying on the subject of mobile games, because that's the truth. That's what I told you guys a million times on stream. You guys ask me about mobile games and stuff. I always answer exactly the same way. Why are you so uh, <laughs> hesitant to talk about that? Oh, well, why am I hesitant to talk about WDB champions? Um... He repeats the question before answering, which <laughs> it looked like, like, look at these facial expressions is like, you don't know why you're so hesitant. You already know, bro. You, you've you come up with this excuse a thousand times. It's because people are going to mess with you and your family. Or it, it almost sounds like that's just an excuse and you're not really hesitant. You're just trying to hide stuff from people. To think about what exactly he wants to say. The reason this is a red flag... Is <laughs> I love this edit, man. Look at this. Straightforward ...and not a complex <laughs> question that requires a lot of thought. Um, well, the thing is, I wasn't at first. I did talk about it publicly. What's the better option? Sit here and talk about it for half an hour like I just did, or just say, I don't play mobile games, fuck this. You know, don't listen to them. Okay, do you hear what the man just said? The man literally just said he would rather lie than have to explain himself. Um, you know, it's nothing that I would think that my audience- And it's also, this is one of the, the tactics that liars use, similar to when people that have committed crimes go and volunteer to be interviewed by the police, because you showing that you're willing to answer questions means that you're innocent. So in, in this same example with the interview, he pointed out that he stayed there for five plus hours. And if I was guilty, I wouldn't say that stay there for five plus hours, which is the exact same logic. This would be super interested in. Because you believe that you're confident enough that you're going to bullshit all those people so they can believe that you're for real and that you're being honest and that, that you're innocent. I said a million times, I don't play mobile games, right? Well, here we go. Oh, but you said on your podcast about your marriage that on the plane in 2019, you were playing mobile games. It's like, what the fuck? I don't play mobile games actively. Um, my wife actually does. Fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. Can I ask you, Phil, ha have sure. you ever spent money on this game? Of course I have, yes. The nonsense that idiots perpetrate on this fucking internet about me spending money on mobile games and other stupid shit it's all bullshit then, how much money have you spent in this game you might you do you mind saying total i couldn't tell you you're stressing for money and then putting money into a game they feel like you're using your audience you know you you say you beg too much and you, you know you're working on that which is good it's not a good look but they're assuming that's me in the game Playing WWE champions while begging is bad enough, but 2020 saw some significant pieces of evidence emerge. Yeah, this is also a great video. I started watching it today because I wanted to rewatch it because all the, the Ludwig videos, they're just worth watching a couple of times. And this one, I didn't make it quite through, but this was a good part of it. ESP has been wasting tens of thousands of dollars on this wrestling thing. Make sure to go check it out. You had an opportunity with with Keemstar and Drama Alert to go on to go on there for a, it was a fifty thousand dollars was being offered to you, right? But <laughs> look at all the head shaking. I'm gonna mute this video right now, and you just imagine what he's listening to. Actually, I'm I'm gonna try and give you some some perspective. Um, let's just see him just bob his head to this cool ass beat, bro. Girl, my only, yeah, cool it, girl, my only love. My girl fresh out, looking so nice. So, for 1195. 95.
five. Grab your van, baby, we can take a ride. And if we get in the jam, go out like Bonnie and Clyde, baby. Clyde, let me holler, girl. I'ma give a big tip. You can smoke loud on my cam. Come and get this. We can take big sips. Take a day trip down to the Costco. Get some cool eight minutes. Eight minutes. Let a homie get all up in that crazy. We can hang out in your van, you could give a handy J like that officer you play, baby. Play, baby. Make it angry like I wasn't finna pay, baby. Hey, baby. Cool ain't girl, you the on. Yeah, now it makes sense, right? Now it makes sense. All of it makes sense. You were just listening to some heavy Why ass beats. Not do that. I'm not gonna crap on the guy here, but <laughs> I don't like these drama YouTubers. I call them misery broker. Yeah, bro, this is the best this is the best DSPism. I'm not gonna crap on the guy. But let me crap on the guy for a little bit. Come on. I feel that's the... And this is why I always say, DSP in his natural habitat is a naturally toxic person. He got a lot of venom for people. And I can relate to that. I got a lot of venom for certain people too. People like him, people like Rich, people like, um, like Boogie, like Wings. There's certain stuff that annoys me about them. And, and I, I like venting about them. But he tries to deny that this is his personality, that this is just a part of who he is. He doesn't like embracing it. Even though he was the king of hate, he's pretending to be this reformed, born-again beggar. And it just didn't doesn't work. He just doesn't convey this to people. Worst kind of content. I said this one day, casually. Casually. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's this simple. Stop watching Keemstar. Stop watching Keemstar. Keemstar. Stop watching Keemstar. Look at how overexposed he is. Like, what is going on in this video? He looks like there's a nuke that just went off outside of his window, and he's just waiting to get hit by the, 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 the heat wave. Stop watching Keemstar. He starts insulting me and everything on the internet. Um, Team, you are someone who, damn, I'm impressed with what you've done. I don't like these drama YouTubers. I call them misery brokers. Hold on, I gotta go back. Team, you, you are, are someone, someone who. who <laughs> team, you, are someone who yo. you know what I'm saying? Like, I watch ah, a documentary. Yeah, don't suck his dick. Team, you are a great man. This guy should stream more often. Go harass Shinko into streaming more often. Tell him how meaningful he is. Send him some emails telling him that, that he saved your life. This man. Come on. Everyone knows that. Dude is fun as hell. If I had the time on my hands, I would watch everybody's stuff, but I just don't nowadays, man. I used to, and it was a good time. All these personalities, all these people that I, I think are so fun, so entertaining, I just can't watch them anymore. I'm depressed. Beggar. And you know what? I think I'd rather be a beggar than a Keemstar. See, that's so admirable. Stop. And if anything, one of the things you absolutely need to be praised for is your determination. Watching. You're still there. You never gave up. Keem. I'll probably be forgotten. I'll just be a fart in the wind, right? Star. I respect you immensely. <laughs> but, but, but. I respect you immensely. This is the, this might just be the biggest fucking lie he's ever said. I respect you immensely to Keemstar. Imagine this. Of course, there's always a but. When you look at. He always shits on the guy. Always. But now that he's faced with him. Yeah, Keemstar. I, I, I like you, man how came made his money i'm going off documentaries right holy shit <laughs> phil i gotta say this is fucking rich coming from you right now though yeah you, you're, get, you're getting your information from the detractors that keem has and that's where you're basing this on when this whole episode you have been talking about how much shit your detractors have mm -hmm. made other people think about you like do you hear yourself right now indeed i do that's the nature okay. of the beast that's how youtube works man that's how all this works right fuck man you're right. So stupid. You're right. You're right. Man, I'm, I'm, like I'm critical. You always do that. I'm going by what people tell me. Oh, Don't go by what other people tell you. Watch my streams. From what I've heard, but he judges other people based on what people tell him. I just wanted to point that out. Ah ha ha! You're on level one. Ha ha ha! Phil, level one. Yo, you've been for 15 years. You're just on level one. Yeah, but that's true though. I have renamed. But bro, bro, that's kind of up to you though. You can you can upgrade so much about who you are and how you present yourself to the world with bare minimum effort. Aimed. And we get proved this on a daily basis. Podcast as the level one 
podcast. I don't need Mr. Big Time punching down on me. I'm a tiny little guy. You are not small. You just think small. You just have small dick energy. That is bars. That is bars. You're not small. You just think small. That's one of the truest things I've ever heard. Because when, once you convince yourself you're small, that's it, man. It's over. You're never going to change your mind. You're never going to get more confidence. What the fuck? You're just, you're just degrading yourself. That's like uh, Dave Chappelle had this bit on one of his stand-up shows uh, talking about how his dad uh, used to tell him when he was a kid, when Dave thought that they were just poor. And his dad said, no, Dave, we're not poor. We're just broke. Poor is a mindset. And Dave got that poor guy mindset, and he's never going to break out of it. He's reacting to my retirement, and he's saying I'm this horrible, evil person, da 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 and he doesn't support me. Is that true, Phil? I don't like, know. What do you mean? I'm you... sure I've criticized him. I don't know specifically what he's talking Again, about. Again, see. Okay, continue. I, I don't... No, no, no. Phil doing something fucked up, and he doesn't even remember. So this man goes out and just does reckless shit and doesn't remember it. That is something that needs to be addressed. Come on, dude. Like, can I ask Phil a question? Making... Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, you had the fappening, right? And I covered the story mm -hmm. on my platform that I'm making money off of other people's downfalls, right? That's the way you see it? Yes. The reason why you don't like my show and you don't support me is because we covered the, the fapping uh, situation in 2016. Okay. You covered it fairly. You covered it fairly. I don't think you were unfair at all. That's not the case. Thank you. Let's take a look at your history here, where you've actually staged stuff. It, explain that. And mm -hmm. I guess there was a situation with a YouTuber, and I think a show covering this YouTuber, drama, I think it was YouTuber. allegations that Come to find out, angry, you know, know, later on, he appeared supposedly as an infiltrating between honest guests. Yes. Like, yes. I guess he wants to show covering this drama, I think it was allegations that he had been- I have no idea what you're talking about. You know what? It's out there, just so you know. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? You watched and supported another YouTuber doing exactly what Dromler does. It's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Can we come to the conclusion that one of us is wildly more successful? Bro, this is this is low key the pinnacle of this video. Is is Keemstar of all people just stepping on DSP, just like firmly stepping on him and saying, "Can we agree?" that we both kind of do the same thing, but I'm like infinitely better than you. Can we just agree on that? Oh, I'm not, I don't even say I'm successful at all. And then he turns into fucking Mickey Mouse. I'm successful, I'm successful, I'm successful, I'm successful on YouTube, I'm successful. The reason I'm successful is that's why I'm still successful. But another reason why I'm successful, all right, is because I don't even say I'm successful at all. I took Wings of Redemption and Boogie 2988 and I'm setting up a boxing match between the two of them. You know, are you going to watch? No. Yes, you are. No, yes, I'm not. Are. I, I don't, don't watch that you. crap. I don't watch Wait, your crap. Phil, you your Phil. Oh, he, did, he actually watched that crap. <laughs> I didn't even know that he watched it. That's the first time I'm finding out he watched it. God damn. No, yes, I'm not. You, you don't come across <laughs> as trustworthy. But what is also really funny is that DSP in the post interview, you know, the quote unquote side scrollers stabbed me in the back. Let me respond to them. He claims that Keemstar basically sp stole the spotlight from him to promote his boxing match when Keemstar literally can reach millions of people in the span of like a couple of hours. This did nothing for him and for his PR. What are you talking you about? Don't know anything about me? And also that that is a good point. DSP allowed to have him on. They asked him multiple times. Hey Phil, Keemstar wanted to come on. Keemstar tweeted about coming on. Keemstar called you out for lying. Are you sure you want to have him on? Are you okay with this? This is your interview after all. And he said yes, which I gotta give him credit for. Uh, you know. A lesser person than him would have said no, but he decided to to face his demon. Yes, he he lost, and it was very miserable, but he actually put in the effort, or at least he gave the consent for this to happen. I think let's let's leave it here, right? Thank you guys. Thank. And of course, if he said no, he would look like the ultimate bitch. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Definitely. All right. Um, hey.
Have you ever uh, tried to remove uh, reactive content? No, I've never tried to do that. You know, he legit falsely copyright struck my channel. He Absolutely. Because he wanted to. That one, that one just sticks with me because he struck super crazy. And I know for a fact, super crazy videos are transformative content. There's no two ways about it. The guy edits his videos. And he struck him to teach him a lesson. And then he released the copyright strike because he thought the guy learned his lesson. Which is like, this is just straight up abuse of DMCA. Which is the one thing that I think is a, is a shot below the belt. Because if DSP wants to talk shit on YouTube, that's fine. But I think everybody who also wants to talk shit about him in his direction should be allowed to do so. That's just fair play. That's just sport, sportsmanship. You can talk shit about me. I'm not going to fucking take it down. I think this fair because I run my mouth a lot. I talk shit about Jay. If Jay wants to come at me, that's that's cool, bro. Go for it. Me a lesson. I did the same thing. I did claims on them. And actually, in this case, with this person, after about a month or two, I said, all right, you know what? I think they learned a lesson. I do not claim anyone's videos. I hate it so much. I've ever claimed. And the beauty of it is, I only have a case because you were so stupid and showed your flag history. The very few videos I've ever claimed were direct. This is a premium DSP statement. I don't claim anyone's videos. The videos I have claimed are dot, dot, dot. So you've claimed videos then. Why did you say what you just said? <laughs> you all the time yeah oh uh, well you know sundar we that's just banter we get along sundar is cool even though he's a he, he, uh, he runs some shady shit but i'm not allowed to talk about it because he's gonna sue me is there anything that you feel that you need to touch on before we leave before we Man. part today i'm sorry that i have to bring this up but i talked with my wife about it i want to get this out in the open did you ever find the restraining order that she had against her ex. Goodbye. Fatality. Yeah, what are you gonna do, right? You see how how shell shock I am here? <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, I'm gonna be a little shaky. Oh man, he's so greasy in this one. Get a load of this grease. Listen to the tremble in his voice when he talks to Keem and listen to the way he responds when Keem asks if he will watch the fight. He really thinks he's better than everyone and above everyone else. Absolutely, man. And when I get around to watching the whole thing, I'm going to go through it with a with a fine tooth comb. Uh, at this point, I can't do that because I'm way too drunk. But yeah, that's that, that's the one thing on the internet. Like, you can talk shit. I agree with it. Talking shit is so much fun. Shitting on other people is so much fun. But keep that same energy when it comes to talking to them. When you talk a bunch of shit about somebody, make sure you're on point. So even if you talk to them, you can back it up. And in this case, he was just... He was looking like one of the socks that Derek plays sock golf with. He was just sitting there stiff. He was sitting there panicked and he didn't know what was coming next. Of coffee this morning. Two, to prepare for that, which I almost never had. And I was like, oh my God, I can't even do stuff normally. I'm so- Cause like, I, I know better than a lot of people. Talking shit on the internet is so much fun and I encourage it. It makes the internet what it is because it's, it's fucking fantastic. Your hurting back, your greasy hair, your patchy goatee. Is meaningful to me. Today, but I do feel like I very intelligently conducted myself on that show. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Holy shit, <laughs> Phil. Fuck, man. Mint says, do you feel it was a fair interview? It felt like an ambush? How was that an ambush? Showtime did a super chat. Felt like it was a setup, though. How do you feel it was a setup? I don't feel that at all. If I'm the person... <laughs> <laughs> he turns into Mickey Mouse. I don't feel that at all. I don't feel it was a setup. How do you feel it was a setup exactly? Right? Yeah, so they tried to tell him immediately. Take negatives away from the Keem vid. What you've heard, but feel it's unfair. I've seen drama <laughs> alert. It's trash. Keem, you are a great businessman. Everyone knows that. Damn, I'm impressed with what you've done. It's trash game. It's a trash content. It's bad, it's bad. And if anything, one of the things you absolutely need to be praised for is your determination. You're still there. You never gave up. That's crazy. That's so admirable. One million percent. Yeah, that's what I say about Keemstar too. And I, I know on Twitter, I say a bunch of shit about him. I talk trash. I retweet everybody who says Keemstar is a bald retard because that meme is so fucking funny. And it gets like tens of thousands of likes. But when it comes to entertainment on the internet he knows how it works and he can deliver he's a little bit misguided with the whole lolcow thing and he just 
basically the whole concept for him is just let's exploit these two fat retards and this third guy who kind of doesn't fit in but he, he talks a bunch of trash so let's let him slide but for the most part th this guy shaped the internet for what it is nowadays i don't like his content. even if he's a bald retard i have issue with it i respect you immensely but i'll probably be forgotten i'll just be a fart in the wind right Part where Keemstar kept saying you were going to watch Lal Kal boxing match was being... Why would I watch that? I, you guys know I don't watch any of that shit. I, you guys tell me about it. I don't know anything about it. Oh, you're going to watch it. Keem, again, he's such a giant inflated ego in his own head. And by the way, now he'll say, oh, he's talking about me. Yeah, Keem, he essentially evaded my episode of Side Scrollers, my interview. Now I'm going to talk about you. You're going to deal with it. All right? But bro, bro, hold on. You had the chance to talk to him. And literally, if you if he felt like you're so right... And you're you were able to put him in his place. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you dunk on him when you got the chance? But now, when you're on your stream, you get to do it. He has such a giant, inflated, egotistic head. Yeah, you didn't tell him that in person, on the internet. Yeah, he's like, you're gonna watch my content. I never watched your content, dude. I've seen five dollars from Met Bear. That bus needs its suspension replaced after fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, that that shit just out of nowhere. And everybody's been saying it, and they've been absolutely correct. You could have said anything in the end. Hey, man, I hope you guys like this interview. It was like five hours. I hope you got the answers you asked for. Come check out my channel. Let's have fun. Let's chill, relax, unwind, whatever the fuck. But the one thing he decided to say is, the trolls are assholes, and they made my, ex, uh, my, my wife's ex-boyfriend look like a hero. He's actually an abuser, you guys, but you didn't find it. It's trash. I don't watch your content. I, even the clips I can't stand. I want to come on. I can't watch that shit. Sorry that I have morals in a different moral compass than you. But I do, you know. You're going to watch that. No, I'm not. Yeah, and, and he ended up yeah, watching it. <laughs> Hopefully. Why did he watch it, though? That's That's also great. He didn't watch it because he wanted to watch it. He didn't watch it because he thought it was a good idea. He watched it because somebody paid for him to watch it. So when it comes to money, he's a free agent. Trying to be the end of it, I don't know. It's Unless you're Keemstar. The two best and you offer him a lot of money. A life-changing amount of money for somebody in his position. Damn, for somebody in my position. I would have taken a 50k. Outcomes is that either those guys either believe me or they just don't care. Correct? It's one or the other. Super chats have been amazing. That That's crazy. When you put somebody in a position where... You either have to believe me or you don't care. That That's when you know you've lost. You've just lost. You don't get to put people in this position. They should always be able to make up their own mind about you, given the, the context that surrounds you. Uh, I want to let you know that, that uh, we will definitely take a look at them. Oh, wow. This one is over? Oh, damn. I don't know if I can make the, the through the whole hour and 31 minutes, but I know this video is going to be good. So I'm, I'm going to try. So this is the second one. This is the DSP's worst moment of 2023, the interview part two, the super chat reading reaction. I'm going to leave the, the link in chat, pin it. Uh, make sure to go there. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the join button. Um, drop a fat load in the comments and tell them that... Um, I don't know. You like the video or something. The reason that I feel this interview will be different from what they're expecting is because I am going to be an open book. You didn't own up to the fact that people were making fun of you. Then you're just a joke. So you feel that your reaction to the this is how you don't play is what really parlayed your fans into becoming detractors. And the video was called this is how you don't play. <laughs> Look at the face swap. Because it still looks like Joaquin Phoenix, but it also looks like DSP at the same time. It's just so uncanny. Your fan base turned on you because of what, a video that somebody else did? That, that doesn't make sense, Phil. And again, I, I, I want to make something very clear here. I am not trying... Who do you hate more? Keem or Onision? Oh, I, I wouldn't even say I hate Keemstar. I, I just said I respect his ability to entertain people and to just put himself out there and, and make controversial hot takes uh i definitely hate onision i despise the guy and that's why i don't watch his stuff on my stream because i would just get too pissed off he's like a, a genuinely terrible person genuinely inside and out he's just a horrible person you can't even compare to dsp
Because DSPI can watch him and laugh at how incapable and stupid he is. And Onision is just, I get angry that this guy exists. Myself out as a victim. Um, and I know a lot about Onision. I know borderline as much as I know about DSP. Trolling activities, you know, false copyright strikes, it kicked my channel out of the algorithm. My trolls took the King of Hate mantra and they got me kicked out of the Twitch partner program. Because hate speech or hateful slurs or something like that. I can't even remember what they say. I'm sorry that I have to bring this up, but I talked with my wife about it. I want to get this out in the open. Did you ever find the restraining order that she had against her ex? Yeah, Onision, why, why is he so bad? He's like, you take DSP's narcissism. I'll try and explain it as quickly as possible. You take DSP's narcissism, you turn it up to 11. You also turn the confidence level up to 11. So it's a guy who's willing to go out there and defend himself, even though he's absolutely despicable. And also he has children, and also he has a wife that he's mistreated, and also he's a groomer. So he's like actually genuinely harmed people in reality, in real life, more than DSP has. It's not just like a shitty content that you can laugh at sometimes. A guy is genuinely despicable. Goodbye. Come on, you got like, you know I had to do it. Yeah, one of his kids fell off a window and busted their head on the concrete and the dude decided to record it because he's a reckless parent and all that shit. It's 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 a lot. It's actually a lot with the dude. To bring it on. The day that Dark Side Phil appeared on your show, Side Scrollers, was probably one of the most momentous things that you'll always remember. But for me, uh oh, it was Thursday. <laughs> That's a bison cap. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. All right. That's Look, exactly what it is. You've seen this in pictures, right? And people say it's a Nazi cap. Okay. No, M. Bison replica hat. The two best outcomes is that either those guys either believe me or they just don't care. Correct? How dare you fucking bitch about it? Own it. All right? I'm sick of it. Stop being a fucking victim and own your shit. Like, I got people all around the globe trying to support me, and it's like, I will never look at them like a dollar sign. I've met people that do that. And I, again, I have zero respect for it. There's many people in this, in this circle that do that. And it's like, man, as soon as you do that, the audience knows, they can feel it. Yes, yes, yes. You couldn't, you couldn't put this better. Cause sometimes, well, not sometimes, well, always, when you treat your, your audience like real people and you try and connect with them, of course, on the level that the internet provides without making them seem like they're your actual personal friends, it's it's even more profitable than when you treat them like dollar signs. So it's this weird internet paradox where it's like you, you try to do the thing you think is going to make you the most money like DSP and then it just doesn't work because inherently it doesn't work. Blabs look like I look when the edibles hit. Yeah, Blabs is like she was just tripping the whole time. She didn't even know what was going on. She was just so she was just glad to be there. I was glad for her to be there too. We we almost had a moment, you guys. If you watched the the restream, you would know. We connected on a on a subliminal level. It's uh, it's just too bad she doesn't know about it. Hello, everyone. Phil here, doing something that I didn't want to do, something that I didn't plan on doing whatsoever. I just want to get back to normality around here, uh, but I'm not allowed to. So it's all right. Tonight, He's not allowed to. I basically am going to do something. I'm going to put an end to a lot of stuff tonight for once and for all because basically I, I find myself in a situation that I'll be honest with you. I'm not surprised I'm in this situation, but at the very same time, um, I'm, I'm disappointed for sure. But let's just say that this was not a shocker, nor is this something that has taken me by, oh my God, I can't believe it. Uh, nor uh, was it not something that I had already planned. Like, do you hear yourself right now? Indeed I do. Because I knew, I pretty much knew what was going on all along. But let us begin, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday, March 17, 2023. Moist Critical had said in one of his videos that he felt like I was one of the biggest e-baggers in all of this. And it pissed me off. He says, I like Critical. Do you think he should have acted with better judgment when he spoke about bro, it? Bro, bro. If you saw the clip that I started the stream with, where Phil is talking about expecting a what was it a birthday gift for his from his parents just so he can pay his bills 
you would know he's one of the most despicable e-beggars of all time. Just straight up. Somebody who can admit something like this cannot be one of the most... Uh, cannot not be one of the most despicable e-beggars of all time. It just, it just meant to be. No. I don't actually think that he was being negative towards me at all. I don't want to be... Because he said this. He said one of the most degrading things you can imagine a grown-ass man saying. I expect my parents to give me a gift so I can pay my bills. He said all of this just so you can go there and give him some money so he can solve his financial issue. Somebody who degrades himself like this for your money is one of the worst tea beggars of all time, just hands down. Like that. So I said I would change my, my style, my content, and everything. I'd try to do it less, right? And at that point, I said, if people want to really talk shit about me, why won't they interview me? Why won't someone interview me? I want someone to interview me. By the way, you guys have been great. You've been great interviewers. You've been completely fair with me. You've given me, thank you. You guys have been you've the fairest shake I've ever gotten on the internet right now. Just give me a fair shake to talk to me. And if we have a fair conversation- There you go, it literally happened. My side of the story. Yesterday I appeared on a podcast called Side Scrollers. It was a five hour interview. When Stuttering Creek emailed me in February, that is not what he offered me. He didn't say, hey, let's do an interview. He said, let's have you as a guest on our show. And to that I said, yes, let's do it. After he announced publicly that I was going to be on the show on March 1st, which I advised him not to, I outright told him, don't do this. This will not be good because I just want to be a guest on your show. But he did it anyway. Don't know why. He went against my advice. When he did it, the internet blew up. Oh my God, Phil's going to be on a show? Phil never goes on a show. I can't believe Phil's on a show. So what happens is all of my detractors, so they all reach out to him. He entertains it all, basically. He's like, whoa, I'm so blindsided. I didn't expect that this was going to happen when I invited Dark Side Phil onto the show, right? That's what I warned him about, but he didn't listen to me. He didn't actually take it seriously. Are now interested all of a sudden in my show, and they're basically telling me, you absolutely must grill Phil. So he says, I want you on as, a, as an interview instead. We have, to, we have to basically have you on as an interview. Why won't someone interview me? I want someone to interview me. Because I don't see how we could just have you on as a standard guest with all the, the hate uh, against you on the internet. And I agreed to it. I'm like, yeah, I'm down for this because this is exactly what I wanted to do, you know, months ago. And I actually felt that these guys would be a good neutral party to act. They were do the interview because I don't think they had any vested interest. Okay, in from a from a detractor perspective, those guys when the moment side scroller Craig announced that he's doing an interview, and you can actually see it. This is a, a great podcast moment. Go check out our first stream uh, on TBS with It's a Gundam. We found out in real time that DSP was doing the interview with Craig. And everybody's opinion was fucking negative. Nobody knew who Craig was outside of ALT because he's been living among us uh, as a, a living god for centuries now. So he knows everybody that's ever existed on the internet. But outside of him, nobody knew. Everybody, the moment Craig announced it, they shat down his throat. That dude was being thrown shit for days. Actual days. He got doxxed on Kiwi Farms. People been making fun of him. And then in the end, he managed to actually get the best out of it. You know, after that, a bunch of the shit he did was corny. The whole monetize the haters thing was pretty obnoxious. I told him I, I told him that, you know, on when he appeared on our podcast, because that's how I felt about it. And you know, everything else after the, the side scrollers developed and became like this anti-woke thing, that's a different story. But what he did was he actually got the opportunity that he wanted and he got the best out of it. So there you go. And I, I thought, I still think, objectively speaking, he was as fair as humanly possible with DSP. And all he had to do is just educate himself on the way the DSP filibusters and how he wastes everybody's time just rambling and talking himself in circles. He, he just got the grips of it and he handled it well. And I thought that they produced one of the best uh, DSP lore pieces of all time. Either making me look bad or good. I was wrong, okay? that's. The I don't know what they're doing point. nowadays. I'm not surprised I'm in this situation. I didn't understand until basically- But they did a great job with I Phil. I found out exactly what was going on, which I have now, um, but they did have vested interest. It sucks that they did, because I didn't know that they did, okay? Because I knew, I pretty much knew what was going on all along. But I mean, I said, you can ask me absolutely positive. He knew what was going on all well, I'm along. I'm not going to tell you any, any account. Name. No, come on. By by watching the original podcast, you would see he had no idea what was going on. And there was nothing going on. It wasn't a trap. They gave him a very fair 
platform for him to express how he feel, feels about stuff and to answer some hard-hitting questions. He couldn't. He could not defend himself properly. And then what happened happened. Anything. Okay? Oh, I no, hold on, hold on. I told you I'm not even doing anything with my phone or anything on this stream. Anything. I don't care what it is. Just ask it. You got to understand there's liability here. And that way I can answer it. And we actually have a place where I've answered all these hard questions. If you do part two, you have to ask Also, um, yeah, I would like to, I would like to uh, kind of leak this information. Right now we're working on um, a, a really good song for the King of the Ring finals. That's going to be a, like an ensemble cast, uh, an ensemble cast of a bunch of people that you, you know and like. And I can't wait for this to be to be public. It's 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 gonna be so much fun. All he did was dance around the question and he never answered the question. Yes. We went back to that three times, never got a straight answer. So here I am. But essentially that's what I thought of. Because I just got an email from one of the guys with his track for the song, and I can't wait to see what he's done. It's gonna be. But that did, that's not what it turned out. Because I knew I pretty much knew what was going on all along. But so yeah, so I, you know, that was how where it was left. The detractors were there. And every time that basically they were asking a prying question or, you know, twisting a little more, there was more contributions coming in. Okay? That's what I've been told. I felt that it was a fair interview. Because even though, I'll, I'll admit, I think that Adam, who's one of the co-hosts, it was Adam and Craig that were interviewing me. I think that Adam was basically kind of very, very critical and or didn't believe me. Phil, I hope I wasn't too brutal with you, man. I'm just a, I'm just an honest straight shooter, so. You guys, I have zero issue with how that went. Zero. Right. I knew there we go. <laughs> Watching this back to back, like, god damn, man. Don't believe me. Because he was like, he stayed for the post show just because he loved how much, uh, like, how positive the whole interview was. I think he thinks that I lied about everything I said out of my mouth. It's kind of seemed that way, didn't it? I'm brutally honest, but I, I was also trying to help you. So I hope you see that. Absolutely. Craig seen more neutral. He's lying. He's a pathological yeah. liar. Right. He's right. very clearly lying. Stop lying. And that's where everyone thinks it ended, okay? Super chats have been amazing. Uh, I want to let you know that, that uh, we will definitely take a look at them. Now, actually, that's not the case. It's, you really harped on certain things like the WWE Champions thing, the, the $5,000 expenses thing, which I still don't understand. Can you itemize that for me? <laughs> really well, it literally says like necessary operating expenses right next to it. And it says like $5,000. Naturally, it says $5,243.84. Naturally, somebody is going to ask questions about it. What is all this money? How was it getting invested in your business? How did you get to spend it? while operating a business as bootleg and shady and, and poverty looking as yours. I mean, come on, that's just the natural question that comes up. Just for the, the mere fact that this was put on an official document that is presented to the government. You either lied on the document or you're lying to me when I ask you about where the money is going. It's as simple as this. Itemize that for me. Hold on because we really didn't fully explain it. Well, we can talk about that tonight. Um, but anyway, uh, then if I sent the screenshot of my actual account, now I explained to them, no, I'm not willing to do that right now live, okay? And there's various reasons for that, as I tried to explain, but Craig said this specifically to me. How can you dispute all this when they say it's tied to your phone number? Oh, it's tied to a phone number. Well, there were two alternate realities of the interview. If he admitted to the champion's spending, a weight off his shoulders and the dents will tip him many ways. If he proves it false, it all dies and dents tip him more. Both would have worked, but he took route three. Well, the first route is not really viable because when you're a when you're a liar, when you're a pathological liar, you gotta have a very good memory for all the lies that you've told because this is a false reality that you create for people. So if you're a bad liar then you're going to forget all the bullshit that you've said and end up contradicting yourself, much like Dark Side Phil does. So he ended up setting such a house of cards with his lies that him admitting that he's the guy playing WWE Champions just sets off a chain reaction of all these lies that he's told throughout the years, including the lies that he stole to the government in his bankruptcy, that he can just, he, he just can't afford. 
to admit this. He's going to just take it to his grave. You, you just can't admit this. That's, that, that's it. You just lied too much. You fucking prove that? Exhibit D, the line app. His WWE Champions faction recently required a- Oh, this is a good for a screenshot. This, this one, the first one on the right side is a really good screenshot. Because here we got two emails, which is the first one is burnellpp at yahoo.com. Don't ask me how I know this, how I know about the PP. And the second one is darksidephil at hotmail.com. And the, the third one is his actual phone number. So if you want to get that identity verified, you got to use one of those. And those all belong to Darkside Phil, Mr. PP Burnell himself. Third party app, which uses two-step phone verification. Nobody but DSP could have registered with this app. Don't question what they're saying. Question me, right? That was exactly how I expected the interview to go. I'm, I'm disappointed for sure. Overnight. Nothing happens. In the morning, apparently they turn on their show. Now, here's where the bullshit starts. They had advertised all week Let's long. Let's start the bullshit. On Friday, we're going to do a decompression stream from the Dark Side Phil interview. Super chats have been amazing. Uh, I want to let you know that, that uh, <laughs> we will definitely take a look at them. A big thumbs up. On their podcast? Hmm. Dark Side Phil Aftermath Side Scroller Podcast. Bro, like, because that's the thing. Whenever you have a show that just surpasses all your expectations and people end up asking for more, the natural thing is to do what people are asking for more. You, you, you just do it. And in their case, people are already sending them so many super chats, they have to read them out. They have to give the guy a shout out. Agree with it, disagree with it, regardless. They have to, to give that respect to the people that send him money. So naturally... This is just logical that it was going to happen. So what they had said they were doing all week, what I was under the impression they were doing all week. Uh, I want to let you know that that uh, we will definitely take a look at them. They decided not to do. All right. They decided to do something. Now, the, did Craig take it a step too far with the whole monetize the haters gimmick? Sure. It was corny. I didn't like it. That stream was fun, uh, except all the parts that were just monetizing the haters. But... Still a little bit too far. But the one where they just initially read the Super Chats, perfectly fine. I got no problem with it. it of course that's what they're going to do. Really and utterly different this morning. And every Super Chat is something nasty. And they read it, and they all collectively laugh at it. Ha ha ha, that's funny. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Let's laugh at Phil because he's not here. No. Well, I mean, like, what... <sighs> That, that, that's the whole idea of this whole thing. He expected him. Statute of limitations ends. We can get a book joyful if I gotcha. This is how I would have done it. Jade will be the chief editor <laughs> and the binding of every book will be held together by ear wax pulled from the Zelda. <laughs> yeah, dude, we, 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 we can have a book called If I Had Done It. Uh, or gotcha. If I, if I gotcha, this is how I would have done it. And it's just him explaining his whole gimmick of how he spent all this money. That is, that is absolutely true. Uh, but what I was going to say is like, do you, like, he for some reason did not expect them to speak their mind about how they felt about the interview and how they felt about DSP. He thought this was some kind of a transaction, let's say, where they get to do a stream with him, he gets to do a stream with them, and each one of the sides get the benefit out of it, and they just move on immediately. Because he looks at everything in a transactional manner. Of course, that's just how Dark Side Phil looks at everything. But it, it's totally understandable that they wanted to go on a separate stream and just say, well, yeah, that's how I felt about it. I think DSP is guilty of the champion stuff. I think he, we gave him a chance. He made himself look bad. So, well, I mean, I guess he wasted his chance. Ha 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 ha! They didn't do that when I was on the show. It's like, bro, and I said this to him. You they did, like though. You abusive ex-boyfriend who's trying to convince his girl to come back. It's like, it's not going to happen, dog. They waited till I wasn't. That's funny, isn't it? Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Right? So what did they decide to do the next day when I'm not there? Which is not the agreement we had. And all your super chats have been amazing. Uh, I want to let you know that, that uh, <laughs> we will definitely take a look at them. They do the DSP pylon show where we're just going to sit there and we're going to take a big dump on it. I love the recurring clip. 
to actually respond to any of it. Uh, we we didn't read super chats yesterday, and I f I feel like it would have gone a lot worse. Cause four dollars and ninety nine cents from Jay Chillin. Do you think he expected a cut of their super chat? Uh, no, I I don't think that's reasonable. Uh, in general, if I appeared on somebody's stream, I would never expect some kind of monetary compensation unless we had agreed to it and i just don't do that in general that's just me uh but in in principle i don't think anybody would would appear on somebody else's podcast and expect some some kind of the cut that that should go towards them that just doesn't make sense so in this case unless they had agreed on a on a set sum of money that dsp would get i don't think he has any right to accept it uh, to expect anything I'm sure. it just doesn't make sense or there were people that wanted us to like read their super chats to him and see his reaction. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and apologies for not reading them, but I think you all uh, kind of understand. And it became a two and a half hour clown show to read it, laugh at me. I mean, even though we promised Phil a completely fair shake on the interview, we didn't promise him we wouldn't destroy him the next day when he's definitely not there and not knowing we're gonna do it. Yeah, but if you, if you perform better, they wouldn't have any reason to destroy you. You realize that, right? Your destruction is a result of your own performance that was abysmal. You sat, you sat there for five hours and at every moment made yourself look like the most despicable, pathetic guy on YouTube. And you, you, you're surprised that people made fun of you? Why? Right? And all your super chats have been amazing. Uh, I want to let you know that we will definitely take a look at them. It's, it's being completely two-faced. It's completely unfair. If you're going to have another entire show about Dark Side Phil, you should let Dark Side Phil actually respond to your stuff. Nah. No, oh, why? Guess why? Why do we get to agree on that? How how did we get to that conclusion that they're supposed to do that? No, they're not. Guess what? We had a whole show, and then after that, the beat up show, the pummel Dark Side Phil show when he's not here. Didn't you start your career on on like drama and hate? But not against people. I never. I will say this. I never. The Street Fighter community, like that's who you said you were targeting. Oh, okay, that's different. How's that? <laughs> oh man, he killed them. I need to watch this whole thing. It's just just so beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry, you past. sound you sound like like the abusive ex boyfriend. I've changed no, we... now. Don't worry about it. Well, I never. I will say this. I never. Absolutely, there was online harassment that happened. I would never do that for personal gain. Play me first to 10. It'll be one of the most streamed events ever in Street Fighter 6. People will be super fucking hyped for it. Let's do it. You either play me or you're my bitch forever. So what's it going to be? Any more, you know, ever again. And I'm changing for the better, which they laughed at during the show yesterday, by the way. Adam was laughing. Yeah, because it just, it's, <laughs> it's not convincing right. enough. Because that's the same thing that abusive husbands say. Yeah, I beat you up this time, but I, I, I. I swear, honey, I'm changing. Please don't leave me. Please. I'm changing. I'm not going to beat you up as bad next time. You know how I am. I just lose my shit sometimes. I get too impulsive. I get too aggressive. You know just how it works. I come back from work. I've been streaming for like two hours today. And some idiot in chat pissed me off. And then I, I just let it out on you. And I beat your head on the toilet seat for like 20 minutes straight. Come on. I, I, you know you can understand that. It's happened plenty of times before. Have you reached out to anybody that you are, that you feel that you wronged? People from back then, I would have absolutely no idea how to contact. I wonder yeah, you do. so hard to get a hold of. Sh Shady K, I don't even know if he's even around anymore. I mean, in the early 2000s, I destroyed this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, I just, I latched on to people because look, if I, more, the more I make fun of this, <laughs> I get old, right? And it comes, I love this edit so much, it's so good. You know, people, we almost fought at Evo, it's so stupid. <laughs> was like, dumb. What kind of dumb shit was I? I thought I was a pro wrestler. I thought, oh man, I've talked shit. Oh, you still think you're a pro wrestler. You're just a jobber now. He's just a jobber that talks too much shit. And then somebody comes up and then instantly hits a finisher on him. And he's left like lying in the middle of the ring. And it, the, the guy just walks away and DSP just gets up and grabs a microphone and keeps cutting a promo on the guy. You know, fighting him champions is just a dumb shit. You know? Right, so is, is this... Long, long tram? I, I don't know, you tell me, because that's the thing, like, these, these people are not hard to get a hold of and... Yeah, they instantly found this guy. Imagine! Dude, I, I couldn't even find this guy. And then it takes them like 10 seconds to look up the name Shady K on Twitter and they just found him. His DMs are open. So like <laughs> yesterday on the podcast.
podcast. Craig said something to me that resonated with me. He said, people who you've wronged, whether or not you really think saying sorry to them or making amends would ever change or do anything good for them. It's still worth it to reach out and do the right thing. I actually DM'd that person in the Street Fighter community who I used to bully. I apologize. Now I know he doesn't care. I knew he wouldn't. Yeah, but now at this point, you know that when somebody tells you to apologize to somebody and you do it out of obligation, it's just not it's just not natural. It's not organic. Cuz apologizing and being sorry and being regretful for stuff in life is supposed to be organic. You're supposed to feel it. Otherwise, it's just it, it's just superficial. It's just you saying stuff because it's the right thing to do and not because you feel like it. I, I apologized to him because I felt so bad. After, after Craig saying that to me on the show, I was like... You felt so bad like 20 years after the fact? It makes me feel like you just didn't feel bad at all any time other than when you got called out on it on a public platform that hundreds of thousands of people are going to see. Right. So that's what I did. They felt the best thing to do with that show was to do a show to shit on me for two and a half hours and make money on it. That's what they felt was the best thing they could possibly do out of a show like that. Someone giving them five and a half hours of their time that normally I'd be working and making money. Yeah, your time is not very valuable, Phil. How do I know this? Well, you spent hours of your day just meandering and fucking around, which makes me feel like it's not that important. And that's because it's not. Instead, I'm on their show, you know, giving them insane amounts of views and popularity. You're getting Keemstar to show up on their show, giving them a giant boost, Horror. making what? Phil, you agree to it. If he cared or not. Shady K could've been like that scene from Happy Gilmore where the guy is a serial killer and X's out his name after he apologized. <laughs> it would happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually heard the number. And yeah, I that's a good analogy. Number. I heard they made $20,000 yesterday alone. Yeah, 20000 maybe a, a million thousand. How about that? I think they made a billion thousand. I probably, maybe they made a few thousand bucks. Even then. Apparently, they made it. Why did they yeah, make Yeah, they it? deserved it. They deserved it because uh, fucking Craig, he, more than anybody else on that podcast, he put his name on the line. He put his persona on the line to do this interview, and he did a good job. I don't care how things went after that. In this one incident, in this one event, he did a good job. He handled his business. And he deserved everything that people thought he deserved. And they just gave it to him. Phil was on their show. Do I really believe they made $20,000 in a day? No, I don't. And they make a ton of money on it. It's completely unfair. Keep in mind, the last email I had to him was, man, I'm glad you guys made... And the thing is, here's the thing. If DSP did a good job and his fan base truly thought that he did a good job he would make money too he would make hundreds of dollars uh, maybe even thousands actual if someone of his fans thought that he did a great job in that interview and he defended himself in a fantastic way and he destroyed the haters uh, you know well the thing is he just didn't a lot of money all right, maybe we'll do a 10 minute segment where we all talk about what we thought and now we move on super chats have been amazing we will definitely take a look at them now, oh, immediately once it's over, now we beat him up. <laughs> We're going to be nice and grateful. We won't beat him up the next day. Well, they did. They did a two and a half hour beat up Phil show today. <laughs> Laughing. They all did the act, act, act laugh together in unison. Wait, you mean spending four? Yeah, they, they did it because somebody literally sent him a super chat with the act, act, act. You're about to see. $40,000 on JPEGs of sweaty muscle men in a mobile game isn't a good use of money. <laughs> act, uh, act, 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 act. Which I don't do. Man, you guys, you really nailed the meme when you finally immortalized when I say, God damn it, hold on. Quick derailment. Look at how. I can't believe I'm saying this, but bear with me, please. Look at how good his hair looks in this one. He actually looks like he has a thick, organic set of hair. And you look at him nowadays, and it's like a rag doll. It's like a doll that your parents had, like your mom had like 40 years ago, and you're just pulling it out of, of the, the fucking attic. And you look at it, and it's like, oh, that's the raggedy Phil doll I used to have as a kid. 
I don't even know how I got this one. Man, you guys, you really nailed the meme when you finally because like it looks thick and greasy and that's how he used to look and now he just looks like a auschwitz survivor immortalized when i say uh, 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 uh. ack 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 on my streams because as you know this is something i do all the time uh, 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 uh. it sounds just like me because it does what in the hell is a piggy nose what is that a piggy nose my laugh was a perfect ack ack. I did a perfect ack ack. I did. I missed it. If I did, capture it and send it to me. I certainly didn't hear that. <laughs> I've literally never done an ack 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 laugh. It's a, it's a detractor meme. But that's, you know, and it's, it's really weird running away from this meme because whenever he does the ack 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 laugh, you know he's genuinely laughing. This fake laugh shit he does nowadays is just, it, it, it's just not real. And it's super obvious to tell it's not real because, well, just look at him do it. You see? Like, that's funny. <laughs> oh, something that people say about me all the time that's terrible is funny, right? It's right? terrible. It's hilarious. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible now. It's terrible that people say his laugh sounds like ack, ack, ack. I mean, if you think that's so terrible and that's so hurtful, you shouldn't be a, an online personality. Because online personalities, man, they get shit for literally nothing sometimes. You know where it comes like, on every video, I dare you, you can find any video that has, let's say, over 10,000 views and sort the comments by new and look up how many comments just randomly are about just shitting on the guy for no reason. Because that's what people do sometimes. I've done that too. I'm in a bad mood someday. I see a video that I, I'm engaged with, and I start watching it, and some something bothers me about the guy, and I just leave a toxic comment. I don't think twice about it. It's wrong. It's just one of those. It's just how it works. It's the so internet. I hear all this on my stream this morning, and I'm like, yeah. crazy yeah. thing. He's going to go on to track show. <laughs> That's I, I should clip this for the soundboard. Yeah. Was now. Hey, everybody, is. guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Really, Craig. The guy who literally said, I'm going to be neutral yeah. about this, is going to be a fair interview. Now he's going to appear on Detractor Show. I get an email from a fan. Here's what the email I get from a fan. No, actually, um, I, I think uh, be because there was a clip of TBS on this, but I think Craig first appeared on a duty stream. I, 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 I'm almost certain he did because he showed up on our show like way after the interview, I think. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Really? Craig, the guy who literally said, I'm going to be neutral about... So yeah, he was on, on other detractor streams before us. ...fair interview. Now he's going to appear on detractor shows. I get an email from a fan. Here's what the email I get from a fan today. I might not be a big fan of yours. Hey, what's up, Steve? How are you doing, man? I'm a big fan. I get an email from a fan. They openly belittled and laughed at you all day long today. You're just a lot... Oh, but you know, you know what? The, the cool thing about him appearing on our stream, well, the cool thing for me is I managed to get myself a nice little meme tam template. Look at this one. I still hold it. It's this one. This uh, nice little meme template. The meerkat is a pimp. And no, it did not say pimp at first, but I changed reality to fit what I wanted it to be. So now it does say pimp. That means I'm a pimp. And I'm a very cool guy instead of what it originally said, which uh, nobody knows what it was because it didn't happen. To that. Take this feedback as neutral. You arrogant asshole. That's an email I get during my first stream today. No, I didn't write that. It's from a fan. Well, I actually, I guess the person said I'm not even a big fan. You stupid idiot. My wife is pissed. She's very upset. She says, oh, no. Did you watch it? I said, no, we didn't say simp. That's not even a word. What is a oh, simp? She was not happy. She's like, literally, it's a shooting gallery. It's not a real word. Like, literally, it's just. Pimp is. 100% reading every super chat super chats have been amazing we will definitely take a look at it. <laughs> i love this clip every time it shows up minutes of it she said she couldn't even continue and they're laughing at you and they're making fun of you the entire show and i was like wow that that is shocking to me this was not a shocker nor uh, was it not something that i had already planned but there's a new update i told you that i emailed craig last night here's a response i got the wwe mobile game the bank stuff it doesn't make sense there's too much evidence saying it's yours, and your only evidence is you saying it's not. I'm going to address that in a second. No, simp is not a real word. To prove to you, I'm just simply going to Google it. 
What is simp? There you go. It, it doesn't even mean anything. You see? It's it's not anything. There's zero results pulled up. Well, yeah. That means I'm right. Disappointed. You have to help yourself. When you're ready to take that step, I'll gladly help you on your journey. You deserve to get to level two. I know you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? Yeah. Wait, I, I need this for the soundboard. Oh, I can't clip it with Firefox. Fuck it. Somebody please send it to me. Yeah. Yeah. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? <laughs> he went into the interview believing I was guilty. I got an honest question. How many of my fans have you talked to? Oh yeah, I want to slow it down. I'm going to do this just for the fuck of it. To level two, I know you can do it. Oh yeah, and the in the whole oh yeah, this the, the reading of the email, man. That email was such a such a curb stomp. Hey Phil, I hope you can get to level two. I believe in you, man. And then this is what you get. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? That sounded like a to me. He went into the interview believing I was guilty. I got an honest question. How many of my fans have you talked to? Yeah, but, but how many of them showed up? Like, you, you can't talk to people that refuse to talk to you. Because, like, okay, what does it make you feel when you try and talk to somebody and there's so many people from the other side that are so willing to talk to you. They're so convinced. They're so confident in what they believe. That they're putting themselves out there. They're willing to provide you with any kind of information you need. And then you look at the other side. And there's nobody. It's just tumbleweeds. It's just, it's just dead air. It makes me feel like there's nobody confident enough in Dark Side Phil to back him up. Which is what actually is happening in real life. There was no evidence they ever went out and actually gave me a fair shake. Ask me questions. I told you I can't show you the stuff. And a lot of the questions they asked me were completely unprofessional because they weren't prepared for the questions. Phil, tell us about the $5,000 of business expenses a month. I don't know. Bro, you should. It's on your documents that you submitted to the government you should know what that's about it's your documents even if, if if it's your tax guy or your bankruptcy lawyer rochelle 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 whatever that chick she did a great job outstanding job she should get a Nobel prize for that even if she did it it's still your responsibility for you to know where that money goes you spent the money i don't i never saw that i don't even know what you're talking about I'm referring to his initial bankruptcy filing. For his business, $5,243. For oh, man, look at... Dude, look at how young Rackets was looking at this one. He has aged like 40 years in four years. I wonder what the fuck. Have you seen him, how he looks nowadays? $5,000. He looks like somebody performed necromancy on him. From. So what the fuck is he buying in his house to operate a live streaming thing out of? This it, God damn, it, is that how I'm gonna look like if I keep drinking beer on stream? I might just kick everything, man. I'm gonna go straight edge. He reeking colored gems. All right. So where are the five thousand dollars a month in business expenses? Um, I think I've you... already explained. This seems like a sort yeah. of an attempt to back out of answering the very transparent <laughs> question reviewing these files, which is that he has no, $5,000 a month in business expenses, which does not make any sense. I'm just asking you to explain your expenses. Which we've done. Which we've done. So why are you asking again? I do not see anywhere that adds up to $5,000 of expenses monthly. And this question was never answered. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, never this is still a mystery. Have I spent $5,000 on just video games in one month? That's insane. No, nobody said this. Again, we caught him. Just video games? No. But what else goes into those expenses? Video games, microtransactions, miscellaneous business expenses. Yeah, we're not playing the semantics game here, Phil. We can see the number. $22,043.84. Somebody had to do the math. Therefore, somebody knows what this is about.
We need to find who knows what this is about and ask him what this is about. And you're the guy who should know what this is about because it's your fucking money. You spend it. Same. I don't know where that number comes from. No, I don't have $5,000 in business expenses every month. So I try to say, I don't know. Is it maybe the mortgage? Five bands, bro. He's been around longer than Ang Lee's Hulk. It's Dark Side Phil. Oh, well, thanks for having me on. Well, back in the day, I lost my job at the hell of <laughs> Okay, let me stop you right there. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to outline $5,000 in monthly business expenses or else I'm gonna tell everyone that you've committed perjury on your bankruptcy forms. Go! What? Oh my god. Um, like, you know, like, video games? And, uh, like, you know, subscription services? And, uh, you know... Okay, that adds up to about $500. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, somebody did the math. It's going. You've got 10 seconds. Uh, All right. Now, okay. Quick math. How do we make $500 become 10 times larger? What do we have to do? Uh, like, you know, like buy mortgage and Not like a business cat expense. supplies Not a business and like expense. dinner with my Not a wife business every expense. week. And Not a like, business you know, expense. Is it, you know, because that, because I don't know, because my house is also where I work out of. Is it medical expenses? I don't know. Not that I recall, no. What would your medical expenses be on the... Uh, I, I don't even know. All that. Why would you ask me this question? That's a stupid question. So anyway, I actually did respond to him. I'm directly reacting to this. Watch if you like. I figure you'd at least want to know what I have to say about it. And he says, okay, buddy, hope it's wildly successful. And I said, you know, I appreciate that, but I just rather be playing games or chilling with my audience than wasting time on this. Okay, then. That was always... Well, just play games then. Why are you not playing games right now? I have to address it. He has to. Why do you have to? play games then. As Adam said yesterday, you do you and fuck everyone else. Good luck. Yeah, literally. Because you would actually like for me to not say anything. And I answered every question. Give you five and a half hours of my time. Who else would have done a five and a half hour interview for you? But who in their right mind would have done a five and a half hour interview for you? You volunteered though. That is also true. True crime YouTube is filled with lengthy interrogations from narcissists who turned out guilty. It's because they think they can outsmart the detectives by refusing to confess and simply exhausting them. That's just it. If you're so confident in yourself, one Why wouldn't you show up for five hours? Was all 989. Imagine using cherry juice as a medical write-off. Oh yeah, that that would be that would be fucking great. That would be great. Your actions directly today on your show. Because it's for the business, right? Because unless he has his cherry juice potion, he cannot perform at you know peak performance. He cannot play games at an optimal level unless he got that gout taken care of. Because you know the gout is known to be, you know, a performance-degrading condition for all the esports players, I assume. Oh, and in this email, prove you never did. You never had an intention of giving me a fair shake. A professional would have said, the interview's done. Maybe we do a five, 10 minute decompress session today about it. We move on. Show it again. Super chats have been amazing. We will definitely take a look at them. Nah, oh, keep riding the money gravy train that we just got. <laughs> Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. You're making a lot of money. That's for sure. Congratulations. Right? I certainly haven't seen it. And he even like this, this whole idea of him having this quote unquote interview. It's like he appeared on 60 minutes. No, that's, that's not really it. You appeared on a YouTube show and inherently people are going to send him money and they got to address it. They got to talk about it. They got to read the message. Even if they disagree with it, they kind of have to like that anonymous it's just the name of the game phil i can't even do stuff normally i'm so like all over the place okay thank you guys wow Holy let's see here dollar, dollar. Dollar. Wow. ching ching bling bling cut the, the chatter wow you guys are being amazing 20 bucks from swago nito i'm going to cheater oh my god what a fucking cheater what a fat sucker fucking scrub you think i'm the villain <sighs> Go fuck yourself. Oh my god! This is dumb. 
He's doing these big slow swing attacks. I'm pressing it. And yeah, this was when Swaggins wasn't very happy with Phil when he played Sekiro. So There's play the whole the, the whole Swaggins being salty at DSP playing Sekiro Saga. That that thing happened. Somehow I know about it because I'm just that retarded. Hey, I, that, I do nothing wrong. If I I just give up. It's obvious that it's fucking it doesn't work right. You're just standing there. Literally, the only reason I can't win the fight is because he has a bullshit insta-kill ability. But instead, they gotta be fucking dickhead assholes. You know, hey, you be you. And again, with the hilarious st stab here, we want to get you to level two. You want to get me to level two? You want me to be like you? You want me to stoop to your level? But wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> then we gotta do some random math here, so... If you want to evolve to level two from level one, you gotta d go down from level one to level two somehow. Um, yes, that that definitely works. That's how math works and numbers work. Two is bigger than one, or or is it? Why was Keemstar on the show yesterday? Because you agreed to have him on. Are you open to talking with him now? I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. So you're okay with? Him coming on to talk. Why the hell do you think he's on the show? That guy is fucking reprehensible. Everyone knows it. Keem, you are a great businessman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this this edit kills me. This edit makes me. Everyone knows that. <laughs> you, you could be him. I respect you immensely. <laughs> Everyone knows the guy has hurt far more people than he's ever helped. By sources that I bro. He had more sex with Keemstar on that one live stream that he's ever had with his wife. Just verbally. That was all that it, it took. Made it the he was sucking his balls in real time. Wings and <laughs> to beat each other up in a boxing match. That's, that's insane. That's, you're out of your mind. Right? Wrong! I said yesterday, meaningful content for my... Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, when people tell me that... When they came to my show, they actually felt relaxed. They, to them, that didn't even click that I said that. Meaningful content. Yeah, meaningful. Yeah, people telling him it's not like people you, telling you stuff because sometimes people are dishonest. Proves how much of a coward he really is. Well, this is it, man, because he can talk all this trash. But when he's faced with the guy he's talking all this trash to, we're giving him compliments. Bro, you hate this guy, remember? You can't stand this guy. You declined a life-changing amount of money that would have fixed your whole situation from this guy just because you hate him so much. And then we're, we're going to give him compliments? I not understand that we can aspire to be better. Begging for money is never a good look for anyone. The, the whole funny part, and I'll, I'll end it like... By the way, today the pop-ups actually work. All of them work. I'm even shocked. This, and then if you want, we'll do some reacting to... Must be opposite day. Did anyone, literally, did anyone on that show go into it with an actual thought in their mind that I was innocent? That's the question. Because if they did, I feel like it would have went a lot different. Yeah, a Adam I definitely did. did. Adam definitely did, and without Adam, that show would have been much worse than it ended up being because he was the sober and objective person on, on the whole panel. He was, just, uh, he was just processing things in real time at face value without any preconceived notions, and there were so many red flags that he raised that it's just impressive that the dude caught all those red flags in real time. He did a great job. If you actually went into it saying, hey, Phil was innocent or could be innocent, right? Then it would have been fine. That, that never happened. That he's saying, no, I never believed you. Like he literally says that in the interview. There's so much evidence. Well, you saw the ev evidence, which it's not. It's circumstantial evidence. It's not factual proof. It's circumstantial evidence. You saw the evidence before the interview. So you already were convinced. You didn't see evidence after the interview. You saw it before. But what what did you do to help your own case? That is my question. Is because all I know he did for a fact is to say verbally that that was not him, which is not evidence. That's just a claim that is not backed by any kind of proof. And then he said that's not him on the bank leaks. 
So, you're not very convincing, man. So you've already been convinced and you had no intention of actually believing me. It's scummy. Oh, okay. So you didn't care at to begin with. I mean, let's be honest. I will tell you completely 100% honest with you. And, uh, you know, people will... I say that a lot. I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you. I also say I'm going to be transparent. These are mannerisms in my speech. When I say that, <laughs> what I'm to do is emphasize that what I'm about to tell you is a serious matter. It's not me joking. Oh. But some people over the years have misconstrued it as meaning other things. All it means when I say that is I'm about to tell you guys something really important. And it's meaningful to me, so please listen up. Iconic DSP moment. Iconic of him saying that whenever I say that I'm going to be honest, I don't actually mean that. So when I, when I say I'm being honest, I'm actually being dishonest. The interview was going to be a complete flop fluff piece to having these edits and them being this funny a year later. This will be a top five point of day SP law forever. Absolutely, absolutely. The fact that we're still looking back a, a, a year later and there's just so much left to unpack and everybody is doing it in their own way is just, it's a key landmark in the DSP universe. It just is. And I'm, I'm glad, um, e even if I didn't believe in them in the first place, even if I didn't think it was going to happen, even if I thought it was bad, I'm glad I was wrong. From Happy I was wrong. Remember when he was going to write off WrestleMania trip as a business expense for uploading some two to five minute videos? <laughs> Watch V equals six Q seven. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I got this. I'm going to, I'm going to go first. Cause you provided also the timestamp. So I'm going to do this. Um, hold on. Let's just do that. This shit is too good. Cause I remember that was with, uh, with John Rambo, right? Oh, that's a different one. Okay, let's let's see this one. This is very interesting. So as a business expense, oh shit, I go to WrestleMania, I vlog everything, right? So when I did it, a fan of mine provided me with an exclusive code. They said, if you use this code when you go to buy WrestleMania tickets, you'll get access to all the better seats. So I did, and the, boy, the seats were expensive, if I remember correctly. Whoa, look at like, this. Bro thought, oh my God, that's the that's the YouTuber life, man. That's the dream of any YouTuber. Well, you would you would just get to go places just because you can make a two minute video and just write it off on your taxes. That's all good, Phil. Big ups. Oh man, a thousand bucks. I could be wrong because it's a lot. You go to buy WrestleMania tickets. WrestleMania, I vlog everything. This was get a replay. So that was back when number one, I was making a ridiculous amount of money on YouTube, and I had no debt. So I had, <clears throat> I saw it as a business expense. Oh shit! I go to WrestleMania. I vlog everything, right? So, when I did it... And those videos were so dog shit, it's not even worth watching them back then. Yeah. Probably. There was no integrity there. Huskers fan, you're already banned from DSP Gaming. Now you're banned from here. Congratulations. Real winner today. All right. Anyway. Yep, there's one. Here we go. There's another. Yep, there you go. Wow, that's a huge super chat from Sarah. <laughs> huge super chat. <laughs> this dude not understanding currency shocks me. If you showed 10 random PPL DSP content for an hour, half would be eager to get on a detractor stream to vent, and the other half would just hate you. One would probably make a detractor channel. Well, I, I'm not entirely on board with this concept, because for most people, you got to take a step back. For most people, this is incredibly weird and, and just strange. But yes, uh, I would say at least 9 out of 10 people would think he's an asshole. That's something that I would almost guarantee. And one of those people are probably going to turn into a detractor and be engaged about the uh, the depth of the lore and all that other stuff and be willing to explore it. But it's, it's just a very strange thing generally for people to be researching this guy's lore and to be learning stuff about him because you got to... You gotta realize this guy is someone who gets like 200 views a video. He's ba basically nothing nowadays. He just barely exists. So it, it's pretty, it's pretty difficult kind of getting in the headspace of your regular detractor. Says I'm actually a long time detractor. The two best outcomes is that either those guys either believe me or they just don't care. Correct? It is time. We'll do a little bit of reacting. I'm not going to do this all night. We'll skim through because their show's long as shit. Their show's like an hour and a half. Excuse me. Two and a half hours. I don't have two and a half hours. I got like an hour. 
<laughs> His response is legitimately longer than their response. React a little bit to it. Um, Hell yeah. Covering Adam's face. And I know, uh, I know most of what he was doing is skipping through the video until he sees a yellow or purple super chat, and then he would pause and read it. And he would say something along the lines of, oh, wait, that's a big one. Let's see this. Can I move my camera down here? Oh, shit. Is it finally going to go south? Get to the actual part. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, there you go. I really do. Dark Pay seed the to bill, flow. The electric bill, the internet bill. <laughs> <laughs> All true, all true. Does Darkseid Phil actually have autism? <laughs> not, not, not wrong at all, not wrong. Uh, look at this. Um, Anatard, Lord of Derps. <laughs> says Adam should change his name to Giga Chad. Uh, because. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we, they should have made a poop joke. Here we go. Uh, great job with the East Coast Italian style interview with the robust style of questions and Keemstar style appearance. Thanks yeah, you know, much. shout out to Keem for, for jumping on. And honestly, shout out to Keem for jumping on in an interview he had absolutely nothing to do with. Are you open? You agreed to it. Talking with him now. I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. So you're okay with him coming on to talk? Why are they giving a shout out to Keemstar? Because Keemstar got them even more attention. When Keem showed up, all of a sudden, even more people jumped on. And they want that notoriety now. They say, oh, you said Keemstar was on our show. Keemstar was on the show because of me. Free. I, I want to actually address something real quick. Keem actually just tweeted. I'm going sure. to read his tweet. DSP is lying in this live interview. He's just dishonest. Shout out to Keemstar. You know, it was tense. And I think this is where I'm going to end it because I don't feel like I got the energy to continue on with this because it's like past midnight. I want to get something to eat. And like I said, I got an email earlier from somebody that I'm collaborating with. So I want to check out what they did because I'm very excited about it. So let's just leave this for another time. I'm going to unpack the whole interview shenanigans thing because it's, it's fucking great. And I'm just going to leave you with this. Let's uh, just do a quick checkup on the guy and how much money he's sitting on. Is he sitting on a million dollars or maybe perhaps a billion or a trillion? Oh, he's sitting on 70 bucks. And top tip is Domino sucks with a $20. All right, can I... Um, epic. Well, I guess that's going to be it. Thanks, everybody, for checking out the stream. Thanks for having fun. I'm glad I didn't end this before he had his weird segment about Jay with the music in the background. So that's like a, a damn near one of the best segments of the month. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, see you around. Uh, let me play you a nice little sound clip because you guys deserved it. Fuck all you hoes. Detroit till I die, motherfucker. Or maybe even another one because you deserved it even more. You've been very good boys and girls. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. And here's another quick one. I want to have sex with your wife. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Peace out. And most importantly, Yong out.